Hello, I believe we are on Hi. air, Veronica. <laughs> I would hope so. I think we are. <laughs> Unless we aren't, but hi, we're here for streaming. Um, we're doing our restreams of the first day. This is the first day, right, of the the China mainland qualifiers. Um, yeah, day one, day one of Chinese mainland qualifiers. Very exciting. Hey. <laughs> oh my god! Hi, chat. Up. Oh my gosh! Hi, chat. There's already a lot of viewers in the chat. Hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you for hi. joining the stream. This is my first time ever live streaming so you'll have to <laughs> forgive me if there's some hiccups in the middle but yeah really yeah. excited about this veronica um really glad that netties has given us this opportunity to restream the qualifiers on our own platforms for the other mm -hmm. regions since i feel like previously there wasn't a lot of english caster coverage of yeah. those tournaments Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm, I'm, I might be totally wrong about this in off base, but I think they do actually have the mainland qualifiers on YouTube this time because they like got another region to cast for them. Mm -hmm. Um, great. I like that they're letting us do more of that now because I feel like when any of you goes into like uh, any any main stage, all they know is like before you usually. Now we have two teams, so now they know two, and they know whatever C teams are up. But it's like you when you know one team, it's so hard to go in and do your like apple predictions. And I'm really bad at those. I gamble away all of my apples because I suck at predicting. I don't know if you have that experience, but in game, I can't do it. I'm so bad at it. So maybe this time, um, we'll all understand what teams we can bet on based on all of the tournaments instead of just waiting for Elio to tell us which teams to gamble on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely having some more knowledge of all the other regions mm -hmm. is going to be great. And this is the VOD, everyone. So yeah. this tournament already happened already, but um, we are going to watch through it with everybody this time. So if anybody mm -hmm. here already knows what happens, please don't spoil it for everybody else. <laughs> we are going to, um, a lot of us are going to be seeing it for the first time. So even though I know kind of the results, I guess, because I saw next week's schedule already, mm -hmm. um, I was, I'm still excited to see the actual mm -hmm. gameplay of the matches, so it'll be fun. It will. I saw a little bit of it last night, and it was um, very exciting. I can't tell you what happens, but I can tell you that it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Yeah, I just give mm -hmm. a minute here. <laughs> live streaming is very hard, in case you guys have never live streamed before. Um, as Liji mentioned, neither of us have prior to our restreams so we're like <laughs> i did mine too and i was like what's going on what buttons do i click <laughs> how do i get to the windows figured it out but it's very scary yes so we'll <laughs> see but um yeah so i'm going to basically go ahead and <laughs> put us into the vod um i will say that we are going to just jump right in, so we'll see the schedule and the teams, all everything, mm -hmm. all of that as we as we go along. Yeah, as for now, we're looking at our prize pools, which is exciting. Um, yeah, maybe I everyone should get really into Koa because then we can earn um, a lot of money. I could not. I can talk about it. Couldn't play in it though. I <laughs> could not. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I know myself, and I would get I would get down in like fifteen seconds and embarrass my entire team. <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't worry, I'd be the same way. I could not imagine playing <laughs> under such high pressure. Sure. Right? It's scary. Uh huh. Can't imagine it. Um, but yeah, we have our brackets here today. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, everybody can see. But this there's basically two brackets. There's like the A group bracket and the B group bracket. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see some of the matches from each bracket. Since this is day one, they're basically doing matches one and three from the A and B brackets. And it's always a little bit confusing to me how the way it works, but it's mm -hmm. going to be double elimination, plus there's like a wild card yeah. stage. And in, in the end, seven teams are going to move forward to the next, mm -hmm. um, to, to qualify, basically. So yeah. yeah, today's matchups, we have them here starting off with ACT versus CT and uh, HY versus SATA. And Veronica is going to be guest casting with me for those two, and then we'll mm -hmm. um, switch off to a different guest. But yeah, really excited to have <gasps> you here, Veronica. And we are going to see the Chinese casters on the screen as well as we wait for the match to start. 
Yeah, they're, um, I develop a parasocial relationship with the other casters every time I, I restream. I don't know why. Um, I'm really into these plushies, though. I own one of those. Uh, my friend has a mechanic plush. And a little secret between all of us, um, I can fit the little hat that she has on my own head. So it does fit small human people. In case any of you needed, like, a, a last-minute accessory for a, a Tracy Resnick cosplay, but... <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, that's super cute, though. <laughs> she is. She's so cute. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but I love it when the casters bring the little dolls onto camera, too. I know. I've seen They're some so of the, the English casters do that in the past, too, so I wish <laughs> I had one. If I did, I would bring them on with me. I'll, um, I'll give you one of mine because I have six of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many. I know! I'm literally running out of space for them on the wall. Oh, we're getting into our lineups now. Okay, uh, CT first, so we'll be looking at continue. Um, I am seeing some interesting little things here, but I think we're also seeing a lack of stats on two of the players because um, nobody really mains Lucky Guy in Koa. <laughs> if anyone tells you that they are lying a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but we do see the barmaid here, so mm -hmm. barmaid definitely still fairly popular in the meta nowadays, I would say. For sure. Yeah, so we'll be exciting to see if we see that. This is um, YWD from mm -hmm. CT here. And next, Sanye, the prospector here. Mm -hmm. So I expect that we'll see lots of prospectors today as well, yeah. based on what we've been seeing so far. <laughs> Definitely. Which is always fun, um, mm -hmm. if he's not banned, of course. Yeah. Well, I do not, I don't doubt it. Prospector, like, you see him in every Koa match. You see him in every rank match at home. You can get rid of that guy at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but with good reason. The magnets are great for kiting and also great for assisting and rescuing. So, you know, I don't blame them, but I am a little bit scared myself. Yes. <laughs> I, I will have to say, like, it's... I feel like it's either, like... Um... Oh! Oh, it's a lucky guy. So Z there's no zeros. stats here. Yeah. But we'll have to see what this player <laughs> ends up playing in today's matches if we do see them today. Um, and now we have a mercenary. So this is actually ZB. He's a former uh, pro player from the Chinese team GG and was actually on GG's team when they won Call of the Abyss 4. So it's cool to see him back, even though it's not in a professional setting. Um, I think for we should sure. definitely look forward to his mercenary today. Oh, I still really? remember back in Call of the Abyss 4, in the finals, there was one round where it was like round one, the, his mercenary ended up crawling out the gate to get one escape <laughs> that match, and it was like, oh my gosh, like really clutch one escape in that situation. Gosh. So, so oh, and another one. Him. Yeah, and, and another lucky guy here. Yeah. We're well, gonna have to... If they come out, we'll be able to discover what they do. But if not, it's going to be a nice mystery. And mm -hmm. that'll be fun, I think. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, what secrets are you hiding? I Why are your stats? Really? Occasionally, I do meet lucky guys in, like, rank or quick match. Me too, and it's so scary. I know. Usually, they're, like, in the maid costume, <laughs> too. <laughs> they're always in the maid costume. Now, he has an S tier, so they'll wear that as well. Um... And it's very scary because sometimes they're like the most competent player that you've ever seen somehow uh but most of the time and to all of you who main lucky guy this is totally not about you you are definitely the special exception for sure usually they're really bad <laughs> hello hermit hermit he's has been played a lot in other regions i think um we're we're not ahead on a on hermit yet in any of you properly uh, as far as i can tell after um, I watched Japan qualifiers with Eli, he proceeded to go on and play a bunch of Hermit to figure out what was up. So maybe we will also be playing Hermit in Koa, but mm -hmm. definitely likely to see some Hermit today. He's been extremely popular. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm lagging a little bit, Veronica. You can <laughs> let me know if you see that too. That's okay. I can still make everything out. So, so long stream is good. We're good. No worries. Okay, so we'll we'll pause if it does does become a bigger issue, but mm -hmm. I think it's starting to get a little bit smoother now. Um, yeah, mainly just my personal camera, so you'll you guys will have to see me mm -hmm. make a bunch of strange faces on the camera whenever it freezes. I was literally in stop motion during one of my streams because my Wi-Fi just like halfway cut out, so it could be worse. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, fingers crossed that 
at least the stream videos itself will be smooth. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah, but now we have ACT. So mm -hmm. ACT, professional Chinese team, um, they did pretty well last season in mm -hmm. IVL in China. So definitely can look forward there to their performance in the qualifiers sure. as well. I think they ranked third in the regular season in the fall season last year so pretty high rank out of 10 teams total although in yeah. the playoffs um they didn't end up progressing too far so this might be their redemption we'll see but it should be fun to see where they're at now mm -hmm. oh i'm very excited to see that i love when teams get to come back and you see what they're doing from like prior stats um because uh, we can we research teams a lot obviously we like to know what they're up to so that we can like properly complement their skills and know what to expect during like band picks and whatnot but the best way to understand what a team is capable of is to watch them live like right now um because then it shows you what they're like actually up to at the moment which makes it extremely exciting um my friend william ellis the forward is on screen i hope we do get to see some forward action today and bleachy i love the graphics that they use in the cm qualifiers they are so like above and beyond cute and yes. like detailed yeah i always love watching the animation that they put transitioning into the game too it's so cute so they always they always really um make it like even fancier mm -hmm. for call the abyss i feel like so me too it should be fun hello mercenary what are you up to looking pretty good on the stats looking pretty good on the stats yeah, um true. something i noticed and i like pointed out the other day to friends of mine is um I, you've probably noticed it as well uh kite times used to be a lot um lower in prior koas because it was kind of like a hunter versus hunter event less than a team versus team event um, but they've been like steadily increasing with with partner kiting going up in the meta quite a bit, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I'm checking Used out. I'm checking out how the stream <laughs> quality is. Um, no problem. Um, because I think it is a little bit laggy, but that's okay. It we'll happens see. to the best of us. Hi, Yitra. What are you doing? Too yeah, much classical, too much. much. Some things will never change, and those things are too much being obscenely meta. But I'm not <laughs> complaining, and I don't think you are either. Yeah. I will say, ACT's Hunter Yue is one of those hunters who has really kept up their Dream Witch mm -hmm. throughout, throughout all the versions of the game, so... Yeah. I think, yeah, it'll, be, it'll still be really nice to see. And here we actually have a familiar name. Yeah! Um, I'm so excited. Former before you and fusion hunter ching who previously mm -hmm. played on the na server as well the naeu server so yeah i cool to see that he has gone pro at this point mm -hmm. and joined act um we did see hell ember instead of his other hunters so it looks like he hasn't really played much yet but hopefully mm -hmm. we'll get to see <laughs> that today i really do hope so ching is always usually not benched per se but not didn't come out as much i find during na but was certainly extremely impressive whenever you did get to see him showcase his skills so it's like it's so neat you know going all the way out to to go pro and clearly with good reason i mean he wouldn't get on that team without the ability to do so so i do hope we get to see him come out today um probably not play that hell ember but i will be surprised in a good way if it does happen just to um understand the motions and the the end the ooh sorry i'm so distracted by this cute little thing <laughs> <laughs> they do more giveaways too i think and then i'm like flabbergasted by them because i'm like oh my god what's going on yeah so let me see before we go into the stream i'm gonna take a pause <laughs> for us here veronica we're gonna um, let him we're gonna let it render a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so you guys will have to deal with us for a little bit longer as as i wait for, <laughs> for the video situation to be resolved um technical difficulties just yeah. a little just a snitching so just a snitching well we'll try to figure this out but i'm also going to pull out the stream um mm -hmm. online just in case we need to switch just in case for we need a backup option yeah mm -hmm. yeah so we have two versions of the stream one of them is downloaded and one of them is on the internet. Um, <laughs> whichever one wants to function for us more is um, going to be our lover for today. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. And I don't know. I kind of did not expect the um the downloaded video to be that laggy, but it just mm-hmm. might be my my stream. I... It's such a big file. And it was so nice of them to send through the files because I got one as well. But I also had to stream from just the the upload. Um, Because I think it's because it's such high quality and it's so big. And I think you mentioned that you also are just like on a laptop and so am I. So my laptop is like screaming and crying at the top of its lungs because I'm trying to make it download like a huge video and it does not want to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think when we tested it, the online one actually worked okay. So mm-hmm. I'm going to try it out and see what will happen here. But I think, like, for me so too. Real. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. You guys might hear some of the <laughs> audio coming through. I'm going to mute. But Pretty yeah, awesome. I think, I think like, the video file was so big that I had to download it three times to successfully <laughs> download it. So it is a very large video file. I think I did mine, like, five, and then it didn't even work. And I gave up, I think, on that attempt, which was... Um, like salt in the wound because I had just tried to download um, stage play files from a friend who did like a split for it and they would not download either it's just, like oh. I'm not allowed to have identity 5 content on my computer in video form um, <sighs> I'm legally barred from that I couldn't tell you why but I am <laughs> apparently according to Google Drive <laughs> yeah so I know like I also at first downloaded i suppose a different file and it was just like the players talking in an interview and i was like this doesn't seem to be like the right file i was like what did i do here (laughs) oh my gosh yes but we'll be back quite soon sorry to the viewers who are waiting to see the matches but hopefully it'll be a little bit more worth watching if it's actually um smooth and not as laggy exchanging like three minutes of veronica and lychee straight talkie time to see the the matches actually go through and not like in pixels (laughs) it seems fair to me to me it seems very fair all right um we'll see how this goes because yeah internet is not loving me today (laughs) i had several i had like a, a call drop in the middle of the day today so that was fun um google chrome is currently not responding so i'm not even (laughs) sure if this internet solution this (laughs) if this solution is going to work maybe the little video is buffered by the time that we've tried to pull it up elsewhere (laughs) i'm hoping so too i think we can try to go back to um our video here yeah please please work video yay it does seem to be a little bit smoother so we might be smooth sailing finally facing some kindness in the world right so we are in the band picks here um i'll keep monitoring the actual live stream to see how the (laughs) video's doing but yeah looks like we've got pretty standard seer ban and Mm -hmm. barmaid being chosen right off the bat as well barmaid and antiquarian coming very very common picks nowadays um with, with very good reason. Barmaid Stovelands make a huge difference in being able to support and kite on her own. Um, An antiquarian, same thing. Her fluid abilities are absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. And fun to watch. Extremely fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. I love this animation, too, that they have, like, the antiquarian doing the lights, the barmaids mm-hmm. on the stage. They have, um... The forward's gonna come in and do the other one now, but the fourth survivor, if I remember correctly, will just like sit in the director's chair and like not do anything, but just like sit there and like judge the other ones as they do their work, and it's so funny to me. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) That's what hosting is like sometimes. Like, can you tell me everything about the teams and then I get to sit there and smile? Sit sit and look pretty and not (laughs) wait for it to finish up. True. Oh, there they are. I was wondering where the little graphics were. I was so scared. There he is! The embalmer gets to sit in the corner and judge the rest of his teammates, Lee Chi. I feel like that's a, a suitable spot for him. I, like, isn't like, it? He, he, he would. He would, I think. <laughs> yeah. But to me, like, with the barmaid and the antiquarian, I feel like they might be anticipating you had to bring out his signature dream witch, yeah. but we'll see it because he also has some other hunters as well mm-hmm. that he's picked up too. So 
I would not be surprised at all. Oh, okay, they've traded. it. Yeah, they also trade based on, like, who's playing what character, which is really fun. So they get to, like, start off, and then it's kind of like they're more suited for different jobs, and that's very funny to me. Um, the Hunter introduction animation is also just as intriguing. But Dream Match for sure, I think, with this comp. Ever Sleeping, so the Embalmer makes a lot of sense. Um, forward, Barmaid and Antiquarian. You know, you would expect it. It's kind of a playground for her. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if Yuya decides to bring out like a clerk, for example, mm -hmm. this would still be a decent counter to something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. I think like the only concern is if it's a wax artist, there may mm -hmm. be a little bit of trickiness there. Yeah. Since he does kind of counter the stunners a little bit better than some of the other hunters. Mm -hmm. Hard to get a drink off too sometimes because it's a lot about like transition kiting away and the wax freezes are not really your friend in that regard, but... <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh! Okay. Speaking of the devil... Wonderful job, Lichi! <laughs> the wax artist you has did it. out. Which you figured him like, out. Yeah, I feel like it's not too surprising considering mm -hmm. he's so much up there in the meta nowadays yeah. and does a really good job of countering the survivors. I mean, that's one mm -hmm. reason why forward isn't played as much recently as yeah. he was before is because of the wax artist, I feel like, is one reason. So, mm -hmm. um, But we do have forward here today, so we'll see how this standoff goes. Yeah. We'll see if they'll do a standoff for us and teach us which one is actually better in the long run. Um, and whichever one wins gets to stay in the meta and the other one has to go down to like C tier uh, in their respective factions. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just looking at the question from the chat, I think Yue does not play photographer as far as I know. It's a different hunter um, from Weibo Gaming, WBGYMM, oh, yes. who plays photographer. Yeah. So um, we may be able to see that eventually or at some point, but mm. probably not today. We are seeing the spawn point selections here. And mm -hmm. yeah, looks like we'll have. Ooh, OK. Yeah, mm -hmm. Wax Artist spawning closest to Barmaid and Forward and Antiquarian. Yeah. Embalmer kind of on the outskirts, but definitely probably wouldn't want to go chase the Embalmer anyway. I mean, it's good to get the coffin out of the way, but it's good to get everything on this team out of the way, really, when you think about it. You don't want the Barmaid to give her drinks to the other survivors. You don't want the Antiquarian or the Forward to come in to and harass while you're chasing someone else, so... Um... I think they're all decently viable picks. If it were me, I'd probably go Barmaid first, but we'll see what UA does. Mm -hmm. Oh, here they go. They get to take a little cart to the game. It's so cute. It reminds me of the Golden Caves cart. I know! He's just sitting there. He doesn't even have to drive. Oh, they're off now. <laughs> Imagine if we got these. That would be so fun. Mm -hmm. The ever sleeping graphic and everything. I like the music this time too. Like, I yeah. feel like sometimes the music matches well and sometimes mm -hmm. it's a little bit iffy, but this time I really yeah. like it. So, the music was <laughs> We're going to hop right in. Uh, UA is going to transition over to uh, ZB's area, it seems, who is transitioning away. Actually, uh, swinging down to the middle here, Li Chi, and hoping to find a first survivor for, you know, optimal chase and uh, get the first one out and down. Yeah. Ooh. And... Detention and confined space, I believe, is the build there. Yeah, I think perhaps not quite reaching up to confined space, but heading towards mm -hmm. a 12 direction yeah. for sure. Um and we see embalmer here taking the chase i think this was actually one of the survivors where we saw him as a lucky guy so now we know he also plays embalmer <laughs> oh no yep yeah we and... just chase around in the graveyard area which is extremely strong for kiting uh most certainly and um following along with the wax here uh going to ooh, okay not landing first hit yet i believe that was a beautiful little flywheel to prevent it uh just for a few seconds to not land that hit and then wax afterwards which is really one of the most vital things that uh wax artists can do against a different Ooh, beautiful stun from the forward Luigi. yeah but now looks like forward's gonna get chased and has to use mm -hmm. quite a lot of football plus it's gonna take a hit to boot so um i suppose this 
the benefit of this is that it does allow Embalmer to get up his coffin and potentially even even set it up for his teammate later, but on the other hand, Wax Artist should be able to get this forward down yeah. fairly soon, I feel like, but we'll see the outcome. He does have Teleport, not Blink. Ooh, Ooh, but does get the forward hit on as he vaults that pallet hit here, so. Wow. Nice little Terra shop. Uh, the forward has been embalmed, I think, contemplating basement here, but... Ah! Uh, going to actually tear in the basement, which is very interesting, is the forward has been embalmed, and I feel like they're not going to want to go for that save. Um, yeah, so they're just going to rebirth the forward to prevent having to do that, and going to teleport all the way over to the barmaid, and a beautiful pallet's done right out the gate on UA here. Mm -hmm. Actually, it seems like UA didn't necessarily have a, a good place to teleport to. Mm -hmm. um, the forward definitely has gotten pretty far away at this point, so... Yeah. Kind of had to teleport to the barmaid and now is re-joining the chase onto the forward here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cypher's two and a half done. It's okay, but I feel like it's actually not too much Cypher progress yeah. against the Wax Artist. So, I mean, we'll see. Forward, ideally, I think the Cypher is also one of the ones they were working on. Mm -hmm. So, ideally, he doesn't die too close to this one, but it might be kind of hard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to see the Antiquarian coming in for support here, I believe um potentially coming to get some stuns in on ua uh like right now going to get some little stuns in to try and protect to protect the forward and make sure that he can kite a little bit longer um a beautiful stun in order to counteract that hit from the 100 percent wax and freeze there lychee which is um wonderful coordination on the survivor side so we're just going to see you know continued support in this area other survivors are going to push the cyphers but unfortunately the forward is going to go down Right, and it looks like he may be going back into the basement for a second time here. So it would be a little bit tricky for other survivors to rescue him at this point. Nobody has tied mm -hmm. Turner either. So I would predict the survivors will probably decide to just sacrifice him. But mm -hmm. we'll see how this goes. The ciphers still require a little bit of progress there on the right. Yeah. Um, we are seeing that the primed, well, feature prime cipher is at about 57% and seems to be not being pushed at the moment. Um, actually, I think maybe none of the ciphers are being worked on, but they are definitely going to have to buckle down and focus on those in order to get a prime against this wax artist who is now, I believe, uh, moving on to chase CB and actually teleporting to cut off, um, to prevent any, any transition from the graveyard, um, from happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does look like Barmaid has started her drink. They are potentially Ooh. pushing a new cipher. I'm not really sure um, how that one's going. But yeah, it goes down to the hot wax here after trying to use a flywheel kind of to predict, I believe. Yeah. But didn't exactly pan out. So <laughs> Barmaid is going to go on the chair. Antiquarian trying to get in a few taps at the cipher close by. But unfortunately, yeah. this chair is also really close to the cipher. So <laughs> Max Artist can go ahead and seal that one off. Um, yeah, the antiquarian kind of not not like traps, but kind of sort of traps <laughs> inside mm -hmm. the graveyard at this point because the wax artist can kind of um, has a pretty good camping angle actually. Yeah, absolutely. Able to block up that cipher, which of course is one of the wax artist's greatest abilities. Um, but we are seeing another cipher being pushed at the moment, so I believe that the antiquarian is going to wait out until you know the last possible section uh, second in order to get that rescue off. You know, you want to buy time. You want to make sure that the cipher is as close to ninety nine percent as possible. So just uh, triggering kittenitis right now, I believe, and just waiting to come in. But finally going in for the approach, getting a little bit closer, waiting to come into the chair, but going to have to you know head right over soon considering the wax artist could freeze at any moment and then you know force the barmaid to be sent back to the manor mm -hmm. yeah i'll move the face cams for the next match thanks for <laughs> letting us know um but yeah unfortunately it looks like we have another elimination for ct side mm -hmm. antiquarian there unable to make that rescue was was kind of a pivotal point there too and again i feel like because she was kind of coming in from an angle where she was very easily cut off, it was a really difficult situation mm -hmm. for her. But we do see the teleport coming on here and actually going right onto the oh! tram. So okay. tram coming into play and Hunter is going to take the tram too. So they'll temporarily be at peace until they get off on the next stop. 
they're, you know, having a nice ride together. Everything is going to be really bad as soon as it's over. And it's over! Everything is going to get really bad! Um, so we're going to see the Antiquarian uh, flywheel beautifully there, but unfortunately it doesn't work out in her favor. Uh, she is going to go down on the tracks and, of course, going to wait for the tram to pass you by so you don't have to deal with um, any of that secondary hit and then down nonsense. This is the Embalmer. I just lied. Sorry. Um, the Embalmer is going to go down and be placed on the chair now um, after that little failed flywheel there, but the gate is almost open. Unfortunately, it isn't antiquarian on the gate, so it does take a little bit longer to open. She might have been gone by now, but you know, got to deal with that, that gate decoding debuff. But definitely going to go out. You know, you want to take that one escape at the best of your ability. It's a lot better than a 5-0 in your first match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... ACT's Hunter doing a good job of securing that three escape right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see how CT's Hunter can counter against yeah. ACT survivors next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, good match to start us off right there. Match. Lots of fun in that. Um, we did. I, I learned after my silly that it means that um, we have to knock forward out of the meta now he did lose the 1v1 to the wax artist there. <laughs> mm, that is true. Yeah, we're gonna have to, so hey guys, unfortunately we're gonna have to remove forward from the meta entirely because he, um, the forward player was eliminated in this one match. I hope you all understand. Uh, please say your goodbyes, send your condolences, he will be accepting flowers. They will, some of them will be given to the wax artist as a reward, maybe, for that. Not sure. Not sure where I'm going with this bit. <laughs> <laughs> But it's there. The bit is there. Do what you want with it. Yes. Um, let's see. Our video was being mean to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry everyone. I think in between, if I have a chance to, um, maybe like after. But I might have to wait until after the ACT versus CT matches. Yeah. But after that, I might try to adjust the situation a little bit more. Hmm. For now, though, I can move the face cam so that we can see the cipher progress. We're going to get out of your way. We're going to be moved out of the way uh, for your sake. You can see the important things going on. It is nice to have the cipher progress. We were like talking about it while we were setting up where we were like, what should we cover? Because we kind of have to cover something. <laughs> we were like, maybe the cipher progress? Maybe? Because um, we can just share that verbally, but um, it is nice to have. It's very nice to have. We didn't have cipher progress during IVA, which was quite funny, I believe. Um, so we would just have to, like... IVA was great, but we uh, had to, like, guess <laughs> how the cyphers were going uh, based on pings if we happened to be lucky enough to see them. <laughs> so here, it's fun on the tournament server with all of the exact numbers. Then we know exactly what's going on. I'm seeing a nice boat here, Lychee. What are your thoughts on the boat? <laughs> it is it is a nice boat. Is this supposed to be like a replication of Lakeside or not really? I don't know. Um I, I tell. think that could be Lakeside. Uh, I did also see an Eternal Aurora poster earlier from uh Koa 5. So um if we're on Lakeside it's a Lakeside recreation. If we're not on Lakeside, it is a reference to the first Call of the Abyss. Mm -hmm. But I think Oh, Doctor! First officer, what's going on? Ignore our accidental spoilers. <laughs> Veronica giving us a preview of the next match. <laughs> I'm looking at things so fast that I'm announcing them, and uh, now you guys can't ignore them, and you kind of know what's going on in the next match, but it's okay because it showed up on the screen. So is it a spoiler, really? Just for the attentive people um, around. Right. So um, we're going to wait a second before we head into the bands and picks for the next round. <laughs> so we'll just spend some time with the Chinese casters here <laughs> as we wait Thanks. around. I, I'm rocking with their suits, Lichi. I really am. I yeah. think they should get the plushies little suits. Oh my gosh, that would be cute. I know! It would be so fun. Some people make like cute little clothes for theirs, and I, I think it's the sweetest thing in the world. I could not do that though. I... I don't know. I treat mine like prized possessions and not like stuffed animals, so I've never touched their clothes and they literally like sit on a shelf <laughs> in my room. Oh like, yeah, this is like a trophy, and it is literally a stuffed animal. But let's uh, stop talking about my collections, and let's start talking about the band picks. Barmaid, out. No more Barmaid, Lychee. No more. They've had enough of Barmaid. She's out. 
Yeah. And I think this was the hunter who had a hermit, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. So that would be interesting to see how they yeah. kind of decide to use their bands and picks to counter the hermit or or to like make the hermit more viable for the hunter in this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. I'm going to see a priestess and a seer come in first, which is, you know, extremely smart, very good picks for ever sleeping, very, very strong meta survivors. Priestess, especially a lot of very long houses for her to use her portals on. Um, and survivors can go through those for support. She could do them last second while kiting. It's extremely viable. And um, the the barmaid ban first definitely means the barmaid is going to give a, a little bit more trouble. Usually priestess is a, a good priority. You don't want her to come out quite yet. But female dancer and antiquarian also being banned. Definitely antiquarian strong in general. Female dancer as well, but especially on Ever Sleeping 2. She's a, a little less map versatile than the antiquarian is. There are certain maps where she's just not, not as good, but quite strong overall mm -hmm. yeah never seen like... too many box spots first officer there he is Ooh. i wonder where he came from <laughs> yeah well, that's fun um no rescuers banned or picked so far Ooh. so this is kind of act's proactive choice to utilize that first officer i do yeah. think that he definitely has a very secure rescue <laughs> opportunity so not a bad choice of course um but they are opting that over the mercenary which is a little bit interesting here mm -hmm. yeah this Ooh, hunter perfect. does not like supporters yeah. <laughs> no and you know what i don't blame them i mean i play mostly supporters but if i could ban all my mains i would <laughs> yeah so yeah. last pick here and it's there she the doctor. is i wonder where they came from <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but yeah doctor in this pick i definitely feel like is kind of a counter to hermit yeah because i mean she's basically she can basically be like a healing machine or even like yeah. a body blocking and healing mm -hmm. um supporter if she doesn't get chased first so mm -hmm. Plus, she does have also veterans, which helps her gain right. a lot of distance against the hunter. Mm -hmm. The only drawback with Doctor, um, she's great because she has those infinite heals and really extreme, like extremely fast heals. The only drawback with Doctor is that you do have to like waste time healing with her, um, and the veterans boost kind of like completely counteracts uh, the way her kit works, where you have to kind of like tight kite in pallets and um, try and heal yourself, and that can be very difficult against very very quick hunters. Um, so I'm intrigued to, to see what they do with her. They definitely are anticipating a Hermit and maybe a Dream Witch, um, to be able to get, you know, all of those heals and stuff out of the way, especially after the Barmaid ban. We're gonna see a Clerk instead, actually, but, um, Psychologist might have been a, a better selection over the Doctor for that reason. Mm hmm Yeah, for sure. I think mm -hmm. Doctor, if she gets the first kite, this will be a little bit tricky for yeah. her but they do have seer's owl and priestess's portals to help out so hopefully they can get some teamwork going on and make something good happen yeah yeah and just looking in the chat we will be well not me personally but the other <laughs> english casters will be live streaming the chinese matches tomorrow and the day after as well um mm -hmm. for some of you it may already be tomorrow but the saturday and sunday matches so i think chocho -Cho is doing day three and sadako is doing mm -hmm day four on their respective yeah. platforms so you guys can check those out as well if you'd like to see days three and four live yeah. it is going to be live so it's it'll be at mm -hmm. a strange hour if you're in like an hour <laughs> <laughs> the the vods are nice they're like vg and i got vods i think you do you also have a live later on if i'm remembering that correctly yeah my next live yeah. is april or sorry april march 18th <laughs> Yeah, we we both got like one of each, so we're like, oh, we'll do our vods at a normal time for like our our NEU audience and viewers, and then the live ones are like, if you're awake, if you're awake, you should come. <laughs> That'll be fun, I think. Ooh, seeing our little spawn selections here, Clerk is going to spawn in the corner here. Um, I'm not gonna lie, Lichi, I totally struggle to understand what's going on in these top-down ones, and if we get these very cool graphics from main stage, I am going to be floundering trying to understand where they are. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was me too during, like, right? I don't know what that, what, what that was, which tournament that was, but like, <laughs> at this point, like, at least this one is a little bit easier to orient to because the graveyard is over there, so I'm like, okay, yeah. I can tell 
like where they're spawning in respective to the graveyard but there's a couple maps where i'm just like so cool but it's very hard to understand for those of us who are challenged in the ability of um, grasping these things. And by those people, I mean me. I mean me specifically. <laughs> <laughs> but they're loading in now, so we'll see their, their formal ones on the road. I see that nobody is uh, dressed up. We're all wearing our base clothes, which is, you know, shows a, a commitment to the um, professionalism, I think. No funny little outfits. We're just going straight in, and we're getting our abilities down, and we're gonna go up against the hunter they might be dressed up who knows sometimes they have their costumes on in the like pre-animation sometimes they don't and i find it so funny mm -hmm. sometimes you're like oh it's first officer and then other times you're like a catchy from persona 5 it's always a surprise <laughs> it is it's so jarring i'm like what is he doing here where did he come from but speaking of people coming from places, we are going to see the clerk start off in this little corner corner area outside of the graveyard here, and we are going to start with our kite on Liz. Yeah, and we don't know what traits they have yet, so that's another mystery for us to find out <laughs> later on. Um, but yeah, Liz the priestess here uh -huh. going for first kite. Mm -hmm. um, didn't decide to go for the doctor first, so yeah. already sealing off the window though. Uh, Prisons does have portals to work with, so is able to get out of this one and now can mm -hmm. flip the window. Yeah. Well, uh, beginning there, you know, a really good mind game with that little vault to start off, but I do believe that chasing a priestess first, especially on Ever Sleeping, is definitely a rough go. Um, as Quirk, you know, you're dealing with all of this, you don't want to deal with the transitionary kiting, you want to be able to throw stuff down and block off windows, and oh, we are going to see maybe another little ride on the tram. Um, will we get the hit off? Will we get the hit off? Uh, yeah, we will! Knocked off of the tram by that little hit there, the priestess will now have to kite on foot once more early, G. Yeah, the hunters, I feel like the clerks nowadays are getting really good at aiming on the train, on the tram. Ooh. Uh, Sears Owl coming in to block a oh. hit, so Priestess does have another portal to work with. Um, we do see now the clerk has Blink as her mm -hmm. trait, but it looks like First Officer is actually going to help pull down the pallets. Oh! As mentioned, uh, we are seeing a catchy from Persona 5, and he is taking over the kite now. Um, that was a beautiful little pallet stun there. Did manage to take the hit using this pocket watch now in order to kind of prevent that, you know, that immediate down from, um, you know, playing the little mind game in order to make sure that the clerk cannot catch up to him properly and transitioning all the way over into the graveyard, which is extremely strong for kiting. Uh, Cyphers are being pushed pretty okay. Clerk finally able to start putting some pressure on them, possibly, and we're going to see another little block, but... <gasps> Ooh! Yeah, the blink went right into the wall there. First officer buying quite a lot of time here, definitely with his watches. Um, not really the best target for the clerk, so mm -hmm. we'll see if she decides to continue to commit, but I feel like this is giving the survivors a lot of decoding mm -hmm. time. And plus, once he's actually on the chair, he can sit on the chair for so long that yeah. it really it's really hard when he well, becomes the first target. But yeah, he's using his watch there. once again. Uh huh. Preventing that hit uh, after the pallet is thrown by using that watch right away, buying some distance. Clerk, not quite sure what direction he's going, what side he's on, going to chase forward here. Uh, we are going to see a support portal in the area that she's finally catching sort of view of. Knight is going to continue on the chase. Uh, following Fox around here, I believe, is up on pocket watch time, so now able to actually see where he is and chase him on foot without having to deal with that pesky little time delay. Mm hmm. Oh, mind gaming at the pallet here, but actually gets the stun onto the clerk. So mm -hmm. doing a really good job of not, not dropping down the pallet too early um, and instead really committing to that mind game there for the first mm -hmm. officer. Yeah. Beautiful kite from Fox here on the first officer now, you know, out of stuff utilized, but definitely still going very strong. Um, another beautiful pallet stun from the first officer here in the graveyard area, able to transition even further out, not even wasting the time to break that pallet there, you know want to get this down before the ciphers are popped and primed, but they're pretty far along, Leechy. They are going to have a prime cipher really soon. I do not think that down on the first officer will be seen before the cipher is popped. Um, ooh, ah, another pallet stun. This is getting really rough. I'm starting to feel a little sad. <laughs> oh starting to get a little sad. <laughs> oh, he actually makes the vault in time, too, and the oh. ciphers are nearly primed. Um, oh, he's Clerk is once trim. again going to try to knock the survivor off the tram actually manages to do so Ooh, but Cypher's okay. already primed as well and Seer is actually going to come over to farm more owls which is oh kind of goodness. an annoyance for the hunter for sure 
Oh, I think I would cry and throw up if this happened to me. I cannot, I cannot lie. Um, but we're gonna continue with our chase here. Cypher is primed. We are going to see it get popped right after this down on the first officer. Actually going to change targets to the seer possibly in order to no longer deal with the first officer with all of those, you know, constant pallet throws right in your face. So knight, you know, uh, moving on, but beautiful support portals from the priestess here. Trying to block up the gate. There's no one there yet. Um, we are going to see seer be the continued chase. Oh, teleport. Okay. We're changing things up. Mm -hmm. And the survivor took the tram so quickly, I didn't even realize what happened there. Um, it's like they instantly <laughs> was on the tram and, and left. So Claire has to walk all the way over to be able to catch Fox. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. other survivors seem like got pretty good progress on the gate, but it is being mm -hmm. uh, blocked by the clerk, or, the, or seer at least was. Oh, um, Switching off okay. to the priestess there. Yeah, they've, they're oh. kind of playing... Oh no! The Another team. mind game. Everybody, they're oh! out! Oh my gosh! It is a beautiful game. play from the survivors there. That hurt me a lot. That last pallet stun really came in clutch there at the and end. A little spin on, on the dungeon afterward. Oh my god! <laughs> I would feel so violated. Oh my gosh! I I want to see the match stats to see how many pallet stuns that was for Fox in total. Mm -hmm. I really need to see that. Yeah, I need to see that that talent that uh, total palette stun count because that was a beautiful kite. Like, despite the um, the agony that that put me in um, as someone who plays hunter on occasion, I was like, oh my god! But beautiful, beautiful. I cannot describe it any other way. It was a wonderful, gorgeous kite. Lots of skill. Definitely knew what to do against that clerk. Um, the recordings were coming into play to lift the palette up uh there weren't recordings to break the pallets just going on chase with this first officer using the watches so well uh you know spending all of that time and then the support coming in from the seer and the priestess and the the decoding being done so steadily by the doctor you know it just oh man but beautiful aims at the at the tram there in order to knock them off twice in a row it was really good i did enjoy that yeah that is impressive and i'm sure the hunter practiced mm -hmm doing that to be actually be able to <laughs> pull it off so well so mm -hmm. yeah but five Zero. five points for act yeah. in this match so um i think that puts them at eight to Ooh. one five oh, total. five of them lychee five pallet stuns and uh practically 200 percent decoding from both the uh doctor and the seer you know seer's one percent off but in my heart they both did two cyphers each which is very kind and impressive of them um <laughs> and a 193 containment time from that first officer so fox is a, a force to reckon with really a force to reckon with mm -hmm. he, a wonderful job wonderful job ACT definitely knows what they're doing Let me see. I am actually going to try to turn off my camera for a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see if this might help or something. Mm -hmm. Just see what happens. Yeah. See what Sorry, happens. everyone. The stream is still lagging quite a bit. Um, maybe after ACT versus CT. We'll take a little bit of a longer break so I can try to see what I can do. But for sure, for the March 18th, live stream i'm gonna try to figure things out so it's not mm. not so laggy learning the ropes catching up making sure everything's good but uh an eight to one eight to one on the points <laughs> So, uh, second round is looking quite dire. They would need to achieve sort of a, a full win on their own, possibly wins in both of the rounds. Um, yeah, they would need to secure wins in both rounds to um, try and even that up at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely putting CT in a little bit of a rough spot there. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll see if they can bounce back and and how they can how they can do so. Yeah. How they go through with that one? How they figure it out? Yep. So I'm gonna see what I can do here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, everything is active. Yay! Yeah. But Veronica, it's just <laughs> it might just be you on the screen for a moment um, until we load up the next match. 
Hi, everybody. It's me on the screen. Wow. Unfortunately, we did lose Lychee, and I will be taking over the channel. Um, I'm thinking of changing the direction of content that we post. Um, I'm thinking of doing puppet shows uh, with the Survivor plushies. Um, I hope everyone is interested. It's the direction that we're taking uh, Ivy Lychee in in the next um, business quarter. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you approve, you know. Um, Ghost of Fleechy is really into the idea, so I'm hoping that uh, everyone else is as well. Um, maybe you're going to pull off some Shakespeare plays, but and our audience, of course, for the new puppet show idea. <laughs> I love this little animation screen. It's so cute. They had uh, pets for the Japan qualifiers, like, sitting around, and they were so, so cute. Um, but we... Uh, we have actual survivors in the audience at that time, which is so fun. If I got, like, put up there and assigned thief, I think I would cry. Also, hi, everyone. Hi. Thank you. I'm glad that you like our outfits. We do have some outfits on today. Give me a moment here. The video has disappeared. <laughs> I cannot tell if it's actually disappeared or if that's just the streaming software. So that's fun. Who knows? It's one or the other. <laughs> Um, we'll find out, yeah. But I am streaming to you, Veronica, but I'm not actually streaming to everybody else. So. <laughs> I can see everything. I am currently staring uh, directly at the uh, CN casters and also the plushies that are still there. And I'm really wondering, like, what the little figurine on the table is. I'm not sure. Oh, they're actually hiding Ripper and Gardener behind the signs. I've noticed more. We're having some swap outs here in the little video as we watch. So they've swapped in Sanya for Knight. Um, oh, both hunters are being swapped, it seems. UA is going to make way for Ching. We are going to see him, everyone. Finally, on the, on the stage. I'm so excited. Yes. And <laughs> it looks like, oh... By the uh, the figure on the little figure on the table, I think is like the mm -hmm. mascot for that product <gasps> that they're getting like sponsored by mm -hmm. or something, and it's like mm -hmm. some kind of mouth spray. I rock with it. I think it's fun. I think yeah. that we should all be sponsored by mouth spray. Also, unfortunately, I'm not drinking a bubble tea. It is just a fun Starbucks cup. I thank you for noticing. Um, it's like got flowers on it. If it would show up on my. <laughs> it's like watermelon colored, but it's not watermelon. This is what it is. <laughs> Whatever is going on with it. I couldn't find any other cups, and then we were out of water in the water cooler. Cooler. Cooler, as well. Um, which was interesting. So I have, like, half a... Half a drink. We're, I'm thinking of replacing it with iced tea. Uh, we'll pop back in for next round. We'll figure it out. We'll see what happens on break. We'll see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm looking at the stream from... From my perspective it looks a little bit better now i think that's good but we'll we'll the viewers you guys can let us know if it does look better now that i have my camera off <laughs> to me it looks a little bit smoother at the moment but i think like once we get into the match we'll find out for real mm -hmm. but yeah thanks veronica for carrying um with your <laughs> camera on <laughs> I love the little outside of the great plush i think of getting one but i know he's like absurdly expensive um like a, a little bit out of my price range um <laughs> we're getting out to our here so i'm gonna spare you from my veronica fun fact of the day maybe we'll get into it later um instead you know we're seeing act start on the hunter side ct is on the survivor side as far as i can tell um we've seen some random selections for our piece of answer and i believe we are on chinatown if i can see that little map correctly up at the top and priest and sierra are being taken out not available can't use them. We're not going to see them. Not going to see them. Mm -hmm. Okay, the stream <laughs> looks to me like it's lagging a little bit, but... <laughs> so we can't get uh, we can't get it perfect, but I some people are saying it looks a little bit better than before, so I think we'll do this for now, um, at least for the rest of this round. But mm -hmm. yeah, Chinatown, Clark Ban, that's fun. Uh, Leaf Plaguing for CT, so a different hunter as well. Mm -hmm. We did see the swaps on both sides. Yeah. Gonna see Antiquarian and Barmaid come out first. Um, I do believe we saw them come out first in a prior round. They are very solid, so I'm not surprised. You got those Doblins on the field, you got that Fluid on the field, and you are kind of golden and ready to cycle. 
Uh, I'm gonna get into our next bands now. I'm thinking maybe Dancer, maybe her acrobatics boost is pretty good on Chinatown, and um, plenty of places for her to put her boxes. Um, Toy Merchant is also very strong in this map, but I doubt that a band will be used on her at this point in time. Um, if there was the Never mind. Sorry, guys. I'm wrong, and I lied. We are going to see Toy Merchant get banned. Um, and forward as well, so we'll go into our next Remember section, but definitely don't want to deal with any transitions across this map here from Leaf. But we will be seeing the Dancer instead, so we're training my desired band for my, uh, desired pick. So, <laughs> we're going to see Dancer, uh, come in on the field, BG. How are you, what are your thoughts on this, um, sort of girl power team comp so far? I'm rocking with it. Yeah, I'm loving it. I think... <laughs> <laughs> all really meta characters these days like the antiquary and the dancer are just so strong that i'm surprised yeah. they haven't been banned earlier but of course on this mm -hmm. map like priestess kind of has to take priority too for so, sure a little bit rough there tough out here there's so many survivors to ban and so little ban spots um first officer mercenary getting banned we're gonna see first officer come in again um you know act very strong on the first officer clearly so i'm a little bit scared myself uh, as to how that plays out. Possibly going to see another um, really good kite from Fox here, but actually not putting Fox on the first officer this time, as far as I can tell from the lineup. Um, very intrigued, but enjoying this. Um, sort of a, a girl power featuring first officer comp. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so... First officer being the only rescuer here. I feel like actually single rescuer is pretty much the meta nowadays. Mm -hmm. You never see double yeah. rescuer. It's like three flywheel um, or broken windows, but like three flywheel, um, one rescue, which is very good. It's more fun to watch for sure than um, three rescuer, one decoder was back in Koa 4. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh, the three rescuer, one decoder. That oh, it's seems so like so long. I, it's like it's slowly been transitioning to more and more cipher rush. <laughs> you got like I three know. rescuer, one decoder, and then last year mm -hmm. I feel like double rescuer was common, mm -hmm. and now this year it's like single rescuer team comps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more fun, more fun that way to me at least in my mind palace. We're gonna see sculptor come out onto the field with uh, Leaf here playing on the hunter side against ACT, who have um shown us in the last round that they are certainly not scared of coordination and they are definitely very very capable of kiting so um hopefully leaf is able to match up to that skill and prowess and uh especially on chinatown what are your thoughts on sculptor on chinatown how do you think that's uh gonna work out i feel like there are a lot of little areas to catch them in but i'm not not sure depends yeah i feel like sculptor i mean Maybe the narrow alleyways can be helpful, but I feel like with the female dancer, it's going to be pretty Ooh, rough yeah. for her regardless. Um, the middle area will definitely, uh, I'm guessing, will be taken over by the female dancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If not, she'll rotate into there. Yeah, we're not going to see her spawn right in the middle, but I do think they'll probably rotate dancer into center, or they'll rotate her into the hotel area if she's not already there. Um, definitely a good place to start her off. Plenty of places for her to put down those boxes and cause some trouble for the hunter she might actually be at the hotel already again i'm not quite sure what's going on in the graphics but I'm gonna see sculpture spawn in the corner there near the antiquarian and the first officer um potentially the barmaid for chase as well uh she is pretty good against a barmaid considering when you toss those statues out you can grab that you can um any chip damage hunter against barmaid in general it's she's trying to get that drink off and if you can get one of those chip hits in she's right up to 75 health and not <laughs> not able to get her drink off or even mix a new one without a lot of trouble so could be seeing barmaid on first chase if you're not scared of um trying to cut out those little dolphins mm -hmm. and the antiquarian on this map is so strong mm -hmm. too because yeah. she has some really good jump spots um mm -hmm. flipping over the railing of the two stories and such so we'll get to see her in action which will be fun mm -hmm. Will. I'm so excited. They're on the cart. They're on the cart. Um, <laughs> it intrigues me every time. I get so excited. He's leading first to make sure there's no danger. And if there is, it means that the rest of them can get out and the first officer will be the sacrifice, which I think is fair. You know, I think that's fair. <laughs> He's the rescuer after all. It's kind of his job.
This bit it reminds me of Little Shop of Horrors. And then I'm like, hmm, I see. More player interview. Link to the match soon. Alright, we're loading right in, Lychee. So Leaf's going to start in this little two-story area um, and get right on the prowl to find that first survivor. Um, potentially first chase on Fox, which we did see last time chasing Fox is very difficult. Um, Janzer is in the hotel area now, placing down some slow boxes for support and seemingly actually changing. No, not going for list, kind of rotating around to find the ideal chase here. Um, trump card and detention build, which is pretty generic, but generic in a good way. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we see survivors all have... Um knee-jerk although it's still the old breaking windows mm -hmm. uh, broken windows and a picture there that we're seeing but <laughs> yeah um i'm pretty sure it's representing the new knee-jerk here so mm -hmm. only first officer with tide and yeah zen here zen being the barmaid is going to go ahead and loop probably going to loop around this area a few times if they can and, and probably will get some support eventually from priestess or whoever mm -hmm. comes by i would expect dancer and priestess yeah Definitely going to see some support on the line, hopefully soon. Um, Zen is going to continue chasing around, trying to get that drop hit there, unable to get it. Already transitioning out of the way and continuing on here. Um, so we're going to see sort of a straightforward chase here. Going to have to dodge those statues, doing a beautiful little job of that, making sure that they're not in the way, make sure you're not taking any of those chip hits. Um, and going to take a body from the, or take a hit from the main body with the chisel and take that drink right away, Lychee, in order to try and kite it off. Mm -hmm. And she has pretty good distance against the sculptor at the moment there. Um, we see the AI here coming in, <laughs> predicting most likely a draw or a three escape already. So we'll see if that pans out to be true or not, Veronica. It's always, <laughs> always fun to see what, what the AI is trying to predict. But Barmaid doing such a good job of only taking the basic hit here, dodging all those statues. So very impressive for sure. Mm-hmm. Letting a uh, second hit on the barmaid here, but, you know, she wasn't able to mix her drink in time. She won't be able to, considering it takes about 10 seconds or so in order to get it down um, when she's already injured. I think losing the barmaid for a second and going over to the stairs when she transitioned right into the hotel. So hopefully trying to cut her off um, as she's trying to do a loop or something, but certainly not the, the direction that she went in herself um, right away. Uh, going to have to... Oh! Okay, we're following around here, going down the stairs, looking for those survivors again, and they are rotating out of the area. So now Fox is in the vicinity of the hotel here, um, and as we saw last time, can be pretty nasty to chase. Mm -hmm. Does get a chip here and has blink as well, so we'll see if the sculptor can get one more chip. Mm -hmm. But no, the antiquarian is going to utilize those stuns and make things even more difficult here. Um, sculptor might have to settle for a basic attack if she can't. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have any more statues. Yeah, trying to mind game around that little uh, bottom of the staircase there, but not going to work out, going out to get that. And as you mentioned, that was a beautiful little toss right over the railway in order to um, transition out of the area, utilizing the blink in the same way to try and, you know, one up and go the exact same route. Um, going to get another main body hit with the chisel, and now we are going to see foxes down, but two ciphers remaining and pretty decent progress on them with all of the other survivors available to come rescue. Mm hmm And... It looks like she is actually going to go into the basement here. Um, the ciphers are looking pretty good though, so we'll see if they decide mm -hmm. to do like a rescue uh, right yeah. before the end mm -hmm. of the chair time, or what's the plan for the survivors here? <laughs> First officer is coming in already, so. Yeah. Ooh, trying to block the doorway there a little bit. First officer able to get down. Um, not landing a hit quite yet. Still utilizing that watch. Possibly going to, yeah, just spam statues at the chair to see if some chips can be hotten. Uh, I do believe that we have seen a little bit of chip damage here. Oh, ooh, oh, chair shock, okay. Uh, but the cypher is primed. It's going to be popped, and they are going to have tide turner in order to get out of the basement. But we are going to see another hit on the first officer there, Lychee. Yeah, that was a lot happening right there. And I feel like, actually, the first officer... Um maybe rescued a little bit mm -hmm. hastily actually because he can still rescue even when he reaches full damage because he has that extra little delay yeah. damage so i think like if he could have managed to take a basic attack and rescue that would have been the best case scenario mm -hmm. if not and he does get chipped down it's kind of the same situation that we saw mm -hmm. already so um yeah We'll see they how this are goes, but it's, it's, it's still fine for the survivors. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, good progress on the gate so far. Teleport is up for Sculptor, though, so we'll see. She has tinnitus, so may not decide to teleport right away, but... Yeah, trying to be safe, uh, but ACT already in the lead. They might be going for a little bit more. They might just be trying to make sure that they can grab that through escape. 
uh, which does seem to be what they're doing here. I believe that the survivors are going to get out of the gate on both ends. Um, yeah, all right. We are going to see a three escape on the side of ACT to uh, start off our second half of that second round of that. Yeah, second round. I always mix up the, the rounds and the halves and then I'm like, hmm, that's not right. <laughs> I know, especially because like the way that it's called is like mm -hmm. each match up between like the teams i guess is called a match and then you have yeah. what they call a game which is what we usually call yeah. a round mm -hmm. <laughs> and then and then like the individual matches they just call like the halves, and they're called halves. so but, it's very confusing you know, sometimes um and she, maybe you could try turning my camera off as well and see if that makes the stream be nicer to us <laughs> for now <laughs> yeah i think we're gonna see we might least... just hear our voices for a little <laughs> At least we'll be matching now. <laughs> but, um... Someone's gonna tune in and be like, that's what Lichi looks like? And they've like never seen any of the, the qualifier streams before. And I'm like, no, 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 that's me. That's not Lichi, I promise. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll see. Yeah, but I'm going to put up- There we go up the screen for the um the audience here and this time they're not going to see this see what we see so there's no spoilers veronica <laughs> even if we are seeing spoilers um i i might show them yes all right so bear with us for this match and then what we'll see if they end 2-0 or whenever this is over we'll take a quick break at the end of that yeah um, and we'll see us again later hopefully probably <laughs> yeah hopefully hopefully you'll see our faces again but we'll see mm -hmm. how kind this stream decides to be um for now though ct versus act this is the second half of round two mm -hmm. yeah we're gone sorry everybody <laughs> <laughs> beautiful plays so far from act ct trying to keep up to the best of their ability um we are going to see uh I believe uh, ACT is on the Hunter side now. We have swapped out for our uh, former NAU representation, so I'm very excited to see that occur and things come in. We'll be um, seeing a classical Hunter who we're all kind of familiar with. And um, slight changes on the roster here. We did get um, Sanya swapped in uh, during the little break that they had between rounds. But we're going to start off with our band picks here. We are starting with a mercenary pick, Lichi. So um, going right for that rescuer. They're... Uh, Usually, they've been waiting a little bit to pull out first officers, but this time going right for the mark. Mm -hmm. Making sure they have that rescue. And they did play on the Bloody Queen as well, so CT mm -hmm. is like basically saying we don't want a tie coming from <laughs> Ching. We definitely want yep. to try to get this win. So it's it's a tough order though, because I mean, this they got a three, like the previous survivors got three escape. Their hunter only got one kill, so. Mm -hmm. Now they're gonna have to try to get at least three survivors out, ideally four, yeah. which is pretty hard. Can it be very difficult? Um, not always an easy feat. A lot of pressure on their side uh, in order to do that. So we're gonna see the prospector come out. You know, they're pulling out all of these really good support survivors to make sure that they can get everybody out of the gate to the best of their ability. So last pick, I'm kind of expecting another good support character. Um, Okay, yeah, patient, very good, not particularly support, but extremely good on kite, so he would be able to hold his own for sure, um, if first chase or, you know, middle game or end game. Um, probably going to see the usual sort of builds that we see. Um, maybe on Hunter's side, we might be seeing something like a clerk. Um, she does have very high kill potential, so, you know, getting them right out of the game with this round, too, if they can manage to pull that, but I do wonder. I do wonder what we'll see. Mm -hmm. Definitely putting out survivors that have really good survivability, though. Mm -hmm. With the stunner, the mercenary, the patient with his three hooks. So, for sure there could be a chance, but we'll see how it pans out. And I'm curious uh -huh. what Ching will play. Mm -hmm. Oh, Wax Artist! Oh. So, Our friend the Wax Artist! Mm -hmm. We saw their other hunter play Wax Artist as well, so... Now going to potentially see a repeat performance from Ching? We'll see. Mm -hmm. We're having a, a little double wax day, um, representing both the wax artist and uh, his sister. So, you know, beautiful little little thing. Uh, against this comp, I think everything's going to be mm, 
I'm not sure. I think... No, I'm not sure. I got nothing. Nietzsche, what are your thoughts on Lex versus Kinsis Cop? It was gonna come up with them, and I was like, no. No idea. I think, actually, the Antiquary and Prospector, even though they are somewhat countered by wax artists, they still do have a chance, because it, mm. it kind of depends. If you can stun the wax artist just as long or longer than he can freeze you, then <laughs> you still have a chance of getting away. But Right! Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but definitely not a bad pick from Ching's side either. I feel like Wax Artist is pretty strong in getting at least one kill or or a tie, so... Mm -hmm. And For also, sure. we'll have to see the trait here. There's options. Mm -hmm. Teleport, Blink, There's Excitement so even. Although, although Wax Artist I feel like doesn't usually bring <laughs> Excitement, but yeah, still options here since this is a larger map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very curious just to see what happens. Um... I do think that things could work out, you know, Patience got hooks and the Mercenary's got elbow pads, so you're gonna have to catch up. Wax Artist is a little bit slow, um, but the very, very experienced Wax Artist, which of course you see on pro, pro teams like this, are uh, going to be able to shoot the Wax extremely far and knock those survivors out of the gate. Oh, Kijang and Robo time. Uh, but you're gonna be able to see him, you know, knock those survivors down and make sure that they can't transition as well as they would against other hunters if he can aim it all correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thing about this map here, Chinatown, is Ooh. also there's a lot of ciphers that tend to spawn very close together. And it is a bigger map, but if Wax Artist can manage to take advantage of that, potentially using the Wax to block off some ciphers, Ooh. resulting in a situation where the last couple of ciphers are really close for him to camp, yeah. I mean, it's possible. Um, even if his stream, his map control is not as great as Dreamwish, he still does <laughs> have that that range map control there so yeah we'll see. but already on to the first ch chase and there's actually two survivors in the nearby here mm. i got two options here uh, unfortunately one of them's a prospector and unfortunately one of them's an antiquarian so neither of them are very good first chases to have uh you know two here you got options you're going to take them going for the prospector here going to get a beautiful first hit um a nice little stun from the prospector there but not enough to prevent the wax artist from catching up ciphers have been started both of them are around 30 percent being pushed a little bit uh sonia is going to kite around this area here um going to loop around the hotel go up the stairs go down the stairs you know go around to the area and i believe antiquarian might still be yeah antiquarian still around so able to support if necessary and a beautiful little stun there but 97 percent wax going to be for frozen and, um, very soon, if uh, not very careful. And like right now, right now is a good time. Right now is soon. So we're gonna see the prospector go down. Um, five ciphers still remaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because the antiquarian and the the um, prospector there was kind mm -hmm. of <laughs> being looped at first, it took a little bit of a while for them to get on that cipher. And also I feel like it's a little bit unfortunate they got counter looped so quickly in the beginning with Ching just jumping right down to the prospector's face. Yeah. Um, always scary when that, when that happens to you as a survivor. But yeah, a little bit unfortunate in that scenario. Prospector did have a good stun though, calculating the wax to be exactly 97% and not 100 mm -hmm. um, earlier. But yeah, we see Antiquarian coming back for more support now. Ooh. A little knockback there, uh, no stun on the ability to hit, but a beautiful little knockback. Um, we are going to see the Prospector on beautiful blink! Very, very quick, uh, going to almost land that hit, unable to get it in time. Um, just not quite catching up to the Prospector yet, but still utilizing the Swax in order to hopefully get a freeze soon. Antiquarian still in the area, getting a little stun against the wall, and going to be stunned by the Wax there. So unable to go in for support right away again. Prospector with a nice little pallet stun on that small area, and, you know, freezing every survivor in his wake to get to this Prospector. Prospector. And it's gonna work. It's got the prospector, but anti-crane in the area, you gotta be careful. She's still got quite a bit of flute left to work with, so she could get a balloon rescue. Unfortunately, not going to a beautiful drop just in time from Ching um, and gonna land that hit. So now we have the mercenary is able to rescue with that delayed damage, but uh, three ciphers remaining. So I'm unsure what they will do here, Lee Chi. Right, and prospector here still down on the ground and will be picked up and shared here. And the rest of the team, other than the patient, is not in super good health. So 
we'll see. The mercenary is still in the area. Um, mm -hmm. One cipher. The cipher can be blocked for Ching for sure. Yeah, the other sure. two are healing up. So kind of in a regrouping kind of situation here. We'll see if the mercenary decides to make the rescue or not. They're kind of in a situation where they want to have as many survivors at the end game as possible since they're aiming for a win. But this could end up being a double down if it's not careful. So okay, we are going to see that go in right there. Um gonna see our first hit. We're going to see a freezing attempt and the searing waxes out. We are at full presence. Um able to get that down on the mercenary now continuing to focus on the prospector here um these walls are going to break sooner than later so you got to be careful with how much you vault them and a beautiful little hot wax ball in order to get that prospector down antiquarian in the area to hopefully support but unable to do it in time you're going to try instead to heal up the mercenary and then get out of dodge because it's it's unfortunately not going to work out so three survivors are three cyphers still remaining uh three survivors remaining as well with the mercenary now being put on chair for the first time yeah a little bit unfortunate situation for CT mm -hmm. because two survivors doing at least two more ciphers and somebody's on the chair. Um, that's going to be really rough. Even if it is mercenary and he does have a longer chair time, I guess at least that is one good thing about him being on the chair. Yeah. But still a very, very hard situation here. Mm -hmm. And I guess this is one of the the ciphers being done because Wax Artist has sealed it off as well. Yeah, uh, preventing that decoding from happening, the patient coming in for the rescue here, going to actually hook right into the wax artist who will now spray him directly in the face with the wax. Uh, a beautiful play by swapping to the searing wax in order to prevent this rescue from happening. Unfortunately, we are going to see it down on the patient. The mercenary will be able to get away, but it's a question of how long he can be away for. Um, utilizing the wax further, you know, using these walls in order to not take that uh, wax damage, but a beautiful blink, going to get that hit, and now going to have to, um, go back to the patient to place him on chair, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Hang on, move so fast. goes on chair, <laughs> Mercenary is gonna go down soon, and, I mean, the ciphers are just not gonna be able to get done for a very mm -hmm. long time in this situation. Plus, they're all kind of on this street area, like, this main street area, so this yeah. wax artist could potentially keep walking up and down the street, and... <laughs> blocking off ciphers as he chases and people. Just patrol them, and they, they can't get any decoding done, so it's gonna be a little bit rough to try and counteract that and deal with that. Um, Antiquarian, of course, in the area. Mercenary is down. She is the only person up and the only person able to kite. Also the only person able to go in and rescue that patient at this time. Um, potentially going in to push for it. I mean, they can't do a lot in this situation. I wouldn't blame them if they did attempt that rescue, but looping around this building instead of going in. So potentially just trying to distract and buy time. Yeah, I think we're going to see this split push and pull situation mm -hmm. between the two survivors, but it's only Ooh. a matter of time. Patient is dead on chair by now, so mm -hmm. Mercenary might try to body block a little bit while he's still up, it looks like. Um, does have hooks to work with for the patient, though, so we'll see if he can get away and try mm -hmm. to buy time. Because the last two ciphers, they're close, but with one person decoding, it's still going to be really hard. Yeah. It's gonna be a little bit rough you know they're close they're really getting there but they only have um one survivor who's able to work on them the mercenary is used to self-heal he is down we have just seen the flywheel been used on the patient and the patient has now been downed as well uh antiquarian is going to have to come over and try to pop this cypher patient is going to be eliminated and sent back to the manor um going to pop yeah right now while in the chairing animation unfortunately mercenary on half health which is not something you want on a survivor's side um, but for Ching, that's looking really good, Leiji. You know, you do want that mercenary on half health for your detention hits to go right through. But with a wax artist full presence, you could probably <laughs> do that to him anyway with the searing wax if you can aim it properly. But gonna look around the area and actually teleport over to the gate. Antiquarian, of course, has a gate decoding debuff, so it's gonna take her a little bit longer to get it open, utilizing um, some of the last remnants of her flute to get a brief little stun there. But just going to use the wax instead of uh, hitting with that that gun. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Antiquarian gonna go down. Ching has definitely achieved his objective here. And um, yeah, because CT needed three survivors out. So in this case, even if they get one out, it's not enough for them to bring this back. It's gonna be 2 0 overall for ACT, and they're gonna take this rest yeah. of three. So mm -hmm. we'll just watch as the Mercenary makes that escape. Ooh. But I think once this is over, we can congratulate ACT. Yeah, we sure can. Um, 
definitely well earned. Uh, ACT survivors and their hunters were extremely strong, uh, very well versed in what they were doing, clearly very comfortable on the field with what they were doing. Um, a beautiful play from Ching at the end there uh, with that wax artist. And of course, the first kite that their survivors did, I think, will live rent free in my brain forever. And maybe I'll have nightmares of being pallet stunned five times by uh, a crow first officer. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have us on the screen, except I'm not actually moving because my camera's not. Actually <laughs> not. Um, but I'll be on the screen. <laughs> I'm thinking this can be the compromise because I was looking at the stream a little bit during the last mm -hmm. time, and I think it was a lot smoother without both of us on camera. Right. So potentially, maybe we'll have the two of us a little bit, um, making a little bit of an appearance in between the matches yeah. and such. Mm -hmm. We can show up between and do some chit chatting, and then during matches, you all can focus on the funny little matches. Yes, yeah, CTI, I do believe, is um, a newer team on the scene. Um, they're kind of just moving in, of course. Uh, as far as I remember, ACT being an established team, and it is very hard to play underdog. Um, they did a wonderful job for making it this far, and they did have some very skilled plays, and clearly their players uh, were comfortable with certain characters quite a bit, but it's very hard to go up against. Um, teams that are very very sure of what they're doing so um beautiful place from both sides but act is going to bring things home i believe if i'm looking yeah, at our number for sure Ooh, stats time. we should put the stats on for everybody to see but yeah <laughs> C ct i think like they have been around since at least Koa 4 because i remember translating one of their mm -hmm. matches i think actually right. for call the abyss 4 but that did have a little bit of a member change situation too. Mm -hmm. And I think for the the non-pro teams, definitely it's a challenge being able to match the pro teams just for the fact yeah. that the pro teams, I mean, they they live and breathe Identity 5. They're paid to do this as their job. So um, it's hard to compete for sure. But they did a, they did a good job for, for a non-pro team, I think. Uh -huh. And we'll have to see. They'll still have a chance because this way... ACT goes through the winner's bracket and CT will yeah. fall to the loser's bracket, but they still are yeah. not eliminated yet. So, yeah. still have a chance for sure. Still got a chance. We could be CT, uh, could see CT later on, perhaps. Um, and of course, it is very impressive to be able to make it to qualifiers in the first place. It's uh, not an easy feat. It's a lot of playing during COA season. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I played the most during COA season on my... Um, in terms of my little team with my friends, because uh, I really wanted those essences for those skins. Um, I fought very hard, and I think I got Paratrooper on two of my friends' accounts. I think it was two. I did not only play on my own for Abyss matches, but um, everyone else. <laughs> so, I, I live free IDV, but nobody, um, nobody pays me for it. I do it of my own volition, but love and care. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Give me a second to adjust this camera situation. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are at the end of ACT versus CT. So I actually think we can take like a five minute break. Yeah. And come back. Um, hopefully, if I can get this to work, I think we'll have us show up in between the matches a little bit and then probably be cam off during mm -hmm. the matches. But at least this way, yeah. people can actually enjoy the stream, uh, the matches right. stream. It's so weird because it did to me too, where it's like fine during the in between, but then the matches come up and it gets like weirdly spotty and like glitchy. And then it just, I'm like, oh, really? Right now? Right now? At this time? <laughs> the worst possible time for you to lag? Oh. Are we going into a round three? I don't think so. I don't think so, but I think the casters are just having a fun time yeah. talking. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn this off for the stream right now, but just taking oh. a peek. Yeah, eventually they do go oh, yeah, to player. a quick yeah. interview, but we're going to skip that part and go to a break instead. Mm -hmm. And when we get back, it'll be the second match, uh, yeah. the second two teams second. coming yeah, up. We'll so, up today. Yeah, take this chance to grab a drink or mm -hmm. whatever you need and... We'll be back soon, stream. Thank you for we sticking promise. around. <laughs> we'll be back and um, on camera more. <laughs> yes, I hope. I hope. I hope as well.
There we go. All right. I believe we are back we are on back. stream, Veronica. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, stream. I'm Hi, everyone. Veronica. This is Lychee. As you know, you know Lychee. <laughs> <laughs> Who we is are still in... here? Yeah. Hopefully. How many of you are still here? Hopefully lots. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I think we can wait a minute or so as I mm -hmm. pop the next match and then we'll go ahead and head into our second two teams playing each other for today. Yeah, we have just finished up ACT versus CT. Um, ACT pulled the win there with some beautiful plays on their side from their snow rivers and their hunters. Um, we did get to see both of their hunters play, which was great. Um, I love when they swap off and make sure that everybody gets a, a funny little chance to go. Um, but... I'm excited to see what's coming up for us next. Mm hmm Yes. Just checking the chat to see who's there. I feel like I haven't <laughs> interacted with the chat enough because of all the t stress from the technical difficulties. So, <laughs> hi everybody in the chat. <laughs> I have you all um, on my phone here so I can full screen the stuff. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm reading your messages, which is um, yes. definitely the reason. No other reason. <laughs> yeah, and I have to say I love... I love how everybody was joking about when I was gone. It was just you on the camera. And they're like, Lychee's transformed. <laughs> and we're both gone. It's like, oh, they've turned into the Chinese casters. So I love it. Yeah. yeah. We're, um, I, I think we have new caster sonas now, as I'm going to call them, uh, on stage for when our cameras are off. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So excited. We'll see. New caster sonas for us. Let's see who it's going to be. I'm rocking with the funny tie, so maybe I can be that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. The little mechanics, um, the mechanic plushie they have up, her little hat is sideways, and it's making me sad a little bit, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be fixed at some point. Yes. Yep. Hi, Chacha. Just reading the chat. Thanks for <laughs> wishing us a good day. <laughs> It's a little bit stressful, but I think I think it'll get better from now on. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lichi, your hair looks so good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica's caster persona is Lichi and vice versa, says S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should try that. We should oh start, gosh. you know, like ventriloquism. We can do that. Um, we'll just uh, act out for each other. So, you know, uh, next koa maybe during main stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll just sort of trade a little bit. <laughs> that'll be funny <laughs> you'll have to um i think i think there was like, like a dub over yeah yeah like one um practice we had where somebody was like imitating the other casters i don't remember when this was but i vaguely remember something like this happening <laughs> oh my yeah God. but i think we're gonna go ahead and head over to mm -hmm. the stream yeah Hopping back in with our little caster sonas, I believe, should be up now. Our new ones, at least. Uh, <laughs> so, hopping into our next round. The last one was very great, and we're getting into our little uh, lineup here for the team. So, we're going to start off with, um, I believe that is HY, um, and we've got some interesting- Oh my god, Postman! <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait, after this intro, I'm going to- Let me see what, what the situation is. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like okay, sorry everyone. I'm still working out this camera situation. But <laughs> streaming is very hard. We're figuring it out. Yeah, I think I'm going to transition us back to caster for now. Mm -hmm. Or it'll just be um It'll just be blank screen until I can figure out. Mm -hmm. um, camera situation i have to completely like close all my apps i think to get it to be less laggy so, yeah uh, a little bit chunky mm -hmm. when i stream we... i'm like i have like three things open at best as minimal as possible but it's it's a nightmare a little bit it's a nightmare a little bit yeah so we'll continue um mm -hmm. but yeah mercenary here for hy introducing the hy team members first 
Yeah, we're gonna see our little Merc here. Uh, stats are looking good, we've got a pretty decent deduction score, uh, pretty good kite time as well. I love that they show off their actual, like, um, like, final deduction scores. There's something so fun about it. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, my friend the Postman! Yeah. I think somebody said, um, you're casting Postman in his natural habitat, Veronica. I am! I love that you're- <laughs> Your favorite comments are from uh, Cha Cha, and I think it's because of the uh, the beautiful little cat icon there. It's really entrancing. <laughs> <laughs> I do love cats. Me too. I love cats. I don't have a cat. I do have a hamster, but um, small animals are my friends. I am scared of dogs, but maybe one day I won't be. We're, we'll oh figure gosh. it out. You guys I'm are not sticking the only one. Over. Yeah, it's so weird. People are so weird about it because you're like. Oh, I'm scared of dogs, and then like six people will jump you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, record, I can't I, help it. <laughs> I do think they're adorable. I love, yeah. I love to look from afar. Me too. I like to pet too, but, but you know, yeah. if it's like a stranger's, um, it's like, yeah. I don't, I don't know that man. I don't know I, that little guy. <laughs> I think because me, I had a situation where I had like a dog try to bite me before. Mm -hmm. So me too. Uh, I actually had a dog. Uh, not even like bite, but like fully chase me down a street once when I was a kid. So oh things have not been the same between me and dogs since then, but they're very cute. I love watching them in videos and seeing pictures of them, but then I see them in person. I'm like, oh, hi, hello. Maybe you should see someone who's really interested in holding you. I'm going to stand on the other side of the room now. <laughs> but as with all animals... Uh, they're most entranced by the person who's least interested in them in the room, Lichi. I'm sure you've noticed. Oh my gosh, this <laughs> is so true. They like come right over. I don't know if they do it to you as well, but um, everyone wants to pet the dog, and I'm like politely coexisting with the dog, and the dog only wants my attention. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that too. <laughs> I feel like, like that was the situation with my cat that we had too. Like mm. my sister and I loved loved our cat so much, but she only liked my dad. It's always the dads. The dads have no interest in the animals at first, and the animals fall in love with them, and then they're just like the dad's pet. Our dog, my dad, my family has a dog. Uh, he loves my father more than anyone in the house. In love with my dad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But I admire that. You know, much like I admire these stats. Um, I did this on my streams as well, where it was like, I talked over the stats a little bit, but mostly it was just like chit chatting while everyone got to read them <laughs> on mm -hmm. the screen. I was like, here are the stats. I'm gonna like tell you about prospector lore now. And everyone's like, oh, okay, Veronica, whatever you want, but. <laughs> Fun. I you know, the joys. Um, H.Y. Say... however, looking pretty good so far, Lychee. The kite yeah. times are extremely impressive. And yeah, the rescue too. That too. Mm -hmm. Kite times are all over 100. Yeah. So. Which is, like, more normal nowadays, but it's still extremely impressive. Um, average kite time nowadays seems to be, like, 60 to 100 in this meta, uh, with all of the support that they do in kiting, but um, the, it's still extremely impressive to go over, like, two-minute contain time for, like, all of your survivors. Mm -hmm. Kind of scary. If I had to go up against a team like that, I think I'd cry. Yeah, for sure. Um, but we'll see if we see another sculptor today based on this. Yeah, Almost, hopefully. Let's see Almost on plays. three eliminations per match, mm -hmm. too, for this sculptor. Really so good. Very high score. Yeah. Oh, there's a question earlier for us, Veronica, about how long mm -hmm. we've each been playing the game. Uh, I have been playing for, I think, three years now. Um, I started, uh, I had the classic IDV experience, which is that you download IDV, and the tutorial, like, the tutorial with Smiley Face, for some reason, is so scary, <laughs> and I'm, like, a big wimp, so when I played through that, I was so horrified that I uninstalled the game immediately, even though that tutorial is nothing like playing the actual game. Um... But my actual playtime has been about three years. I started, um, I made my account initially in the summertime, and then I actually started playing around uh, the, the release of the, the Judge Essence. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Lichi? How long have you been um, in IDV uh, town? I think, I think it's also been about three years for me. Oh my god, um, matching. 
Yeah, because I think I started right before Call of the Abyss 3. Oh, yeah. And now it's Call of the Abyss 6, so that would make three years mm -hmm. if my elementary school math is panning out correctly. Yeah, yours is, um, you're like a little closer to four years than I am, I think. You'll be on your, your fourth year soon. Mm hmm. Yeah. And we'll be a few months from now. <laughs> it really <laughs> does. So much, so much IDB. I'm loving this line of three mercenaries on the screen right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> like, yeah, keep it up. Everyone's they, a rescuer. They definitely have their rescuers. I mean, I will say that <laughs> it's, it's definitely helpful when you're in rank and somebody picks the mercenary right away. Like, if you're yeah. not a rescuer main, you're just a oh, sigh of relief that somebody else is playing the rescuer. Mm -hmm. um, although, so, nowadays... Yeah. Luckily, you have survivors like First Officer that are pretty right. easy to pick up, even if you're not a mm -hmm. rescuer main. Yeah. Yeah. I own Merc. I can play Merc. I'm a pretty okay Merc. Um, but uh, if I see there's no rescuer on the team and everyone's like really insistent that it's their god given right to carry a kite build on characters that usually should have tied, like in like mid tier rank, I'm like, hmm. Okay, I'm going to play First Officer now. Mm hmm. <laughs> He's fun. I've always really enjoyed First Officer. Um, his buff was great. I played him a little bit before. I kept having this experience where I would like get really into maining survivors like in my quick matches um, and like really mastering them. And then they would like immediately receive a big buff like a month afterwards. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. Um, and it happened to me, I think like three or four times, which was fascinating to say the least. Mm -hmm. First Officer was one of them. Barmaid was another one. But it looks like they do have this female dancer. And I will say this survivor's username is so hard to pronounce here. I think in Chinese, it's actually really easy. It's like Yuan. Mm -hmm. But they, for some reason, decided to choose a, a bunch of numbers here in between two cues. And I'm like, how am I supposed to say this um, when I'm <laughs> casting in English? So I think, you know, we'll just call them by their character name or QQ or something <laughs> like that. Oh, QQ. Uh, I always fine. feel bad if I'm butchering their names. Um, Me too, and then I get so like frightened and scared, and sometimes I'll say the names like three different ways because I'm like hesitant about it, but um, when I was doing C qualifiers, I know there was like one name that Eli mentioned first, and then I had a piece of paper in front of me, and in like very large letters just immediately wrote it down with the pronunciation. Oh my gosh. I did yeah. that when we took notes during rehearsal too, I was like, okay, this is this. <laughs> I was like... I, yeah, I do that all the time when I'm listening to the other regions casting. Right? Like, I'm trying to catch on the Japanese stream what they're calling their mm. players and everything like that. But then sometimes I miss it because I don't know Japanese, so I don't know when they're, like, starting to introduce yeah. the player and stuff. So, mm. but... And then you hear it, and you're like, oh, there it is. That's what mm. it is. I get it now. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Almost two-minute contain from the Merc. And, and 1.04 on, I believe that's Rescue? Yep, Rescues. Um, wow. The, anything over one on rescues is always very impressive to me. Yes, for sure. Another another mercenary Ooh. here. Also a <laughs> lot of containment time and almost a rescue per match as well. So yeah. all their mercenaries seem to be doing their mercenary jobs quite well. Yeah, they've got this little, little gaggle of mercenaries. They can trade them out for all three rounds. Um, like peas in a pod. So he looks a little bit like a pea sometimes. It's the perfect amount. Prisoner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are your thoughts on um, Prisoner, Lichi? I think it's cool. Um, I think it's <laughs> cool to see. I'd be excited to see a Prisoner in an actual match. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is also a former IVL pro player as well. I want to say it's Xrox Billy, former Xrox uh -huh. player Billy. Xrox is oh, now yeah. is now GW, I guess, kind of. Right. But mm -hmm. yeah, so exciting to see another familiar name as well. Ooh, Nyad, my friend Nyad. I do hope we get to see some Nyad today. Um, Sada, of course, has a wonderful little logo for their team, built of uh, cute little musical instruments and um, notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Oops, I, I do believe, love that. Yeah, little note symbols. Yeah, yeah, really, really well designed. I was like entranced by it the first time I saw it, and I was like, "Wow, that's so cute! That's so cute!" Um, yeah, shocked to not see a violinist in in that regard. Oh my gosh, yeah, and their full name is Serenata, so it's just really oh, fitting. that's 
cute. Yeah. That's so but sweet. Now that we're at the casters, oh. we're going to transition a little bit. I'm going to see. <laughs> It's a little bit laggy on my end, actually, as well. So time for Lichi to close as many tabs as possible while the stream gets a um, fun Koa background scene in there. <laughs> time to uh, close everything imaginable. Everyone, did you see the funny little um, feast that they had uh, in the caster screen? He's sitting in the chair up near the front. You can't see him in the usual shot, but... How sweet of him to entertain us like that. He's the director. Makes sense with the tentacles, actually. It only wants to buffer when we're going to cast the matches, and it's like a cruel irony. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing the um, the results of the very long file now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She'll load up soon, I hope. We're, we're getting there, Honor. Right. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more mm -hmm. time for now. But so we're gonna give cat. We're just gonna give the the um, viewers here the boring co-op background for a second. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've been removed from you again, but that's okay. We're like ASMR in your ears, Lichi. I remember when you did your first. Um, casting day for any yuka and everyone in the chat was just like lichi should do asmr oh such a nice voice on lichi asmr asmr from lichi <laughs> oh my gosh i do remember like actually before this live stream i was thinking of putting a poll up <laughs> on the channel being like what kind of style of casting would you like to see since this is a little bit more freeform like right would you like to see um the serious casting which i feel like my default is a little bit serious Mm -hmm. um, or like super casual or do you want the asmr style but then i was like uh oh no, everybody's they all choose the ASMR style. You, you knew what the answer would be <laughs> oh my gosh yes but uh i wanted to close down mm -hmm. all my tabs but i feel Red. like we're gonna try to open one see what happens mm-hmm Casting selection is the illusion of choice because I'm here now, which means it it's like a l obligated to be a little bit silly. I have to be a little bit silly or else I'll explode. I love that they were like, hey, can you guys casually cast? Because first of all, it's a great opportunity and it's really good to be able to get... Um, you know more people familiar with with koa and whatnot but there's also like a probably like a five to eight minute segment of my own stream that i did where i'm literally just like holding my little um uh, my my little like specter skin doll and like going off about the halloween lore for like five minutes waiting for a match <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know if they knew what they were getting into by asking me to do that <laughs> That's fun, they, they will know now. It was so fun. I, I said so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to say, Spectre is um, probably one of my favorite skins in the game. I it's so cute. put that one on when I'm playing Postman. So. Oh, you should. I like him with his little ears. I'm a, a keyboard fan myself, Postman-wise. Um, I got Spectre first from the event, and then I got Keyboard as like my first ever Memory Sphere guarantee skin. Um... And I have been in love with him ever since. I've never been more excited to get anything. I still haven't replicated that. That's a lie. Actually, I was super excited to get pumping tires when I finally pulled him after um, two years of trying. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was a nightmare, but he's home now by force. I kind of had to like, kidnap him out of the night. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, but we'll be back to the stream shortly once once Lychee does her thing. Um, we're going to try <laughs> streaming from the internet, which I don't know if it's going to be necessarily better, mm -hmm. but it's not playing a big file. So, you know, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, but unfortunately, this is going to have... I guess I can turn on the volume a little bit. Um, 
previously yeah. eaten. Just a little as a treat. You may see he's just us off. Yeah, if the if the casters in the background is like too much to hear, I can turn down completely. But for now, we'll keep a little bit on so that we can have some noise. Um, some white ones in the back. Hello, Prospector. What are you up to? Hello, Entomologist. What are you up to? Happy time of reunion. Mm -hmm. Entomologist coming out again. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen her yet today, so this is fun. No, we haven't. On Chinatown, too, the bee support, I think, will go crazy. Um, lots of good areas to place bees to kind of kite with as well. Um, when I play Entomologist, I love the little corners and narrow hallways they have on, on Chinatown in some areas. <laughs> so I'm like, yay, bee block time. Yeah, and it works for sure. every time. <laughs> and Musk does have a sculptor for H. Y. Yeah. Musk, so this could be potentially pulling out the entomologist to counter the sculptor as well. Although they didn't even seer. I mean, I guess for sculptor, seer is a little bit no more annoying than it is for Bonbon. Bon, so could yeah. potentially still turn out to be a sculptor. Um, Ooh. Forward no forward on the field today. Yeah. Interesting that they banned the forward, considering the forward has gone down a little bit in the meta, mm -hmm. as opposed to other characters. Um, they do already have the Prospector, too. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I guess it prevents another harasser in the team, at least, and they've secured the mercenary for, for a more stable rescuer. Mm -hmm. We're gonna bring our, our mercenary out today. Gonna have Acrobato to play as well. Um, pretty good team lineup, you know. You've got a, a dedicated um, like crater class. You've got uh, support from the Acrobat can support as well. But um, mercenary in, of course, to play rescue. You've got uh, the Prosper to do proper harassment, and the Entomolus to do more like casual support, but still can be extremely game changing if you time it completely right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Will Musk play today? Oh, I've just realized how funny it's going to be to say Musk over and over for the hunter. <laughs> I'm like, what is Musk up to? Where is Musk going on the Chinatown map? <laughs> True. I guess we'll find out who the we hunter will. is. Will they still play sculptor despite the team comp, mm -hmm. or will they bring out somebody oh! else? Breaking wheel. Okay. Breaking wheel. We haven't seen a wheel in quite a bit since the flywheel went up in the Metal Ichi. So this looks very interesting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely in wheel form, they can't get stunned, so it might be a little bit easier to deal with the Prospector and mm -hmm. the um, Entomologist Bees. But we'll see if the survivors thought to bring flywheel or not because that's another thing since they have to lock in their trait beforehand did they potentially anticipate this breaking wheel or did they bring broken windows in anticipation of a different hunter we'll see mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna go into our spawn locations here we're gonna see um the entomologist and the prospector in the corners we're gonna see mercenary in the middle and acrobat right down below um i do wonder where we will see the breaking wheel spawn but it is a wheel after all Ichi. you know he can go anywhere from where he starts and quickly too mm -hmm. for sure yeah and breaking wheel spawning right between entomologist and the prospector on the far side there both viable targets for breaking wheel to chase mm -hmm. yeah definitely a lot of options um could go for the acrobat right away right across the field but hopefully they're going to rotate well enough but even so it is a wheel he moves so fast it's very hard to rotate away from a wheel because he can catch up in mere seconds if he has any idea of where anyone might have gone. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think, you know, anyone's really a viable first chase at this point. I do think maybe um, could go, yeah, definitely I'd say maybe Entomologist or uh, Prospector first. There's not a lot that they can do against the wheel form at all. Um, oh my goodness. Hi, Sophia. She's running along the cart. <laughs> cute. So cute. Such a beautiful skin. I know. I wish I had her so bad. She lives rent free in my mind. I think of her often.
All right, we're starting off. Here we go. Musk is chasing. We were going to see uh, QQ on the entomologist be that first chase, actually, uh, with a little transition over in that wheel form. Um, going to go right out of it here in order to chase on foot for a little bit. Might go right back into wheel after a little bit, Leechy, you know. Going to swing there, going to miss a little bit, but going to loop around this area. And yeah, actually going right back into the wheel form. Uh, we're seeing a no detention build, so we are seeing, I believe, that's Insolence and Trump card to start us off. Mm -hmm. Pretty confident of the... Uh, breaking wheel to not bring detention here. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen a no detention wheel. So it is round one though, anything could happen. Ooh. And if if Musk does want to give it all they've got, then this is a pretty good opportunity to, to try out this build, I would say. Yeah. Um, at this point, one spike on the entomologist, but does get the trap on. So we do see the entomologist there does take a chip and a hit and back on the bees. Back on the bees and back in the wheel. We are doing a one-two. You know, we're matching everything up. Uh, gonna get another spike by going through at that window at the right angle and continue to chase the entomologist around her little loop here. Going out of wheel form, um, I believe that blink is online, so going to actually be able to get a little snap there and get the down. Uh, placing the entomologist now on the chair with still five ciphers remaining. Pretty good progress on two of them, but one is lagging behind a little bit at 48%, Lichi, uh, and I believe that they might send in for rescue right away on Watson with that mercenary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty quick down so far for Breaking Wheel, relatively, um, and he's actually going to change forms here just to force the mercenary to rescue sooner instead of waiting, waiting in the wheel form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to head right in. We are continuing on that chase. A strong start from Musk, and of course, a great reminder as to why Wheel has always been quite strong since release. Uh, you know, that flywheel causes us a little bit of trouble, but other than that, it Wheel goes, wheel goes crazy. Uh, putting the long spikes out to continue on QQ's chase here. Um, also putting pressure um, on the prospector in the area as well. You know, you don't want to deal with that prospector coming in to harass while you are trying to get it down. Going out of wheel form here, going to be able to um, try and get a hit on the entomologist, but a beautiful pilot storm from the prospector is going to cut off that chase for a minute. Now with uh, two more magnets to utilize, but going into wheel form to ignore those pesky little things. Mm -hmm. And they are going upstairs, but entomologist pretty much has the full stack of spikes on her already. Mm -hmm. So, should be able to be down by the, by the breaking wheel soon. Um, ciphers, three ciphers done. Not Probably not enough for the survivor side at this point. B is here, <laughs> nicely blocking the hunter, but it's only a matter of time until breaking wheel is within range to down her. Yeah going to get that uh gonna have the prospector come in the area and going to be able to get that drop before the balloon rescue is able to happen so um ooh, okay i believe that was actually yeah another beautiful well-timed drop on the entomologist and no magnets left for the prospector to use to put more pressure on the wheel here so musk is doing a wonderful job so far of pushing things together agrobat has been doing a lot of ciphers um and going to change target over here to this prospector we are actually going to see that uh we got a few survivors in the area so i believe they're sending the mercenary over for another rescue but if cut off in time Lichi, uh, we could be seeing the entomologist, yeah, sent back to the manor soon, uh, unless the prospector comes in and manages to get this off. Yeah, the prospector does have the two spikes on him already, and the breaking wheel also has blink to boot. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, gonna be downing the prospector. Nobody unfortunately was able to rescue entomologist. Mercenary's on the ground, and there's still two ciphers that have to be popped, so really difficult situation for the survivors here. And I do know the stream is uh, being laggy again. I think this is actually worse than when we were playing the recorded uh, video. Oh, so I think we're going to have to switch back after after this round, but mm -hmm. after this match. But for now, uh, <laughs> this is what we're working with. So but we're going to see Watson come in, continue to uh, crawl on the ground here. The wheel is just kind of menacingly standing over him, uh, knowing that the mercenary still has a self-heal, which uh, due to this distraction of kind of just watching the mercenary really closely, we're going to see a rescue come off, and uh, target's going to be changed to the acrobat for a brief second, maybe realizing, huh, it's not the prospector. Um, and continuing on chase, we do see that the mercenary has actually self-healed without the wheel standing right over his body while he tries to do it. Um... So going to be down very soon once more. Yep, uh, going to do a snap and then a hit to get the mercenary right away without any delayed damage. Safers are looking pretty okay, and a swap to peepers as well, Lichi, to watch over this mercenary as he tries to crawl away from them. Mm -hmm. Going to go back to the prospector now. Um, not really too much he can do against this 
this wheel here also does not have flywheel as well. Acrobat, I think, I didn't see what the, what the entomologist had actually, but only Acrobat with flywheel left. So Otis managed to get this done onto the breaking wheel, drawing out a little bit more time, but he can use the snap to down. So. Yeah, beautiful palette stem, really good stun uh, with the magnet to get it as well, but unfortunately we're going to see the prospector uh, go down anyway with that snap. So really, really smooth on Musk with that wheel, definitely very sure of what he's doing. Acrobat has one spake, will be forced to come in for the rescue, but we are going to see a uh, jump back into wheel form to get these survivors down afterwards. So continuing chase on this prospector here, um, trying to break that palette for a second before choosing to go after the Acrobat after all. Um, so what are we going to see? What are we going to see? Uh, three strikes on the Acrobat and you're out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and the breaking wheel is just going to continue to peeper. Um, and then go after the Prospector. Mercenary is already on the ground with no, no more self-heal, so he can't get up at this point. Acrobat's still self-heal, but I don't know if he'll be able to self-heal in time. Uh, yeah. We do see him self-healing in the corner there, but I think he's just going to get picked up at this distance. Mm -hmm. Wow, we might be seeing a uh, four elimination from, well, probably not might, uh, we will be seeing a four elimination from Musk here on the survivor side for HY, which is a beautiful start off. One cypher remaining, Luigi. Um, nowadays, you don't see a lot of games that end before the final cypher pop comes in. Yeah, for sure. So Musk there coming out really strong with that breaking wheel and putting a lot of pressure on uh, mm -hmm. Serenata. But I think it was actually really good that he was able to get this four kill before before the end game because he didn't have detention after all. So he was kind of counting on this kind of situation. Yeah, absolutely. Really anyway. And yeah. it did, it did work out. It was wonderful. <laughs> very smooth plays. Um, really, really skilled with that wheel. Clearly was very comfortable with him when he was very high in the meta uh, to be able to take him out just like this, you know, even with Changes being made to the Persona webs that makes make things a little bit harder for Wheel now, but they definitely were not anticipating that considering the builds that they were carrying. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have us make a little appearance. Monica. So we'll be back on the screen for a little bit so you can see us as I switch our video back to back to plan A. Yeah, we're going back to the plan A. We're going to be in plan B soon, which is the second match, <laughs> I think. Yeah. But, you know, just waiting in time. I'm probably going to go over the stats first, wait up a little bit. Um, I am entranced by the little Alexander pet in the corner. I mentioned it earlier, but he is so shaped. He looks so wonderful. I want to hold him and see if he's heavy. <laughs> I yeah. see him right now and... Um, He's entrancing me, but I hope everyone else thinks of him fondly as well. Yes. Once we can see him, which will mm -hmm. take a second here. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as everyone can, it'll be great. We'll all enjoy him together. And um, we'll enjoy, of course, our caster Sonas. And we'll continue on with uh, HY versus Sata to start us off. Mm -hmm. Ooh. In there. <laughs> okay, no spoilers. <laughs> No spoilers at all. My my lips are sealed. Um, I've locked them up. I will not tell you guys anything that's going on on the screen right now. It's a secret. But uh, between you and I, so on one side there are survivors, and on the other side there are hunters. I'm sorry to reveal that. Um, they just had. I couldn't keep that spoiler in. Lichi, I, my bad. I'll try not to do it again. Yeah, I think we're going to have to. Um... Watch this with a little bit of a lag, which is unfortunate. <laughs> From Veronica and I's end, we are also seeing a lag at this point. So it's not just the viewers, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but... We're all in this together. Um, you know, if we lag, you lag. If you lag, we lag. However you want to think about it. <laughs> so... Let's see what's going on here. Mm-hmm. I love their little sponsors. They had like a giveaway during the Japan qualifiers and I was like entranced by it because I was like, we don't get those. I want a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna start a petition for any you giveaways, but they're not like anything great. It's like a like a cardboard bag. Um, and they like write your favorite character's name on it. 
<laughs> that's my idea. That's my personal idea for an NAU giveaway. Um, I would enter, but maybe there's something inside as well. We'll see. I actually, I speaking of merchandise and Koa, um, I'm really hoping that we get uh, an actual like Koa box this year. Um, we didn't get one formally for Koa 5, but we did for Koa 4, and it had the uh, Truth and Inference skin in it, too, so that was, like, a, a big steal. Um, we missed out on that one. I do have a little bit with some, but, uh, coming in. But I was very excited for the Koa 5 box, and then we didn't get one, and I was, like, devastated beyond words, because I was like, what? No! I, I want, I want, I want a little postman stand! And then there was no little postman stand. Um... I don't think I'll ever recover from that. So hopefully this time around, Co6 gets a, a box. I would buy the box in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be so cool, especially with the different themes that they come up with. Every yeah. Year for mm -hmm. So for sure. The merch always looks so cute. I'd love the little standees for the the Co6 skin. Mm -hmm. Life advice: uh, buy a box, split it with your friends, take your favorites, give them theirs. Um spend less than $300 by splitting it. Congrats! That's my wisdom of the day. <laughs> there's a, if there's a Koa box, um, I'm playing IDV Influencer by marketing their products, and uh, if they do do a Koa box, yeah, I think we should all get a Koa box all together. Uh, everyone in the stream, sh we should just split one big Koa box, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Lychee will give you the entomologist, um, the entomologist charm. <laughs> I wouldn't mind an entomologist charm. That'd be cute. I, I know that. it would be so cute. I need it. I need her to exist in her little koa skin. Oh, a standee would be fun too. Mm -hmm. I would. Um, I think I would. I don't even have a word for this, but I would love to have a little piece of space mining merchandise. I like his little headphones. They entrance me. <laughs> Ooh, I've done something silly with my phone on the screen. That's okay. Okay, we're back to screen, I believe, right? Yes, we are seeing the casters. Yay! The Chinese casters <laughs> on the screen at the moment, and I'm scared to fast forward, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll just chit chat through it, it's okay. No worries. We'll figure her out. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see how how this goes once we get to the actual game. Mm -hmm. It will still be as laggy. Yeah. Yeah, but I think this is marginally better than the previous situation, but we'll find out. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but okay, so HY versus Sata, this is the second half of round one, I believe, and we have a priestess ban right off the bat. No wonder mm -hmm. it's trying to town, so I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. You know, you want to get that, that priestess out of the way. You don't want to see her on Chinatown. Plenty of good places for her to put portals down uh, that will make your life awful and make the survivors' lives significantly better. So very good to take a priestess out of the way. Um, instead, we're going to see an anti Korean coming out. We might be seeing a barmaid as well. We might be seeing a female dancer. Um, they might lock in a rescuer early, but probably not. Um definitely probably a support character for this uh second selection maybe entomologist again maybe prospector again um lots on the field for them to to pick from you know only that that priestess out of the way could even see a seer maybe maybe pipe dream mm -hmm. yeah definitely still possible at this point we do see antiquarian really hide in as class. that priority ban or pick yeah. here <laughs> not quite banned. we've just seen him ban so much that at this point it's, mm -hmm. it's oh second. patient None patient. of my guesses, but Patient will be seeing, which is great. Patient, of course, very strong. Lots of good hook spots here on Chinatown to use to kite. Um, a lot of survivability, as you mentioned. Um, not too, too hard on the debuff, so a good survivor to have around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, they haven't chosen a rescuer yet, although that usually comes a little bit later. So we'll see if the hunter here for Sata decides to... Oh, banning a stunner character, the prospector. So, yeah, definitely really? would prioritize those over the rescuer first. Still leaving open something like a female dancer if Hai wants to try to take that. Yeah. Um, see. Seen, hopefully seeing the dancer. Um, For me, I want to see the dancer. <laughs> mm -hmm. This I is a VOD. They if they're have. listening in retrospect, maybe dancer. Entomologist, prospector, no. 
put the answer yeah. available. Perhaps. Ooh. Hello, Michael. So we're going to the circus, but we're not taking the dancer out. We're taking out the acrobat instead. Um, lots of places to utilize the bombs. You know, you can take them up and down the stairs and give the hunter a hard time. Uh, you can vault off some of those, uh, bomb off some of those uh, little second story bridges on the, the openings. Um, a lot of good places for the acrobat here as well. Mm hmm. And that seer finally banned at the wow. end. Interesting. Very interesting to go last on the seer ban. But, you know, I don't buy them. Don't want to deal with the seer. I wouldn't either. Um, instead, we're going to see the mercenary come out. So they have their little dedicated rescue now. Mercenary, of course, with his delayed damage and his elbow pads. Um, unfortunately, mercenary hates healing and he hates decoding. And they make him want to cry and throw up. So that's going to be a little bit hard. Uh, but other than that, a really solid rescue, a good pick. And we're going to get into the hunter soon. I'm so excited to see who it may be against this little team cop here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It seems like Xiaoyu here is not really afraid of the rescuers. So mm -hmm. I'm curious what hunter. Oh! <gasps> Ooh! Nyad. Okay! Our first Nyad of the Nyad. day as well. That's fun. Yay! Um, and this makes sense why they didn't choose Dancer necessarily if they knew that Xiaoyu has that Nyad. She is mm -hmm. one of the few hunters i would say that does have kind of a counter mechanism to dancer um mm -hmm. it is a little bit harder for a dancer to operate when naya yep. can basically increase the humidity since mm -hmm. dancer can't loop as much in that case yeah naya does struggle a little bit in the hotel area i know this from personal experience which isn't worse um, but other than that, she can do a lot of damage on this map. There are a lot of good open areas for her to work on. Um, just buildings with big, uh, buildings can be a little bit of a hassle for her because she has to try and, you know, um, build her water circles around them. And when you have a big building in the way that covers, like, 80% of the terrain and you have to go all the way around that, um, you're gonna have less of a water circle for survivors to be affected by in that instance. But, you know, uh, Professional Nyad's gonna really be able to take up the field. No wonder there was no Dancer ban. Uh, the bans make a lot of good sense for Nyad. Don't want to deal with that Seer as well, but um, I think against this team comp, she should do pretty okay. Then the dashing's gonna be a problem. And she does have one of the uh, rarer, rarer things that we see, which is um, a soft counter to the Antiquarian, which is simply that she's not a single hit hunter, so... Um, she's still able to throw her harpoon and continue chase with her humidity on an Antiquarian, even if she can't hit with the harpoon just flat out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of a soft counter, although Antiquarian, Ooh. I feel like, does uh, generally... Well, we'll see in this case. I don't want to speak for every situation, <laughs> but I have seen some Antiquarians do pretty well against Nyad as well. So. Yeah, it's... um. There are a lot of good instances that she can take. Like, yeah, you can throw the harpoon, but um, the sad part is uh, a good Nyad strategy is to pull that harpoon and then try to get a hit right after you pull it back and get the water damage, or almost do. Um, so she could just wait for the Nyad to draw the harpoon back, then it's on cooldown, and then um, hit with the flute, and that will be a little bit of a doozy. Mm -hmm. They've got their perks, I guess, on, on both sides. <laughs> Yeah, but we are seeing a fair amount of Antiquarian today, so that's exciting. I feel like we didn't get to see her much for NAU qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really didn't. I think we saw one or or maybe two. Um, I think it was one. I think we saw one Nyad. Maybe two. I don't remember. We definitely saw Nyad, though, but not too much. Um, but we will be seeing Nyad now. So Xiaoyu is going to start on chase here, um, potentially going for higher first. We have seen a vault here, which means that there will be a little bit of a ping as to what's going on. Um, looping around this area here, of course, the building is going to be a little bit of trouble, but um, just trying to gather as much area in that uh, water circle as possible. We're also going to see trump card and detention Lichi, um, and starting chase on this acrobat with a beautiful starting bomb. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it looks like uh, survivors, we have the patient and the antiquarian who have the flywheels here. So Acrobat actually is one of the survivors who brought Knee Jerk. I keep wanting to say broken <laughs> windows, but now it's Knee Jerk. Um, <laughs> but so far utilizing the palette, Naya does not have blink yet. She can't do the drop blink hit trick over here, so has no choice but to break the palette and follow. And we're going to see them loop around this area. 
Yeah. Jason Cryer around, of course, who's looping on the hotel. Very, very strong. Um, you do have those uh, little windows to utilize. Their only drawback being that they will fall apart if you vault them too many times. Cypress are making pretty good progress. Higher is continuing on here with the kite. One little red bomb there. Uh, Shayu does conveniently avoid it. You know, that would be uh, a little bit of a, a struggle to no, no longer be able to throw your harpoon and do that humidity. Um, but continuing on here on the chase, we are loading up another bomb, I believe, possibly soon. Um, currently just kiting and transitioning into another area, maybe, Luchi. Mm -hmm. Ooh, first hit. Yeah, getting that first hit on the Acrobat so far. Let's see if she can utilize either the water damage or the blink mm -hmm. to take down the Acrobat quite soon. Cyphers, though, three Cyphers looking pretty good so far at this point. But she is closing in Acrobat, trying to do a bomb to get out of range, <gasps> but does go down to the basic hit of the Nyad. And yeah. It First down with two Cyphers remaining. All three have just been popped. One more has just been started. Um, contemplating chair here, going to choose to go back and not transition any further away, just going to chair in this area. Um, and potentially moving on to a different target. Um, trying to patrolling around the area, making sure that a rescue doesn't go off smoothly. We are seeing the mercenary in this area, building tinnitus and preparing for a rescue. A beautiful elbow pad to get to the chair. We're going to see a dash. We are going to see the uh, another dash. And the harpoon will likely be uh, drawn back soon in order to continue chase on this acrobat. Ooh, last effort has been bought, but the acrobat does have another red bomb to work with, which will be good for a rebound kite later. Mm -hmm. And we do see the AI here is predicting either a... Uh, most high chance of a three escape or a tie. So I will say, I mean, based on this cipher progress, they do definitely have a chance for that. Um, but the knight mm -hmm. is actually forcefully chairing the acrobat near the patient's cipher here in order to camp the cipher out. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see, of course, um, I believe, yeah, two survivors in the area, one on a cipher, um, trying to put pressure on that last cipher there. You don't want it to be completed, but the mercenary, of course, going to cause a little bit more trouble for you coming in for the rescue here. So it's hard to do a lot of stuff at once. She's only got two hands and one harpoon, um, so she can't really, you know, do everything around the field like an octopus. She's a normal fish lady and not a special octopus fish lady. But they're going to put two uh, survivors on the cyber here. We have things locked up mm -hmm. by they, everything, uh, trying to get that down with the humidity on the mercenary so the pop does not happen in time, but it does. We are going to pop the cipher, and I believe that the patient has gone down right away from that, Lychee. Mm -hmm. Wow! So yeah, so Patient now is on the chair, not quite um, dead on chair. He is on the chair for the first time. So Nyad is going to try to go for the next target, and hopefully if she can find Hire, um, Hire has been on the chair before. She does have traits swapped to teleport already, so no blink to work with in this case, and the survivors have already made the rescue onto the Patient here. So looking pretty good from the survivor side at the moment. Mm hmm Yeah, not looking too great for Xiaoyu at the moment. Uh, going to have to continue on this chase with the Acrobat, who was definitely causing a lot of trouble earlier for the Nyad with that uh, beautiful kite that lasted practically the whole game. Um, and the exit gate has been opened. One more gate is being opened. We have uh, seen the down on higher here. Going to have to get to a chair as fast as possible in order to try and change this from um, the one escape into potentially anything other than that. Teleport is online. The gate is not quite open, Lichi. We might see. We are going to see the teleport. It is just a matter of getting a survivor down before they are out. And it does happen. We see a down on the mercenary with the patient still here. Get a hit to make sure that there is no pressure of a potential rescue coming up. And it will be a draw. Wow. Yeah, really close at the end game there with that mercenary going down at the very last minute. Um, trying to squeeze out the gate, but just just a second too late because I think they had an elbow pad as well. So if it were open a second sooner, perhaps they could have just dashed out. But mm -hmm. a second Absolutely. makes all the difference. It really does. Managed to get that hit right as the gate was opened, even kind of like through the wall there. Um as the mercenary was trying to get inside the patient, of course, I believe hooked in order to uh, get there without any trouble with the teleport in mind, but still able to pull that draw for their side. So a nice play from the Nyad at the end game there to bring things back together from the, uh, the beginning, which was maybe not so great, but was very good for the uh, survivor side. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. And I love how the lag started as soon as we entered the match. I know, it keeps of... doing that. Uh, I was like, this is going so well. Oh, wait. Wait a minute, this is actually not going very well at all. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think it, it was it was better than the time we tried to play it. Like, yeah. On the internet, so. 
little bit smoother, a little bit more fun. So a um, little bit laggy, but as I see it on the sort of slight latency stream that I have pulled up, it, it looks good so far. So um, could be <laughs> could be a lot worse. <laughs> could be the uh, sort of mosaic tile one that we see while casting sometimes where it will like lag a little bit and then <laughs> yeah. things become uh, a little interesting. And then your, you know, casting skill is actually about... Um, being able to discern what's going on in a in a pixelated area. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so hard because then you're like, did did someone go down? I can't actually see. Yeah. Um, so that's always fun. But mm -hmm. they did provide us. Nettie did provide us with a very high quality video here. It it's is. just a little bit unfortunate that it's, it's lagging so probably high because quality. it is yeah. <laughs> it is so large and, and high quality here. Hard to keep up with it, but very nice of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, if you ever hear me on a, a, a Koa stream or like a qualifier and I'm like, I think Flywheel was just used or like, oh, oh, I think we're, I think we're seeing it down. It's because I'm not sure. <laughs> and I'm like looking at the pixels in front of me and I'm like, yeah, that's happening. I think that's what's going on right now. But other than that, what is going on for sure is we're looking at our stats. So 130 seconds from the Acrobat, 0% decoding, did not have to touch a single cipher. Um, the Antiquarian and the patient had that handled in this match with the Mercenary doing a cipher of his own um, and managing to pull off three whole rescues, Leechy. Unfortunately, not being able to make it out of the gate, but uh, pulling off the draw for their side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as we can see, Hai is in the lead right now. Uh, total score seven to two. So putting themselves in a pretty good position going into game two, whereas Sata is going to try to have to take mm -hmm. back an advantage in game two. Yeah, we've been seeing some very strong starting matches in these lineups so far, Lichi. I do wonder what's in store for you for the second half of the day. Um, but for now, you know, we've been seeing these teams come out. They're they're getting their five O's in their first rounds of very impressive plays on uh, on Chinatown, and it's like rinse, wash, repeat. Um, very interesting. Uh, very very fun to watch as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, so. going to do a little transition <laughs> so that the stream can see us for like a little bit. I have to turn on my camera every time, which is always an ordeal. <laughs> but that's okay. Figuring it out. Taking our time to show us uh, to you guys and tell you things mm -hmm. about things and hit game identity 5. Hmm. All right. Hi, everyone. We're back Hi. briefly on, this? on the stream uh, with our faces. Hopefully you're enjoying the matches so far. Hopefully you're enjoying our, our company so far. Um, hope everyone is well. Thank you all for the questions and the engagement. Very nice to see you. Very nice to be here. Um, I am a funny little guest. We to you, of course, setting up our, our next few rounds, but um, I'll keep you entertained for now. Um, what is... Uh, How's everybody's night going? What are you guys' favorite survivors to play? Um, what's going on? Looks good. Looks good. What's going on? She's setting up the stream and me doing my best to not share any of the spoilers that I'm seeing at the moment. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I am loving the little audience feature again. Um, it's so cute. I think that we should get that because I think it's fun. I think we've yeah. earned it. I feel like they had something like that for IVC before where they had like mm -hmm. everybody in the live stream. They as, did. Like, little, they had them as um, prisoners. It was I actually talked about this with, I think it was Eli briefly because I was like, yeah, they had that up and it was fun, but it was like, mostly um mostly prisoner <laughs> like it would just be like two different uh colors of prisoner like c tier wise um and like half the audience was just like racing mechanic without a hat um and it was quite funny but it was still very cute there, there was on the first officer too i think in that silly little little audience feature but i enjoyed it it was fun mm -hmm. there 
trying to discern whether or not there are repeat survivors, and I don't think there are, which makes it, like, more entertaining. Ooh, Prospector really going in on the cheering there. <laughs> I'm gonna start casting the audience like it's an actual coma match, and I'm like, oh, this is the sacrifice they've sent out. Will they survive Space Leechy? What are your thoughts on this in the current meta? And then it's whatever goes from there. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, don't really get that. I think it's only one of each. Wow. There's so many survivors in the game to be able to do that. Well, the chat, or I, I guess, oh, we only saw that for a split second, actually, but <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully you got to see what the little little people looked like there. The little hopefully. characters, that was cute. My thoughts and prayers are with you guys to get to see the little audience members. Um, they're so fun, but... For now, we are back with our uh, funny little caster sonos, I believe. So this is um, this is what we currently look like at the moment. You can discern which one of us is which. <laughs> um, I might actually be the mechanic plush here on this on this screen. <laughs> We're seeing a swap. Uh, Watson's being swapped out for Bing Bing, um, and we are gonna hop right into the matches soon. But I'm very excited to continue on with you. Mm -hmm. Map ban and pick. I think we're on Leo's memory next. Um, I always say it. I think Leo's is a nightmare. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would agree. I am not I personally a fan, forget. but it seems like Sata is. So we'll be curious what kind of strategies <laughs> yeah. they bring out because it's really not uh -huh. a common map mm -hmm. in China uh, among the Chinese teams. Yeah, especially because um, in general, I think Leo's is kind of a nightmare. Uh, for both sides of your team because you can you know set yourself up for your survivors to kite in factory the whole time and that's going to be really strong and work out for them but if that happens to your hunter and they're being kited in factory the whole time that's going to be rough um and vice versa while the factory is a really strong area to kite on uh, leo's memory and there are a few other good areas there are a lot of transitionary spots to try to get to those areas and that can result in a quick down as well if you don't have the right items on your survivor at the moment Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's an interesting pick, because they're certainly really comfortable on this map to be able to do this, so it's like, I wonder. I wonder what's going on. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have some of their secrets. Secret plays, secret strategies that we'll be able to see today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but always great to be able to learn more while watching. I feel like the non-pro teams sometimes have different strategies in the pro teams so even if we're used to seeing the pro teams play sometimes we can still learn things from these mm -hmm. non-pro teams as well yeah you get to see their strategies in contrast with one another you get to see what they're capable of and comfortable with and who they tend to play and how they work into the meta um i think that's always extremely fun um it adds a, a little bit of spice to the day you get to see new things i think during c day one we had a lot of like fun off meta picks um, and that was extremely fun to cast over and also just watch in the first place. Um, I do think that makes, you know, it's fun to watch the meta go over and over again and watch these wins get pulled and everyone do their best. But I do love seeing a good, like, off-meta, totally unexpected pick to be like, wow, what are you going to do here? What are you doing here? Who let you out? <laughs> oh, always very fun. Uh, we see now Musk's sculptor has been banned right off the bat by the Sato mm -hmm. survivors. And they're also coming in with a mercenary and a female dancer. I'm pretty excited Yay! to see Dancer this time because I feel like I've been waiting to see her and finally she's here. Yeah, um, I remember when uh, qualifiers started for NAU and C because they were some of the first ones that were done. Um, China, of course, being done later on for maybe a little bit more time for everyone to focus on the big, big region. But um, Dancer was banned so quick because she was, uh, right into the meta before the tournament had started, but if you don't keep up with tournament meta in general, you're gonna be shocked at the fact that they're out of nowhere, like, banning Dancer, who you haven't even seen come out yet, uh, to, like, understand why she's so strong, so. I also love what she's picked, because then I can be like, look, see? I told you, I promised. I told you that Dancer is good. Embalmer being banned as well, um, good to ban Embalmer on a map like this, but another thing too, Luigi, that's quite funny is I feel like the other regions know something about Embalmer that we don't. We never select him, but they mm. do, quite often. Yeah, for sure. And he definitely does have the ability to turn the game around, 
So mm-hmm. must just going ahead and eliminating that factor there. But for yeah. for Sato's side, this is interesting because they have a mercenary and a forward and a mechanic, which looks very much like old meta to me almost. Um, yeah, like the past, the former meta characters. Of course, they still are playable in today's meta. Mm-hmm. Mechanic did get an adjustment as well, so yeah. she doesn't have as slow of a vaulting and interaction speed mm-hmm. as she did before. Uh, and it actually does make quite a lot of difference, especially when I see her cutting out like a Dream Witch Patroller or something like that. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, but uh, in this case, still a little bit different than what we've been seeing so far, which is that single rescuer mm-hmm. team comp. If you replace that dancer with a gravekeeper, we are right back in Koa 4. <laughs> oh my gosh. So if the true. hunter is a spellcher, then we are right back in Koa 4. Oh, instead we'll be seeing Musk on the clerk to start us off on Leo's memory here. So, um, very good, I would say, on Leo's, which is not a great map to be on on either side. But the thing with clerk is that uh, um, the probably one of your worst experiences here is looping around the stairs in the factory area um and clerk of course is able to block off particular windows and pallets and things which will be really useful um if that happens to come up at all each i think Mm -hmm. yeah for sure and i think mechanic will have a pretty difficult time against the clerk here Mm -hmm. and even with female dancer support well we'll see where they spawn but i think female dancer of course in the factory would be pretty strong to set up some support for the mechanic to eventually transition over but actually they have the mechanic spawning in the two-story factory there in the safest spot whereas dancer is on the other side of the map at the shack so a little bit unpredicted from my perspective but mm-hmm. still quite interesting and the clerk has actually spawned closest to the mechanic yeah we are actually going to see possibly you know mechanic first chase um should be able to deal with her properly if things go uh you know, work out. And the sooner you find that mechanic, the sooner you find that bot. So if the mechanic does not have proper time in order to hide and disguise that little robot, things are not going to be as good for her. You know, you take mechanic around because she's a really fast decoder, but more importantly, she has a whole fifth survivor that she can take out who is extremely quick at decoding as well, who she can use while on the chair um, or while decoding herself. Or even if you're extremely good in a very horrifying way, uh, you can use it while you're kiting with uh, brief little intervals of double checking to get those uh, cipher, you know, taps done. But um, we're going to see everyone load in on the little minecart here we're going to run through. Forward, of course, being the only person who has uh, his normal clothes on, <laughs> which is quite funny to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Love seeing the special costumes here. Mm-hmm. Oh, hi, Bones. I see Bones oh, in the goodness. chat. Hi, Bones. Bones is back from work. Hi, Bones. <laughs> Bones was very touched by you being like, oh my god, Bones is gone while we, while we were on day one of my streams. Leo's memory, Leo's memory, loading up. Let's uh, let's get into it. I love this little render. It's so cute. That is scary though, Lichi. That is scary. I'm gonna have a nightmare about that. Oh I don't know gosh. why that. It's like so realistic and like grimy. I never want to see that again. Um, <laughs> we're loading in here. Uh, Musk is going to start chase on this mechanic. I'm going to begin immediately with that loop around the stairs and that little uh, window area there. And we're gonna see forward is actually wearing special clothes. Just didn't load in with the model render so far, but. Um, starting right off, of course, Sada's mechanic is going to be first chase. We are seeing, um, trump card and detention on the clerk's build, and we are going to see our first vault and continue on with this little loop. Has not deployed the bot yet, as far as I'm aware, either, so, um, potentially not the best move usually, but could potentially use that for a body block if necessary, but you gotta be really careful about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and clerk is closing in quite quickly here. Does get that hit onto the mechanic. Uh, mechanic has flywheel. Actually, all the survivors who, except the mercenary, have flywheel this time. So perhaps anticipating another breaking wheel. Oh, the the bot was trying to use the body block the doorway, but it did not actually work. So unable to get the flywheel Ooh. out as well. Yeah, looks like she's going to be going on to the chair. Uh, forward is in the area though. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna see the forward take a hit instead of getting that stun rescue off with the balloons, uh, or with the ball, sorry. Um, and the mechanic spot is just kind of waiting outside, so the clerk can come up and smack that down at any second. Of course, she's going to try and control it and get it out of the area, but the clerk is now aware that it's in the factory. It cannot get too far, and it cannot get any decoding done in this situation. Um, the mercenary will have to come to rescue, considering the forward is now, um, 
a little bit damaged, not able to pull that rescue off without going down, uh, but the Mercenary will be forced to come in, which is um, very interesting. They've got pretty okay progress on their ciphers so far, but um, they've been kind of swapping back and forth with them, which is um, not the best scenario, but managed to get the rescue off, but not managing to get a body lock at all, Lichi, so uh, the mechanic is going to go down right after the last effort um, finishes out. Mm -hmm. Right. And... Yeah, we are going to see Mechanic go down. A little bit unfortunate for the forward there, but we did see the Mechanic bot was able to heal up the forward. So luckily the bot was able to be put into use despite not being able to get that body block off. It is a little bit hard actually for Mechanic to control her. Oh, forward Woo! coming in here for a stun, but the clerk actually managed to drop the Mechanic. Um, they are kind of far away from the chair though, and the forward still at full health. It has a little bit of football. Ooh, mm -hmm. going in for another Ooh. stun. So they do manage to buy some time here. Let's see what the game plan is. Mm. Yeah. Trying I wonder to catch how to what is here. happening here. Um, but... The unfortunate thing I think mostly is that now that the mechanic has been picked up and dropped so many times, she's likely going to be able to struggle free before being placed on chair. Uh, but the clerk should be able to recover quickly. She doesn't have a lot to work with in a kite. She will be forced to use that flywheel if she wants any chance of survival on this rebound, um, as the bot has already been deployed. Um, but the dancer support is in this area, which might help a little bit, or maybe not. Maybe it won't help a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, Me Mechanic did have that flywheel, but was unable to use it, like you mentioned. So does end up getting downed there when that within that Yay. dancer circle. Uh, the cipher progress, I mean, it's going, but it's pretty spread out at this point. And mechanic on her second chair. So we'll see what they can do with, with this going on. Um, yeah, of course. Um, I think we might see another rescue come in. Um, they might just be building to Titanitis. Yeah, we're probably going to see the mercenary come in for rescue here. Going to have to be quick. Uh, ex mechanic is getting closer to expiring on the chair here. Um, oh, coming in at the chair, coming in, coming in, um, oh, managing to get that off, um, gonna use the flywheel now in order to try and not take that hit right away, mercenary desperately trying to get a body block off, uh, wanna keep this mechanic alive as long as possible, and Leechy, they've been kind of playing musical chairs with the ciphers, which, they've got good progress on a lot of them, but it's a little bit concerning, especially against a clerk, you kind of want to get those done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. We see that Dancer has been primarily the one decoding this whole time, since Forward did have to come out to support a little bit more. Uh, Mercenary there was able to take a body block for the mechanic, who is actually next going to go to the Dancer, who will presumably mm -hmm. now support the mechanic with those music boxes still available. Um, she's going to be the one dropping the pallets this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely a lot of help to the mechanic with that uh, slow little throw there, but we're going to see a beautiful recording from the clerk here. Musk is able to lift that pallet up, no problem, which um, is a great counter to the dancer considering the slow boxes kind of exist to make sure that you break those pallets slowly and you get in and out of there slowly. But um, going ahead of the dancer in order to try and get that mechanic, but you can managing to pull up a beautiful body block there, Lichi, by sort of going around um, at first and uh, making it happen, despite the circumstances not playing in their favor for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so doing a pretty good job so far. Um, oh, does get that down onto the female dancer finally. So mechanic now on her own a little bit here. Not too much to work with at the moment, I would say. Uh, the others did manage to pop their cipher, so so this leaves about two ciphers remaining. Against a clerk, though, it's very likely the mechanic will go back on the chair before those are done. But we'll see how long this can last. Mm -hmm. Is she going to make to the pallet? No. So she is going to go down, Ooh. and Mechanic is dead on chair, so Clerk is going to get at least one elimination in this game. Yay! Congratulations, Nosk, on your first elimination. What is only coming to us soon? Um, Dancer's still down, likely going to use the self heal soon in order to get up, uh, especially with, yep, right now, while in the chairing animation. They're still pushing those cyphers. We got 55% on one, steady, steadily increasing, but the 72% one has been left alone, I believe. Um, Luban, I think, is actually also transitioning off of that cipher. Um, Kirito is going to continue on, uh, it seems, with another sniper hopefully soon they might try to heal up but i do think that you for sure they definitely need to continue to push these ciphers to be safe mm -hmm. yep and we see the clerk is gonna go ahead and head towards the forward there um he does have to be careful not to get downed by this mm -hmm. cipher is at full health so 
could potentially transition away, but if he falls down here, it would make the survivor's task of finishing the ciphers even more difficult. So, we'll see what he can do. No football left, but does have a flywheel. The clerk oh, does get this hit on the forward, and he is going to make a run for the factory here. Mm hmm. Yeah, we are going to see um, a continued chase on the factory here. Unfortunately, uh, one of the ciphers will be popped soon, uh, but unfortunately the forward is going to go down at about the same time. QQ is in this area trying to get to the cipher that the forward had left alone. It does have decent progress on it, so it could be worth the venture. But unfortunately, of course, um, I think Musk is quite aware of that. You do want to be able to control these ciphers and not let the survivors finish them. So going to chair in this area lychee possibly like right on that cypher to prevent them from finishing it putting down a slow box to try and allow the forward to struggle as he does have an increased struggle speed um but it's not going to work out unfortunately we are going to see the forward still go on chair mercenary in the area dancer in the area but they can't really work on this cypher mm -hmm. yeah a little bit of a difficult situation and at this point it would be so hard to start a new cypher that there's not much they can do except try to Get away but the problem is both of these other survivors are at half health so no matter who goes in for the rescue somebody is going to fall down here it's a little bit better for mercenary i think because he does have a delayed damage opportunity to get away from the cypher but regardless clerk is going to try to camp the cypher as much as possible mm-hmm and definitely an extremely smart move to do so. Uh, we are going to see a double down situation. Um, female dancer desperately trying to get that popped, but it's definitely not going to work out. Um, we're seeing forward go back on chair. Mercenary will be down. Has already um, not used the self heal yet, luckily, but uh, will be forced too soon if dancer is not able to heal him. But if dancer goes over to heal him, you know the clerk's going to be able to take them both at once. Um, so going to have to continue to camp out this chair and make sure that the dancer can't get a rescue off. Um, and hoping hoping to get her down before the mercenary gets up which is gonna happen so we might see the clerk go back to pick up the mercenary and musk may have secured a uh, extremely impressive second i believe up for elimination yeah really showing how strong he is with these hunters first the breaking wheel and now the clerk and uh survivors haven't given up yet but i feel like it's only going to be a matter of time mm -hmm. here a mercenary was able to pick himself up so let's see if the clerk is able to find him mm -hmm. mercenary up and on the run we'll see where he goes now he's got one elbow pad and a dream leechy and we will see if that works out uh titanitis i believe being activated because of the mechanic bot in this area and i know those because i play photographer and it is a nightmare to have those things around um so hopefully going to find out the bot get rid of that but the mercenary of course wandering around probably looking for a chest in order to heal up or grab a different item actually going in to heal the dancer here so um dancer's going to get up and not be forced to use her Ooh, no uh both survivors have in fact used their exit path yet she used it earlier i remember now um but now aware that the survivors are together considering the healing mm -hmm. so musk here is still on the hunt for a survivor and we see that mercenary is just hiding out in the area but uh clerk so far checking on the cypher a little bit unable to get a glimpse of the mercenary can't she see him at this position it looks like she hasn't seen him yet so um we'll see what happens here but eventually somebody's gonna have to start doing a cypher if this mercenary i mean either she finds a mercenary or or she's gonna be able to find the dancer if she starts decoding mm -hmm. a cypher but yeah, even searching the the lockers there to see if the mercenary has hiding in the lockers. I haven't seen that <laughs> happen in quite a while, but it's how long since funny little sure. locker play. We're we're asking nicely, please get in the lockers so that we can be entertained. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're looking at a, a long back and forth here. Um, a lot to comment on in terms of like, oh, they're spectating the cipher. Oh, they're finding this and that. But we're just going to see a lot of back and forth until both survivors are downed. Um, and then it's likely looking at a surrender. Um, they are desperately trying to push those ciphers. But with the control that the clerk has, it is not going to happen unless this mercenary can kite a few minutes, Leechy, I'd say. Right. The female dancer is working on that one at 24%, but we see the clerk just keeps locking that one up and rewinding the progress. So mm -hmm. definitely has her work cut out for them. Blink being utilized. Oh, does manage to get that hit there after spinning around. Um, so we are going to see the mercenary go down once again after delay damage is over, and he does not have self-heal this time, which means dancer is kind of on her own for the moment. 
uh, she has gotten off her cipher in advance, knowing the clerk is going to come for her next here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we'll have to go heal the mercenary if any hope of anything, or wait for the mercenary to bleed out in order to get the dungeon, which is not really looking very likely. Um, boat self has been used. She does have flywheel to work with, but she's going to have to kite quite a bit to make this happen. Uh, loading up a little hit there. She was opening a chest, actually. She is at a, quite a disadvantage here. Um, able to kite that off using a flywheel, but the charged hit, of course, not going to hit right away. Going to hit right at the end of the flywheel animation. Both survivors are down, have not used their self-heals. This is going to be a fort elimination for HY's Musk. Mm -hmm. Yes, really strong performance by Musk all around today. And mm -hmm. that was a very abrupt ending for me, at least. Um, because of the <laughs> lag, the stream just kind of snapped right to... Yeah. The video snapped right to the caster, so I was like, whoa. <laughs> when the dancer was standing over the chest it lagged a little bit and i was like what did she get out did she get hit at the chest how long did she survive right. as it turns out she survived a little <laughs> a little yes um yeah but wow another five points secured mm -hmm. for uh, for high and i guess for sata they have really have to they have no choice but to return mm -hmm. with a four kill, right? Yeah. If they want to yep. tie They'll this round. Have to get a four kill to tie this round and proceed into a round three, but um, I'm intrigued to see whether or not that'll happen, especially on Leo's. Um, it can be a very difficult map to work with. So I'm not quite sure, Lichie. Um, But that is definitely the circumstances that we're in. I can't tell you how they're going to end, but I'm going to tell you what we're in. So um, I'm very interested in how it's going to play out. 0 5. Musk is very good. Very, very good. Very fun to watch. Yes, definitely really enjoyable to see a skill with those hunters. And we're going to take a quick look at the match stats as well. Yeah, it dragged on yeah. for so long, I feel like, after the, <laughs> um, the first two illuminations. Mm -hmm. It actually went to 10 minutes for this match. Oh my god, the back and forth, I've become so entranced by it that I'm like, wow, they're going back and forth and back and forth, and then I forget how long it's taking. <laughs> You're right, Bones, what a great map for a lizard. Unfortunately, maybe in another world. Huh. <laughs> Lee G, if you could see any hunter play on this map right now, regardless of meta, uh, just for funsies, especially to close out, what are your thoughts? Who would you like to see come out? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm trying to think who we haven't seen so far. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I was a little bit sad we didn't get to see the hermit earlier, but I don't think yeah. these hunters will have a hermit. But I think it would mm -hmm. definitely be interesting if that was the case. Fun. A little hermit as a treat for Lee maybe. I would love to see a geisha. She does pretty okay on Leos, which would um make things even out a little bit better. But uh, regardless, I. I've been playing her recently. I was like on stream and I was like, oh, I'm trying to learn Geisha, but it's so hard. And then out of nowhere, I guess something within me snapped and now I am extremely good at playing Geisha. So this is our world now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. And oh, I am going to set us up to jump right into the mm -hmm. next match here. So no no veronica and lychee on the screen in between the match this time <laughs> but maybe afterwards maybe afterwards yeah we get into a round three or before before we go and then head into a break for now um we're getting into our game two second half on leo's memory uh this time we are going to see hy on the uh survivor side i believe so it'll be fun And I am silent because I'm focusing so much <laughs> on finding the right timestamp. Um, Sometimes you need to just get that perfect timestamp. You don't want to be there for too long. You don't want to be there for too little time. You want to perfect it. So, Yeah, but I think we're going to have to take what we can get here. So we'll, we'll just listen to this music for a little bit. 
um, <laughs> maybe watch the the Chinese casters doing what they do. Yeah, I like the the hand gestures. I do those. Mm -hmm. Big fan. Still living the little plushies. The mechanic still resonates with me. They should let me do that. Like they should change my job from like formal caster to like. They should just have me wear different little costumes and like sit on the floor next to the chair like a plushie and see if anyone notices or like comments on it. Oh my gosh. I remember for the Japan matches, they had people in cosplay. They did. And, and did like special shots with them. So mm -hmm. yeah, that would be pretty cool actually. I have been meaning to dress up. I'm hoping to dress up for main stage, but no promises. But I have a, a few ideas in my roster. <laughs> mm. Like, hmm, maybe I'll wear a costume. And then I'm like, oh. But then I remember that I'll be casting, and at the thought of, like, wearing a, a wig for that extended period of time while sitting in my chair in a costume uh, to cast it feels like a nightmare. So I'll, I'll debate it. I'll give it much thought. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see that. It would be so fun. I'll, um, I'll do it just for you, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I would love to dress up as something too, but I don't know hmm. what. I've never never tried it before, so. I but. shopped around and looked at different ideas, and I've never done it formally either. I've like looked at it a bit, but I did do like a poll with my friends, and now because I made all of my brands, brands quote unquote, uh, for casting stuff, feeling agent. So I feel like if I didn't cosplay the barmaid, everyone would want my head on the stick, and they would be right to do so because that would not be fair of me. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd be like, why are you doing that? You should dress up the way you should. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll do better next time. <laughs> but those are the joys. Those are my considerations. We'll see. We'll figure it out. We'll see what comes to us in the near future. Um, speaking of the near future, we might be getting into our band pick soon. That's where we're going through our little um, customary transition sponsor phase, I think. Mm-hmm. I love the wide shots. I think that they should let us sit in these cool areas. <laughs> Into our band picks. Leo's again, second half. Uh, that's really hard to recover from with that 5-0. A lot of pressure. Yeah, for sure. And it was not yet in the first round, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see if they yeah, decide to ban. ban. Mm -hmm. Mercenary and Seer. Mm -hmm. Mercenary and Seer are getting banned. No more guys in hoods. No more men or survivors with hoods on. They're not allowed to come out if they don't as well. See, or something. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, uh, we will be seeing... Um, some some fun little band picks were loading right in, so um, we're seeing a little glitch there with the clown in the corner. I do not think that they're banning clown. I hope not. Okay, they are banning Nias. <laughs> <laughs> they're banning clown. I'd be like, what, what secrets are they holding about clown that we don't know? Just show you play clown all the time? But no, we're good. We're good. We are going to see a lovely little band on the Naya there. We're going to see Auntie Crayon come out um, and the Patient as well. So Patient, of course, really good. Pretty good on this map. Um, Auntie Crayon good on any map with her little flute and her ability to uh, kill. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, when the clown came, I was like, I had to do a double take because actually uh, High, the other team, HY, uh -huh. their backup hunter actually is known for clown. Ooh. So I was like... Is this the right team I'm looking at? Is this the right hunter? But yeah, don't know about if Xiaoyu has a clown as well. I but would be for surprised. sure that Nyad ban would make sense just to respect banning the Nyad off the bat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excited to see how this proceeds. No more Nyad. Um, she does do pretty okay on Leo's. The factory loop would in fact totally um, demolish her. So maybe not the best idea to play her anyway, but... She's out of the loop if you did want to play her. Uh, instead, we will be seeing whatever show you has to offer us beyond the Nyad. Um, and what we won't be seeing from the survivor side is a priestess or a dancer. Mm -hmm. I'm not enjoying survivors with hats and hoods today. Yeah, true. All three, all the all the hats and hooded survivors have been banned by the hunter. Out. 
Oh, but we will get to see the toy merchant. <gasps> oh my god! Finally, hats are out! I love toy merchant, especially on Leo's memory. There are a lot of good areas for her to kite. A um, lot of good catapult spots as well. Um, and on top of that, I do enjoy her ability to... Um, any map with a two-story, of course, she doesn't have to use her catapult to get on her glider. Um, so if she wants to loop factory, she's going to make it even more difficult for you. Because uh, she can not only hop off that little bridge there, but she can fly away and make a lot of distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a pretty good survivors for operating on this map from mm -hmm. highest part. Although I think... Like, personally, when I think about getting one survivor out, I feel like they could have gone with, like, even an embalmer. But mm -hmm. in this case, I mean, these are still good survivors on the map, so if they feel confident playing them, I think that's totally fair. Yeah. We'll see what Xiaoyu has. I think earlier... I can't remember if they showed... Did they show the Naiad as their main hunter, or was it something else i'm trying to remember. oh goodness i i think so because i remember seeing naiad on the side and getting excited but mm. um i'm thinking maybe uh could see a sculptor just based on meta could see a sculptor could see a clerk uh could maybe see a wax artist um lots of options i think maybe the geisha that i asked really nicely for <laughs> <laughs> she does do pretty okay on leo's but um, especially in those large transitionary areas, she's really gonna knock it out of the park. Oh, uh, Wax Artist, I am a genius. Uh, we're gonna see the Wax Artist come to play, Lichi, here on Leo's Memory. I do wonder how he will perform and how Xiaoyu will, uh, deal with him here. Yeah, actually, I was kind of curious if it might be a geisha, because we do have the patient and, like, the, the toy merchant who fly, and we have geisha who also can fly and catch up to them <laughs> respectively so yeah um i feel like she could have potentially worked but first officer and antiquarian are a little bit hard for her to deal with yeah the wax artist though i am curious to see how this will pan out i do think that toy merchant and patient sometimes it's a little bit difficult for wax, wax artists to catch up mm -hmm. so might be a little bit tricky depending on how the beginning and mid game goes yeah i'm very very interested um see how this plays out for sure uh this map i'm not sure how Wexordus is going to fare i think there are some things that he could be really good at here and some other things that are going to cause um a lot of difficulty for him mm -hmm. um but a lot of good open areas however a lot of areas that are loopable as well with walls and things for him to not be able to get the wax on properly which is um a little bit rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And spawning closest to the Antiquarian here. So, potentially seeing Antiquarian chase inside the factory. Mm hmm. Yeah. Could block off that window with wax, which would be really useful. Um, other than that, of course, still going to cause a little bit of trouble. <laughs> It is a very hard place to chase around. The factory is quite a, a mess, but you could find the basement in there, so that's a nice chair for you. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, you'd have to aim that wax pretty well on those those little stairs there, unless you're following behind. But if you're mm -hmm. going down, it might be a little bit rough. I'm honestly not sure how it's going to pan out. Um, could also maybe go for the first officer. Um, the wax against the pocket watch is going to be a little bit useful for you. You'll have to waste a little bit of it trying to find him, but once you do, that's going to be a little bit of an advantage. I love the toy merchant's Eskin here, too. She's so cute. She's so cute. I like her. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Popsicle. Looking at some new people in the chat. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Neo. Ooh. Everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Everybody. Sorry about this uh, if it's a little bit laggy here, but we are going to enter game two second half with the wax artist. Uh, and this is going to be the match point here. So mm -hmm. we're gonna see if Sata can succeed in getting a four kill in this match because that is precisely what they need. But first of all, this is actually hires patient going about this kite <laughs> and wax artist as we see has a uh, right down build so this is going to be trump card detention for sata's young 
Yeah, we're going to see Shao Yu start on the chase here, going to block off this window and then vaulted himself in order to try and cut the patient off. Patient is going to have to, uh, use a really nice hook there in order to transition over to the factory area, it seems. Going to loop around here first. Um, going to get hit by some wax in the process, but making it all the way up there is really impressive with the aid of the toy merchant's first catapult. Actually standing here for a moment, um, to just wait for the wax artist to catch up. Um, trying to waste even more time. Actually going to come back down on the stairs, it seems, on the outside loop, just in case the Wexford is trying to cut off, but um, seemingly considering changing target to Truth before going after Hire the Patient once more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Oh my gosh, on this map, the, um, the wax always reminds me of the snowballs. So, like, part of my mind keeps thinking that the wax artist is just throwing snowballs at the, the survivors. <laughs> but, like, very, very quickly. Um, yeah, but Palette dropped here, and this is actually Truth, who's looping around this building. So Xiao Yu here, possibly switching targets once again to the Antiquarian, who is now going to take over looping in this area here. Yeah. So chain and target a little bit. Um, I don't think there's any more support catapults around, which is one thing that the wax artist no longer has to worry about. But cyphers are being pushed pretty all right. Um, the anti grains, of course, has been abandoned, but someone may pick that up and finish that soon. Um, we will be seeing truth. Uh, yeah, okay, no, never mind. There is another support catapult there, which means that able to get up these stairs without uh, having to climb up herself. Um, going to... Um, Possibly, yep, yeah, do a little jump over the window there to not deal with the terror shock. Um, beautiful flywheel after that freeze, uh, potentially going in for a hit on the wax artist to prevent a, uh, a main body hit. Oh, okay, going to get the first hit on Truth um, Antiquarian here. And continue on the loop, I assume. She's in the air right now, which is, which is really talented. Yes, we are seeing a bit of a frozen situation <laughs> a here. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoys the way Auntie Crayon looks as she's jumping off of the, uh, the, oh my goodness, what is it? Off of the little bridge here. Uh, the strange thing is being able to hear it. <laughs> You're like, oh, I hear, yeah. I hear the gong. Um, but we'll try to find our way back <laughs> to we'll make, we'll make our way home what just soon. happened. Sorry, Vaughn. More technical difficulties. Hopping back to where we belong in our match. How talented of her to learn how to fly. New kite style just dropped. Flying no glider. <laughs> I think you can actually float um on like side in a particular way um maybe even on this map if you sort of i don't know if they patched it out yet but there's like this funny little glitch um where if you kind of stand right at the edge of like a, a second story on some maps in a really specific area if you continue healing each other you're kind of like standing on air <laughs> but you can't move otherwise you'll drop the more healing you do the further out you get it's very funny amusing yeah never tried it myself but i have seen it it is real mm -hmm. so i think we're going to yeah um, we're back take, in take what we can get here <laughs> so hopping right back in gonna continue on the chase we're gonna see a beautiful flywheel in a few seconds there it is hello flywheel what are you doing uh we're gonna hop back over to where we left off so the anti will drop off soon after taking this first hit um and she is going to continue to loop around the wax artist of course quickly following mm -hmm. yep so antiquarian Continuing on this kite, Wax Artist does have Blink available, but it looks like he might not need to use it in this case. Just freeze the Antiquarian and down her without the Blink. So Antiquarian going on to the chair. We see that the ciphers, there's almost four ciphers complete. So the survivors do have quite a bit of decoding progress mm -hmm. in already, which is looking pretty good. Yeah, they're doing quite well on that. You know, three servers remaining. All of them have been started so far. She needs to have normal to um, really dwindle down on the patient's cyber here, which I believe was the one that was furthest along. So that's a really, really good move from Xiaoyu on the wax artist, especially considering the first year is only happening right now with three servers remaining. 
Um, we're seeing the first officer come in for the rescue and is now going to leave the area while Truth continues on the kite on her own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the only thing with changing to abnormal is that he is going to be quite weak um, during endgame with no, without any chance to teleport. But we'll see if he can use this chance to buy enough time. Mm -hmm. Does get the Antiquarian down once again, so she should be going on the second chair. First officer is actually nearby and still has two pocket watches, so could potentially be seeing another rescue from the first officer here. And they are, I mean, they are still near this cipher, so... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, maybe this could work out for Xiaoyu, <laughs> but I still think it's a little bit difficult for him endgame with only yep. a normal to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're definitely going to start a new cipher instead of pushing this one, which I believe they have already, and it's already at what this cipher is... Um and in terms of progress, so it's not worth it to continue on this one. They are just going to sell Truth and send her back to the manor. Uh, Arvin hanging out in the area to give Tetanitis to allow the other survivors to decode that Cypher Lichi. So um, Xiaoyu, I think, is going to transition away soon or look around for where that Tetanitis is coming from in the area. I'm going to throw a wax bomb to see if that's potentially it, and now going to be forced to transition over to the Shaking Cyphers to see if they can be stopped in time. Or the abnormal can be used to prevent that pop and push for more but this is not looking like a winning position mm -hmm. yeah the other i mean they've started all seven ciphers and mm -hmm. there's two with pretty significant progress so wax artist is going to be able to block this one and abnormal it but the other ciphers are still going strong there so getting a little bit out of hand potentially and a stun Ooh. here on the wax artist by the patient i will continue to oh look yeah, we're going to see a beautiful uh, palette stun there and another nice hook from higher. Uh, transitioning over to this area, which is not great for Xiaoyu. There are a... Oh, another palette stun lychee! Uh, there are a lot of high walls in this area, which Wax Artist is not exactly uh, not exactly friends with. And the Cypher is primed, so they're either going to pop it when uh, higher is in a good area, or they are going to wait for a hit. Um, oh, another palette stun! That is three in a row! Um, still waiting on that Cypher pop. They are waiting, I think, for higher to be hit. Don't want to get him stuck in a position where he is going to be uh, wax frozen afterwards and things are going to go bad. But uh, three survivors up at full health. Um, first officer already opening the gate and higher, of course, continuing on the kite into this factory area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks like the gates are going to be able to get done in time. The wax artist, no way is he going to be able to get to the gates without teleport. So I think this is looking like a tie situation where two survivors are able to escape and patient goes down so um elimination on patient there but hi they're just gonna have two survivors escape to secure their victory and this should be the game here yeah we will be seeing a win on the side of hy i believe this time around um very wonderful place from the musk of course really stand out i would be shocked if that was not mvp for this <laughs> really 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 good at uh, those hunters very smooth but beautiful teamwork from the survivors for this round in order to counter that wax artist and uh, secure their little position um and get their win lychee mm -hmm. yeah so really nice job on high side and for sure would expect musk to be that mvp there for their side we can go ahead and wait for the match stats and <laughs> kind of end it off with that probably but um yeah Mm hmm yeah i'll be gone soon Lichi will have a another wonderful little guest caster to swap out i hope that um you all are extremely nice <laughs> yeah so veronica will be leaving after the end of this match but we will have another guest coming in for the next two <laughs> matches that we have so oh my gosh still a while to go it's been a while yeah, since four match day yeah since we've done four so Fun, though these two have been pretty quick relatively if it weren't for the lag i think um considering mm -hmm. they've been two o's so yeah yeah but i'm sure that'll be okay he'll have some time to you know get a drink and um <laughs> reconfigure the the horrors of streaming and then we'll be all good and good to go just waiting through them chit chatting i think they're preparing for a player interview at the end possibly um which does take a minute to get set up <laughs> yes and we'll see if we can find the um yeah the match stats in the little windscreen yep oh there it is a little player interview just as i suspected we're never finding the match stats i don't want us to see them <laughs> it's okay um 
I they think don't like us we, very much. we kind of remember the gist of the match anyway. That's but, true. But it would be nice. Um, mm -hmm. I'm like, do they show them? I'm pretty sure they. Oh. There they are. Okay. Oh, we did it. We found them. Potentially. Um, we'll see because <laughs> we're now frozen briefly. And... Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can never tell. I'm like, are they waving goodbye to us? Or what is happening? Are they just talking a lot with their hands? <laughs> Could be both. Could be anything. Could be anything. Uh, I'm so tempted to fast forward, but... <laughs> I'm worried we'll so miss it. Maybe it'll be nice enough to show us what's going on. Oh, you've done it. Lichi gave in to fast forward away forwarding it. <laughs> but... <laughs> But we'll see. Uh, oh, we're still not there yet, so... <laughs> we're we're gonna wait. try a little bit more fast-forwarding as a treat. Yeah, I'm oh, here. Oh, we found them! Is. Yay! Women in STEM. <laughs> we found them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Definitely not in in the tech industry, for sure, though. <laughs> with this, <laughs> with this oh. skills. Um, yeah, but we see there... Survivor is doing a pretty good job of taking on the kite, and they played it safe too with the Antiquarian sacrificing her, uh, making sure that they could at least get one survivor out. So, in fact, they got two, so playing it smart and really paid off for them on HY's side. Whereas for Sata, Wax Artist still did a pretty good job. A tie is definitely still good, um, but a little bit unfortunate in this situation that they were under a four kill necessary type of scenario so mm -hmm. sata unable to advance but they will go to the losers, losers bracket and we'll still have I another know. chance to qualify so we'll see a, we'll see. a little bit more of them later on in these days um i'm not sure what stream they'll be on but if you guys check out the uh the i believe now posted a schedule on facebook i think of all the restreams and um, of course there is the uh cn qualifier stream as well that will show you all of the little brackets coming up so if you keep up with that you should be good You'll figure out where you're going, and you can see Sata again if you'd love to see them play one. Uh, based on their logo alone, I think it would be fun to do. But um, wonderful play from both teams today. HY, of course, bringing home the uh, temporary uh, trophy, perhaps another step closer to the trophy, really, is the win here. But very interested to see how they proceed on Michi. Um That's it for them today, though. So I'm excited to see them in later on brackets. Mm hmm and just for fun, I'll bring us up on the camera one more time. I'll give you a proper goodbye. <laughs> yes, or Veronica will at least. I'll still be around. I will. You'll be on your break. I'll be on my break, so... I'm probably going to get soup. Right. It is um, 11.26pm and I kind of want soup now. <laughs> Great, so Lichi's camera takes a while to turn on. That's fun. <laughs> but once it's on, it's on! Then you guys have Luigi on the screen, and isn't that just it was super great? A little bit of Luigi as a treat. Yay! <laughs> We're here. Hello, Hello everyone. Hi! Get to see our faces, or Veronica's face, one more time before she heads out from the stream but thank you veronica for guest casting on the ivy leachy channel it was super exciting to have you here mm -hmm. and yeah i appreciate all your insights and also um all your knowledge about the skins and everything so be sure to <laughs> check out veronica on her twitter and her channel as well yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Lichi. It was great to great to come. We're kind of going back to our roots a little bit. Uh, Lichi and I cast together during IVA, and then we got hired. So I'm like, every time I cast with Lichi, I'm like, yay, I'm home now. So <laughs> yes. thank you so much for having me. We had some very exciting matches today. Of course, the CN region is um, very crazy with their plays. So um, they're always extremely fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. So Veronica, I'll let you go now, but um, I'm sure we'll see each other soon hopefully we'll get the chance to stream together at some point mm -hmm. but yeah thank you so much and everybody else stay tuned because we will be back with the next two matches of the day so should be exciting it's ty versus free i believe and then gw versus gr mm -hmm. so 
uh, so a couple of pretty good teams from the China region that I'll be playing up next, and mm -hmm. you'll get to meet our next guest caster too. <laughs> so we won't be taking a break, but stay tuned and goodbye for now. Goodbye, everybody.
Hello stream, we are back. This is Lychee streaming on the Ivy Lychee channel and we are watching day one of the mainland Chinese qualifiers. And with me today is a different guest caster. So we just had Veronica earlier and now we have Lying J with us. If you wanna say hi to Hello. the stream. <laughs> So thanks for it's coming on to the stream. Um, but for those who don't know, Lying J is someone who works on the videos for the channel as well. Um, he helps with kind of more of the font editing side. So making sure that the fonts look nice uh, done during the screen whenever we do our translations and subtitles and things like that. So uh, definitely an important role on the team as well. I feel like a lot of times people always ask me if I'm Ivy Leachy when in reality there's a lot of us working on the Ivy Leachy channel. So I do a lot of the translations and kind of managing the channel, but we also have a lot of people who help make the subtitles what they are. So it's nice to have somebody from the team being featured as a caster with me, and I'm really excited to cast with you today as well. Thank you. Uh, I personally have like a lot of respect for the translators because there are so many terms and stuff that are like, how do you translate like a drop hit or a terror shock? Like they have different names in like China and Japan, and like it becomes so difficult to like discern sometimes what they're saying when they're talking really quickly. So yeah, I think translating is is one of the hardest parts of, uh, yeah, making videos for the channel. Yeah, I think everybody really has their role, right? Like the proofreaders also do so much to help out whenever us translators can't figure out what's going on or helping us just to catch um, mistakes in our translations or just like improving the accuracy and making it even better than what it is. So definitely couldn't be here without everybody playing their part. But I'm sure everybody on the stream is excited to get back to our matches today. And I think we will probably still experience a little bit of lag. I am going to have uh, Jay and I have our cameras off while we stream during the matches, just so that hopefully it makes it a little bit better, but we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, so. In just a second, we will transition here, and Lychee is gonna perform her ritual of turning on and off her camera every time. But as you can see, we also have two new Chinese casters whom we are spending the stream with today. Um, so that's fun. But yeah, so today we're going to be seeing as our next match TUI versus Free, I believe, is the other team. And going right away to introduce TUI. So we can look at their characters once we go through the team members, but actually a funny story about TUI's name here. We can see from their logo it's TUI, but you can see in their name, like in the letters by their player IDs, it looks like TUL almost. Like the I almost looks like a lowercase L. And it's funny because one of their members was saying that last year when they participated in Koa qualifiers, they actually thought that their own name was TUL instead of TUI. So they named themselves TUL and couldn't figure out why their ID looked different than their teammates until they asked the referee and was told that they had an L and everybody else had an I. So I just thought that was super funny um, <laughs> that even their own team members were confused about their name due to the way that it looks. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um... And it's also really interesting how their team seems to have a lot of decoders. Like we saw a Mind's Eye just then and now a Mechanic. And I think uh, earlier we saw a Composer in the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's cool to see that they're utilizing all sorts of different decoder characters too. So I'd definitely be excited to see some of those today. And we also have... Yeah. Oh, Acrobat. And this is actually a former pro player too. So TUI also has several former pro Chinese players on their team, like former IBL players. Um, this player here, Jinxing, he used to be on Do5. And previously we also saw um, the one that was the Mind's Eye was also a previous Do5 survivor as well. So pretty cool to see them back in the tournament, uh, even though it's not on the pro team side. Yeah, and now looking at the composer, 
Uh, Lichi, what do you think of, like, Composer in the meta? Like, do you think he's strong? Um, because personally, I'm not sure, uh, if he's that good, uh, because in my opinion, he's quite similar to Lawyer in the decoding buff aspect, but Lawyer has, like, extra versatility with the way that he can see the Hunter and also not get Terra shocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely true. I also personally feel like he is not necessarily the strongest of the decoders. Um, I think he definitely is one of the most unique decoders that we have in the game for sure and is very fun to play. But I think it's hard to find his own niche in today's meta considering there are other characters who can probably do a better job of the cypher rush on the either side or if you really do want a character that can have better self-protection then you would just go with a neutral decoding survivor who has some kiting kits as well so i think it's hard for him to find a place in the meta for sure but we'll see maybe we'll learn something new if we see any of the teams utilize him in call of the abyss yeah i'd, I'd love to see um compares are getting used um because usually for a decoder teams would use someone like Postman who, instead of having a speed boost like Composer, uh, has a dog that slows down the Hunter. Um, so yeah, that'd be interesting to see if we saw a Composer instead of something con more conventional like Postman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And... Oh, actually, another player on the team that used to be a professional player, Miko GW, I believe, was formerly MRC's Hunter mostly playing as substitute hunter from MRC at one point under the name Kagome. Um, and now is on TY, it seems. So, yeah. Um, Bo. Bo. Boy. <laughs> Bo One. I was trying to say his name and wanted to say it in half Chinese and half English pronunciation there. But we have Bo One and Miko GW as the hunters here. So very exciting and oh free this is interesting because right off the bat i see a percy on the side of free brave man playing percy definitely a brave man if he's willing to play percy um definitely against the survivors we currently have in the meta <laughs> uh -huh. yeah but it's exciting i i would personally love to see a percy because of how rare he is in the uh tournament gameplay so I think it'd be cool if we got the chance to see a Hermit for sure, but not sure if we'll be able to. But yeah, survivors here, these survivors always have such high kiting numbers. Like the forward here, 114, you might go, okay, fine, it's a forward. But really, like all the survivors I feel like that we've seen from these non-pro teams have really high kiting numbers. So I'm curious if this is going to hold true for the rest of free as well. The painter here actually with even higher kiting. Yeah, um, I feel like the kiting turns have only increased because with hunters like Clerk and Dream Witch, you need to have a good first kite against them. Otherwise, someone like Clerk could just lock down the ciphers and you cannot die too early to a Clerk. Um, so that's why we've been seeing these kiting times getting higher and higher as teams prioritize staying alive for longer. Mm hmm yeah, for sure. And actually, Painter is someone who we haven't seen too much so far, so I would love to see a Painter as well. always like to see these kind of non-meta characters that I feel like the non-pro teams are more likely to bring out than the pro teams, so might might be able to see something more creative, hopefully. Um, but also wouldn't be surprised if, if we get more of the Prospector, Female Dancer, Antiquarian type of picks as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was just thinking about the undead on this team, uh, the Percy main, um, and I feel really bad because whenever I think of Percy, I remember like um, in the Japan tournament some time ago that um, there's this player from Scars, Celia, who also uses Percy, and the he needed a one only one elimination against Zeta to secure the win. Um, 
And Zeta was able to get all four survivors out on Chinatown against the Percy, and it was so intense. And I felt so bad for, for, for Celia. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that does sound really hard <laughs> in that kind of situation. But I'm sure the coordinator teams have a much easier time against Percy than some of us when we're just ranking or playing quick match. Um, yeah, so Percy to... is definitely much stronger at rank. Because um, you, you don't know, like, are they going to self-heal or do they want me to go heal them? Um, it's it's he's really um, countered by communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. And now we see a naiad here on the other hunter of free. So, we'll see if we can see the Naiad once again. We did see her earlier in one of the matches uh, that we, we saw between Free and Sata, I think, earlier. So, potentially we'll be able to see the Naiad again. And, of course, the beloved Undead, the Percy of the team. It's interesting how the Undead has a higher deduction score and a higher number of average eliminations. Mm -hmm. So maybe Brave Man really knows what they're doing with Percy. Yeah, I hope so. But we'll see if they have a chance or I feel like if they don't come on in the first um, the first round, then potentially the other survivors might even ban the Percy right off the bat if they if they just don't even want to deal with the thought of going against a Percy. <laughs> So, yeah. hopefully we'll get to see that, but we'll see how it plays out. It does look like TY has chosen the map here, and it is um, Chinatown, and also Chinatown. their hunter is going up first. And it also looks like Free banned um, Red Church, which is probably uh, for their hunter, or maybe to his survivors. Um, are known to favor Red Church. Mm -hmm. I think Red Church used to be like a very balanced map in terms of hunter and survivor opportunities, but I think recently it's become more survivor sided as teams have like learned to utilize priestess around middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely true, and I feel like. TUI, since they have had some prior tournament experience, they might tend to play some of those strategies where the survivors focus a lot on teamwork around the church, so could definitely see that being a factor for sure. Yeah, and we firstly see a priestess fan coming in from Beaker, and uh, Free is picking Sia, an entomologist, wow. Hmm. Yeah. I believe Miko does have a sculptor as well, um, but that was quite a while ago. So I'm curious to see what new hunters they picked up. We, we did see the axe boy in the, the photo there. So I think, you know, entomologist could potentially have been brought out as an axe boy counter as well if they think Miko might bring out the axe boy. Um, definitely there's potential in utilizing the bees to block the axe boy's path or even the flames. So Seer as well could also be a good a decent counter to Axe Boy too, a good counter. But we do see that Miko's also banned Mechanic and Female Dancer, getting rid of a Decoder and Supporter, and then Free adding in the Mercenary here. Yeah, I feel like um, the main support on this team comp right now is the Sia, and it seems like Miko really wants to avoid uh, the ability for harassment and support, banning the dancer, antiquarian, and priestess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they are able to uh, be played pretty effectively on this map, but it looks like Free is actually going to lock in as the patient for the final pick. I thought maybe since since they were banning stunners, would they opt to go for another stunner or supporter character? 
since that's what Nico has banned a lot of, but they've actually decided to kind of play it a little bit more safe, more conservative perhaps with the patient uh, instead of choosing one of the supporting characters. Yeah, it looks like the only harasser on the team is potentially entomologist. So there's not a lot of um, harassment opportunities for free right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an entomologist is also, they're like more of a soft harasser, I guess. Yeah. Instead of a hard stunner. So definitely interesting to see them not go for any of the stunner characters. But I don't know, maybe they think Prospector would be too much of a counter, would be too much countered by the hunter. Uh, depending on what Miko decides to go with here. Will it a lot of this will also... Yeah, Axe Boy would be really interesting. Um, and I think an ideal target would probably be Seer or Patient. Just because you don't want to chase the Mercenary first with the long chair time and elbow pads. Uh, and with Patient, at least, uh, he doesn't have the same long chair time. Um, but if Toy decides to go with Axe Boy, he'd definitely want to chase the sea at first. So we might see a clenching effect with teleport as well. Yeah, definitely true. Looks like the hunter is giving quite a bit of thought, but has locked in on something finally. So we'll see who this is going to be. Oh, I see an axe Oh, boy. it's axe boy. <laughs> Exciting. Is he so, locking it in? Yeah. Wow. So we have Axe Boy wow. in the first round. Somebody who we haven't seen yet today. Very fun. Um, I feel like the survivors were definitely had an expectation that this could potentially be Axe Boy, especially with that entomologist pick. But for mm. Miko, I'm excited to see how the Axe Boy is going to perform on this map. Yeah, when he has a uh, full presence, it just becomes so difficult to, like, transition from him. Uh, just because of that slowdown effect, which is so annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to see Mercenary spawn in the middle. Axe Boy is going to spawn at the Hotel Two Story, I think that is, between the Seer and the Entomologist. So, yeah, probably, yeah. His Probably going to go off the, the Seer first. Um, I feel that some of the survivors may have brought Flywheel because Flywheel can just negate his flames if you run into them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely true. Whereas if you have broken windows, the Axe Boy can still catch up even if his flames miss. He gets that speed boost. So Yeah, and windows are also a great place for flame snipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I've definitely seen some very accurate flame snipes by these axe boys before, so we'll see. But yeah, definitely has a lot of confidence to bring out an axe boy, knowing that the survivors know his battle plan as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch the fun loading in animation here. Yeah, it seems like a lot of this match might depend on the first kite, mainly because there's very little ability to support other than Entomologist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we'll have to see how three survivors can deal with Nico's Axe Boy. Yes, we'll have to see. And Axe Boy spotting right on top at the Hotel Two Story here is yep, going, going go straight for Mumu. Mm -hmm. Right for Mumu's seer there. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what traits they've brought on, but yeah, it looks like, what is that? Broken Windows on the Entomologist. Seer does have Flywheel though, so they actually have two tie turners in this team as well. Um, Axe Boy here with the Detention and Trump card, uh, pretty typical I suppose. 
and is gonna continue to try to close distance onto this here here let's see if he goes upstairs or is going to continue to loop around downstairs area nope looks like and entomologist is supporting with her bees already to buy the seer a bit more distance uh yeah he's gonna continue just transitioning out in the open where he can dodge the flames Actually, oh, looks like it looks like he was going to dodge that flame, but then in the yeah, end, yeah, but he, he did ran right into hit. her. Yeah, so almost like prediction, but a little bit too early. Um, and then Axwell managed to get that first snipe. So let's see if he can down this year. He does still have an owl left, so as we see them close distance, potentially we'll be able to see that. Blink should be up soon for the Axe Boy as well. He does get a slow here this year since he left this corrupt area. And looks like this, oh, going ahead and hitting that owl that the seer used. Yeah, and seer still has a flywheel, so there's still potential for him to kite out the first three cyphers. Especially as he's as his going up to the second story, where it becomes difficult for the axe boy to utilize his flames. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a drop down here. Is it a drop? No, it's not a drop down hit. Um... Seer here, continuing to buy a little bit more time. He did use his flywheel already. So the Axe Boy here just doesn't... Seems like he just can't manage to get a hit with that short hitbox of his, unfortunately. Yeah, and these jukes that Moomoo is doing is just allowing uh, Seer to get more owls. We can see that um, it was already at around 80% of the way to the next owl. So once he's rescued, uh, the Seer can probably farm one more owl and take another hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. He did have a decent amount of owl progress for sure. About two ciphers are done for the survivor side. And we're gonna start seeing mercenary come in for the rescue. Um. Misses the flame on the mercenary here. And hits the chair, oh no. Yeah, so mercenary able to pull off a very good rescue here. And three and a quarter ciphers done for the survivors as well. Seer. And Seer's got his second L. Mm -hmm. Although he is kiting towards the patient cipher a little. Yeah, true, and Seer here actually is kind of caught in an area, I don't know if he can make it to the next pallets here, probably not. Um, kind of caught in a dead area without any any pallets nearby when that owl expired, so Axeboy was able to get the Seer down here, and we'll be putting him- And now he's gonna chair on the patient Cypher. Mm -hmm. Patient does have, still have a tie turner, so potentially might see him come in for a rescue. Oh, entomologist bees are coming in now for support here. Actually, able to push the axe boy quite a while back while he's in attack recovery animation to give the survivors yeah. a little bit more time to get away. Also pushing him away from his um his road so that he can't speed up immediately to catch the seer. Mm -hmm. And seer is just trying to get away from the patient cipher to allow him to finish that final. 20% uh, left. Mm -hmm. And we did see Seer try to use the flywheel to go into the pallet, but unfortunately it was a little bit short. Uh, Axe Boy was able to get that hit with the tip of his hitbox there. And Seer should be an elimination for the Axe Boy right now. So they are on their last cipher. Three survivors remaining. One of them is at full health, other two at half health. Still do have a bit of resources in hand for everyone. Axeboy has also not revealed what his trait is yet. I don't think we've seen him use Blink at all. Mm -hmm. 
So now I'm gonna see the patient, I believe, starting a new cipher on the other side of the map. Just to put that pressure on the axe boy. Um, yeah, and prevent him from being able to camp a single cipher. Mm -hmm. It looks like the other two are trying to get that heal. Actually, I can't tell. Oh, looks like that. Yep, they are going to try to get that heal on the mercenary there. So, um, kind of allowing allowing the entomologist to draw the hunter's attention while the other two are able to reset their health states. Yeah, but it's true, the uh, the exploit hasn't revealed his blink yet. I'm curious at this point if he's going to just hold on to it till the end game, Or if he's going to try to get down and control these ciphers at this point. Because they do have one at 70 and the other one's catching up quite quickly as well. Yeah, I feel that the best choice would be to hold his straight so that you can have teleport up at end game. Uh, because at this point, if you use your blink now, your trade is going to enter cooldown. And with accelerated decoding, uh, they're definitely going to finish that cipher before your cooldown is up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we see Entomol just has a tiny sliver of bees left. Um, does get the down. Oh, the and he gets that here. down. So, ciphers are not quite primed, although they are getting close. And Entomologist is going to be chaired over here. Mercenary is the one priming the last cipher, so patient is at full health and can try to attempt this rescue. Yeah, and they're just going to go straight for the rescue since the cipher is primed, not allow Axe Boy to gain any flames from that new tree he planted and trying to trying to take this basic attack but oh it's a flame hit oh no oh and she goes down right after the cypher pop there the mercenary is full health so there is potential for a rescue there but i think it's too risky without ty turner also with his restful road the distance between the gates isn't that far so he can prevent the survivors from opening the exit gates. Mm -hmm. It might be looking like a three-man uh, elimination. Yeah, we'll see how the Axeway plays this out because he also does have a blink that he could potentially change to teleport at some point. But it looks like he's actually going to go straight to pressure the mercenary's gate. Um, he's actually getting pretty close here. Oh, mercenary didn't get to use his elbow pads in time. Oh, and he's down from the plane pit, too. Patient goes in with his hook to get the rescue. Um, but Axeboy is going to chair the mercenary first because he knows that there's no progress on that other exit gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll see. Is he going to go ahead and try to get a teleport or or check out the situation here? Yeah, the issue is if he leaves the mercenary, patient has an opportunity to rescue. And that gate is very close to being broken. Mm -hmm. um, but the Axeblow still does have his trait, which is maybe why he feels comfortable leaving the chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like he's going to go back and check the chair. Um, and they actually do have the patient sticking around in the area, just in case. Mercenary, luckily, he can sit on the chair for a little bit longer, too. And Patient's in a good place where he could potentially get dungeon, since he does have another hook left. Yeah, Patient just heading over to the dungeon. Um, Mercenary... Yeah, now the long chair time is like, you wish you could fly away if you're just getting- <laughs> just get the tie already. Oh, 
teleport coming in. Oh, a little bit unexpected, but, you know, figures nobody else can rescue the mercenary at that point. Entomol just takes the leave, and Patient is already standing at the gate. It's a little bit, um, was a little bit... The tension close, is over. But, yeah. Luckily, there's really nothing he can do unless he... That's why he was planting the tree. Like, there's really nothing he can do unless he flame hits the Patient and gets a regular hit, so... Patient gets that escape, and it is a tie to start us off. So exciting to see that Axe Boy come out right from the beginning, and I would say a tie is not bad. Uh, for both sides, pretty acceptable to start off with that tie. Still lots that can happen for the rest of the matches. Yeah, I'm wondering if they might ban the Axe Boy uh, in the next round, because I feel like there was... There were a lot of opportunities that the Axe Boy had, for example... Um, downing the entomologist with a flame so that he wouldn't have any attack recovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So we definitely do see that Nico's Axe Boy does have a lot of practice with those flames and does have the ability to, to utilize them in key moments like that. So we'll see, maybe we will get that respect ban on the Axe Boy in the next match. We'll see uh, if they decide to show us the match stats. Or I could go ahead and find them. I'm very tempted. I think it's fine to go ahead and try and find them. All right, and actually we're pretty lucky because we found it very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, here we are. Um, is the video playing? Is what I'm wondering. But no matter, we can just look at the stats for now and play the video again later if it ever decides to load. Uh, looks like we have Seer taking most of the kite with 104 seconds of decoding, and everybody else splitting the cipher progress rescues and the rest of the kiting amongst themselves. Axe Boy here has 14 hits on survivors and um, yeah, ended up getting the tie. So not bad on either side to start things off for sure. I am going yeah, to... I... Oh, go ahead. I think a tie is definitely an acceptable result um, considering it's an Axe Boy round one. So... Yeah, I do think both teams uh, did a very good job with Patient having those three rescues, uh, being able to save the entomologist when the uh, mercenary went down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And they're double tied did buy them a little bit more time. So I guess everything generally worked out for, for the survivors as well. But we'll see if the video is feeling happy enough to play now as we get to, um, to the other fan picks. Considering it was um, Tool's map, map selection, I wonder if the survivors have uh, any interesting strategies on Chinatown. Yeah, that'll be fun to see. Yeah, but we are having some additional technical difficulties. So, let's see if we're back. Nope, we're not quite back. All right. 
I'm going to ask Jay some questions while we wait. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> it's an interrogation. <laughs> so, <laughs> what characters do you main in Identity 5? Well, I play a bit of Hunter and Survivor, um, but currently in my matches, I've been maining um, Antiquarian and Acrobat. I just think they're really fun to use. I love like swiping the skill icon for Antiquarian and stabbing the hunter. <laughs> Gives me some sadistic satisfaction. Um, but yeah, I think Antiquarian is very versatile in the way that she counters a lot of hunters and can just prevent them from being able to attack her. And with Acrobat, I really like the versatility of his um, his bombs that he can like use them to support a survivor after rescuing. He can use them to kite. He can use them at windows or in narrow spaces. And yeah, I just find both of them really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. I would love to be able to pick up Antiquarian as well. She definitely seems really fun to play. So somebody who I would oh, like yeah. to for sure. I was testing, uh, I, I had a match against the new hunter, Nightwatch, Nightwatcher, and I realized that in a way he actually kind of counters Antiquarian because I was trying to stab the hunter, but I couldn't because his hitbox is just a little longer than the range that Antiquarian has. So as he was using his wind to slow me down, and I knew that he was going to hit me. I tried to stab him, but it wouldn't connect. Um, mainly because his hitbox could hit me before my stab could actually reach him. Mm. Yeah, so my, my little tip for that is that uh, if he's slowing you down with his wind, you kind of have to run towards him as Antiquarian when he's close enough to kind of surprise uh, the hunter and stab him. Ooh, that's interesting for sure. But good tip, good to know. Uh, oh yeah, and I think another reason I like both of them is just the ability to jump over things. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is true. Yeah, it's so satisfying. <laughs> Are there any maps that you particularly like to play her on the most? Oh, um, yeah, Antiquarian. Um, I think she's pretty versatile on a lot of maps, just because there are like many maps of like narrow areas that you can triple stab the hunter in. But I particularly like both Antiquarian and Acrobat on Ever Sleeping Town, um, because there are narrow alleyways that Acrobat can use his bombs in. And in those narrow alleyways, Antiquarian can also like really easily triple stab the hunter. Mm. So it's really good for transitioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good to know. So now we are finally getting into the bands and picks here. And we'll see what comes out of this. Um, 2-2, two, two, still anybody's game at this point. And we have QI picking the Seer and Antiquarian right off the bat, while the Priestess gets banned. Yeah, we keep seeing the Priestess banned on Chinatown, mainly because we've seen so many hunters in the past really struggle with uh, Priestess's double portal near the hotel that can just suck the hunter in and take them so far away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a menace on this map here. We see a patient and dancer ban. Um, yeah, and Chul is going to pick mercenary because they need some sort of uh, rescue potential in their lineup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, 
And we just see the hunter previously when they were shown their most played character was the Nyad. So I'm wondering if they're going to take this into consideration. Um, I feel like the bands don't necessarily feel like it's for sure Nyad, but mm. we'll see. And the mechanic. I feel like if it was Nyad, the bands might be a little strange, mainly because of the Barmaid and Dancer bands, in my opinion. Um, we've seen that Nyad is able to force the Dancer out of um, her music boxes by surrounding the area in water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely true. So we'll have to figure out what this hunter is considering then, if not a Nyad. Perhaps we're in for a surprise. The antiquarian, like, icon there is always seems a little bit smaller than the other survivors yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of funny i'm like is she really that small or i don't think so i think that they've just made her image very short um very petite yeah photo oh kaitos has an interesting question in the chat uh what do you guys think about the resurgence of hermit in this co-op Yeah, we haven't actually seen Hermit too much among the Chinese teams, but for sure in other regions, like we saw such strong Hermit gameplay in the Korea region, and I think Japan has the Hermit. Japan. Yeah. Yeah, I've been watching the Japan qualifiers, and Aussie, Aussie's Hunter, I believe the name is Aka, uh, they, they play Hermit quite frequently, and I've been having so much fun just watching their Hermit, and... It was so interesting to me how um, sometimes a hermit will purposefully disconnect the ciphers to prevent the survivors from being able to change their polarity. So then they're unable to support um, the teammate that is being chased. Um, I know that a lot of people think hermit is weak, mainly because uh, there's a lot of opportunities for the survivors to gain control of the game. Um, but I feel like, I feel like Hermit has a lot of potential and I personally really like uh, Hermit because I love the, um, the damage control, the map control when they can distribute the damage across all of the survivors. Mm -hmm. I know the 4k Akagot is so good. Um, yeah. I can't wait to see more of Hermit in Koa. I would really love to see um, Hermit being able to, I guess, dominate. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I don't know if any of the teams have played Hermit in China so far, but I've heard that Wolves Hunter Alex has been practicing Hermit. So that could be something potential to look forward to for those who um, like, like the team Wolves. I know a lot of people really like that team. But for sure, we've seen his utility in other regions, and I'm actually pretty excited to see potentially the Chinese survivors go up against the hermit as well and see what their what their strategies are against these international hermits. Uh, but for now, we have the wax artist on Chinatown here, and it is going to be potentially a seer first chase. We'll see, but wax artist against seer, it feels like seer could easily become a target here. Yeah, I feel like Wax Artist is a really good choice against this composition, mainly because Antiquarian can't really stab a Wax Artist too many times, because if you triple stab him, you're, you're adding 75 um, like percent of Wax on yourself, and that's already really dangerous. He also counters Sia, uh, mainly because you can freeze him and wait out the 8 seconds really easily. And also Mechanic is an easy target to chase in general. So yeah, Wax Artist has not a lot of difficulty against this composition in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
So we'll see how how TY survivors can do. I know I feel like we've been hyping them up a little bit considering their past experience. So we'll see if they are able to showcase what they've got. Yeah, and this is their map selection. So if they do lose this match, it won't be very good for them in the next round where they don't get the map pick anymore. Mm -hmm. Definitely true. So we're going to see the hunter start moving towards the seer at the hotel. Um, and seer is probably going to head up the stairs to avoid, yeah, getting waxed by the wax artist. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And we see that Wax Artist here has a Detention and Trump card build here as well. So trying to hide his red light, I suppose, and loop along with the Seer here. Yeah, just keeping on breaking line of sight and heading up and down the building. Really good uh, movement from the Seer to avoid getting any wax on. Mm -hmm. Looking quite strong for Seer so far for sure. And Wax Artist still has about 10 seconds or so till the blink is up. And Seer still has an owl. Yeah, it's, it's also really important to not let the hunter get their first hit before blink is up because if you do allow them to get that first hit, then you only need a blink and you're dead, and that means you have a very short kite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And he is utilizing the owl, does have 96% wax on him at this point, but it looks like Wax Artist is just going to wait out the owl, like you mentioned, and getting that uh, hit on to Seer to start off. He does still have a flywheel uh, in store, so he can still use that to kite a little longer against the wax artist. Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, we are going to see a blink drop down hit, but doesn't land on the Seer, but the wax artist is able to close distance to the Seer this way. So, does get that down. Seer did try to use a flywheel, but he does go down. So, Wax Artist here has reached the first level of presence, and Seer going on the chair. Um, about two, two ciphers done and two ciphers in progress. So, not bad on the decoding for the survivors as well. Yeah, and we also see the AI prediction uh, predicting a 30% chance of a tie. Mm hmm. We see the Antiquarian finishing Mercenary Cypher, and because of the mechanic, they already have a lot of progress on those um, other two Cyphers at 75 and 50%. Yeah, and the, they were able to get quite a bit of early game decoding in because the Seer was not injured for quite a while, which really allows the mech to freely decode for a while. But Mercenary here just goes and pulls off the rescue here, and... We're going to see Seer try to potentially go on a rebound kite. Wax Artist closely following behind and quickly stacking that wax up onto the Seer and getting this down. Hmm. Looks like the AI is predicting 31% chance of a 3 escape at this point. So either a tie yeah. or a escape. It also... What's leading in favor of a 3 escape is that the Wax Artist isn't at full presence yet. Um, so he doesn't have any or much camping potential, meaning that the survivors can get the rescuer fairly easily, and the Cyphers look about ready to be primed by the time uh, the Seer will be rescued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see that Mechanic and Mercenary are actually both in the area here. Yeah, the Vax Artist 
um, attempted to block off the cipher from a distance, but unfortunately wasn't able to. And actually, Mercenary takes this hit, and they're able to rescue the Seer here. Um, so they're just gonna go around body block the Seer. Meanwhile, Seer can farm some owls while they loop around this area. And ooh, let's see. Yeah, the mechanic is just taking those wax hits for the uh, Seer. Yeah, and they popped the Cypher. And now Sia has another owl. So he's gonna, after taking this hit, he's probably going to loop around, uh, buying more time for his teammates to get to the exit gate. Mm -hmm. The dungeon seems a bit too far away uh, for Sia to reach with only one flywheel. Um, but yeah, who knows? We are going to see the Seer go down just now, and the other survivors are at the other gate. Wax Artist did switch to teleport, but not really a chance to get that teleport in. So we are going to see a three survivor escape on the side of TY, breaking our tie. Yeah, so it does look like um, TY knows how to play around uh, the hotel in Chinatown. Uh, they seem to like using um, the height of the building to their advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. The Seer definitely did a really good first kite there. So, very impressive to see. And with 3 to 1, so... That does put TUI at a bit of a slight advantage in points and, and getting the round win, but points would be, what, 5 to 3? Yeah, so Free still has um, an opportunity to make up for the first round since they have the map selection next. So we'll see if they're able to make a comeback. Yeah, for sure. Definitely still quite a bit of opportunity available so we'll see if they're able to take advantage of that um let's see if we can find the match stats without too much difficulty here yep, yeah so, so a very long fighting time from the Sia with 126 seconds and a lot of decoding from the antiquarian and mechanic it felt like the antiquarian didn't see the hunter at all during that match mm -hmm. yeah that's actually quite true a peaceful match for the antiquarian and relatively peaceful for the mechanic as well And we'll see what happens in game two. So we're going to go ahead and cut to game two once we find. Alright, going to transition back in here. Let's see if the stream is going to play. Oh, I think we're back. Yeah, but we have the next map already. This is Freeze Pick, and it looks like it is Ever Sleeping Town. Ever Sleeping Town. I hear people say it's like a smaller 
version of Chinatown, or Chinatown is like a bigger version of Ever Sleeping Town. So it's almost like we're playing on a, a very similar map to round one. And now we have the bands and picks here. So Seer and Priestess being banned right off the bat. And the Axe Boy. And, oh, it seems like they don't want to deal with the Hunter's Main again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I would guess that maybe they'll pick Antiquarian or Mercenary. Probably not Entomologist again, because I feel the reason for the Ento pick in the first half, uh, first game, was mainly just to counter that Axe Boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, that does make sense. Depending on who they think the hunter is, I mean, female dancer is a pretty good pick on this map as well, especially when you have the priestess band for support and the seer. Um, female dancer can really set up a lot of boxes in that middle area there. And she also has the chase yeah. carries to work with. They are putting quite a bit of thought into these picks here. I can't actually tell if we are still playing the video even. I don't uh, think so. I is think the, we're stuck. Is the timer frozen? That's what I think, however. <laughs> Alright. Trying to figure out what is going on. We're just going to um, go ahead and go to once the first few survivors are banned, then, in this case. so It's interesting that Barmaid was chosen. Yeah. And we're seeing a female dancer and patient ban, just because female dancers' boxes are so annoying, as you can set them up in middle, as you said. There are just pallets that you can throw her slow boxes uh, you can throw over her slow boxes, and it buys so much transitioning time for the survivor to get away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a nuisance for the hunter to deal with. Can provide so much support on this map, and hunter has just completely eliminated that variable. But for free, so far, they do have their stunner character, as well as the barmaid, and the, the mercenary coming in as their choice of rescuer. Meanwhile, Miko has banned the mechanic once again, so really doesn't like that mechanic being played from the survivor side. I wonder if they think it's going to be like a clerk or something. I don't know if Miko has a clerk. That's just something that came to mind. Um, Acrobat filling in the last slot. And, or or do they think it's a dream witch? Yeah, because Barmaid is surprisingly decent against both Clark and Dream Witch. Um, Clark, because there's not really uh, any kind of like other attack she has other than her one that can prevent the heal, uh, unlike someone like an axe boy for example um so yeah yeah we'll have to see what miko gw here decides to pull out
as we watch the survivors do their fun animations. The acrobat is really, really into performing on the stage here. <laughs> yeah, I really like the the set designs for like all of the tournaments. It's always like something new to look at to keep it entertaining. Oh, breaking wheel here. Interesting. Breaking wheel. Well, I suppose... Mm. I think the hunter will definitely go for barmaid first. Mm -hmm. Just because it's so difficult as barmaid to um, to be able to use your drinks against Breaking Wheel because Breaking Wheel applies damage through his spikes and you can't drink the spikes off, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we do see Barmaid basically took the safe spot in the graveyard where that she has a window to work with against the Breaking Wheel. Um, but we might see Breaking Wheel go for her anyway, we'll see. If he can get there fast enough, potentially, could try to get Barmaid down before she- not down, but hit or spiked before she gets to the window, even. Finally loading into the match. Yeah, so we're going to see the Hunter instantly change into Wheel and maybe not heading for the Barmaid because of that window, but choosing to go for the Antiquarian instead. Um, Antiquarian, there's a bit of a strange uh, kind of relationship between Antiquarian and Breaking Wheel where although Antiquarian can stab the Hunter to um, prevent Breaking Wheel from being able to land a hit, Breaking Wheel still has traps that can just prevent you from stunning the Hunter in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely interesting, interesting way to look at it for sure. Um, but this trap here wasn't able to Ha uh, keep the antiquarian in place so we are going to see them head towards the pallet and oh another trap being thrown here i can't tell for sure because of the lag but perhaps that one did slow down the antiquarian but we are seeing the mind game around the pallets and blink is now up for the hunter as well um, yeah and... antiquarian staying uh a distance away to prevent that blink from happening but Oh, a flywheel to prevent the hit on the trap, but um, the breaking wheel still uses blink to down the antiquarian. Mm -hmm. It looks like we might be getting a basement chair here. Will he or will he not? Will he? Yes. We are going to get a basement chair here. So, Momo, antiquarian, going right in the basement. The other survivors have three ciphers complete, almost. Yeah, there's... Uh, the breaking wheel missing those traps really allowed for Antiquarian to kite a little longer and, yeah, for those first two ciphers to fully pop. Mm -hmm. 
And Mercenary has made his way over already. And we'll, just, we'll see how this goes. Should be able to pull off the normal rescue here. Antiquarian on last effort. Mercenary. Oh, the hunter. Is he doubling back? No, he's just going to ignore the mercenary. Yep. And yep. He does get that snap on the mercenary, though. Mm hmm. I feel like um, Basement isn't as beneficial to Breaking Wheel as it is for some other Hunters, mainly because uh, your camping ability comes from like the wheel form, where you can't really hit survivors, but you depend on getting spikes on them, and then applying the snap after they're rescued. Mm -hmm. That's true. And also, if if they are chaired in the basement, it's much harder out for the breaking wheel to pressure the ciphers while somebody is on that chair as well. So kind of a mm. double-edged sword the basement here becomes. But Mercenary here pulling off another rescue. The cipher rush is pretty insane here. <laughs> they almost have yeah. all, all the ciphers primed already. We're going to see Mercenary taking that hit and going down in around 15 seconds. Um... But four ciphers have already been popped, and the final one is at 85. So it just depends on whether Antiquarian can avoid the spikes long enough. And I think she can, because the flywheel cooldown is already over. So even if he gets that second spike on Antiquarian, she can avoid the snap. Mm -hmm. Oh. But wasn't able to get the, the timing exactly right, but they were still able to pop the ciphers and utilize that to get away. So, oh, it looks like Antiquarian just utilizing the fact that the breaking wheel is in the human form to go ahead and use those stuns. And just go decides to go ahead and go to the basement here and just lead the hunter away from the exit gates. Yeah, because using that triple stab really buys... Uh, the team time to head over to the gate and she knows that she's dead on chair so without any flywheel left or any stick left she doesn't really have much ability to survive so dying in the basement um leading the hunter away from the rest of the survivors uh, is a really good idea mm -hmm. yeah for sure but Pretty cool to see Antiquarian against Breaking Wheel we have, and yeah, so three survivor escape for the side of three, that is. So we'll see what TUI can do next round, because TUI did have the one point advantage from the first round, but now that Free has come back with a 3-1 to one in the first half of the second round. Um, either TUI can try to try to win the round or at least try to get a tie. If Even if they don't get a tie, it'll still go down to round 3, but then they'll lose their point advantage from the first game. So, we'll find out. And I'm gonna go ahead and search for that match statistics here. Yeah, so that is a really efficient Cypher Rush. We can see that uh, the match was only around four minutes uh, in length, which is quite short. Yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, I was definitely pretty surprised by by how quickly those got done. But that video is taking a while, but hopefully we have the correct stats on the screen now. So yeah, 109 seconds of kiting by the Antiquarian here who took the majority of the kite. 
um, they did have the four survivors all alive at the end game there. So that really shows to shows how much time they spent kiting and also the cipher rush helping them get to that point as well. And breaking wheel with 16, 16 hits there and five downs. So very quick match. We will try to jump right into the next half where we'll see the TUI survivors now go against uh, Freeze Hunter. A little bit dysfunctional on the stream here, but we are going to hopefully head back to the band picks quite shortly. Let's see if it actually decides to play. we are back so again we have this is um, freeze hunter and GUI survivors and we have a wax artist ban right off the bat along with priestess and female dancer two very strong supporters on this map So we're going to see TUI pick Antiquarian and Seer. Um, yeah, right after Free has gotten rid of the very strong Dancer and Priestess support. Um, bringing in that Antiquarian uh, with her stick and Seer with his owl. That can also um, help teammates transition and kite longer. Mm -hmm. A mercenary and mechanic bad. Yeah, we do see the the survivors have chosen the first officer, considering the mercenary has been banned here. So, choosing the first officer to take over instead, pretty good replacement, especially since this is not like a huge map. Um, first officer can still be a good replacement for the mercenary here. And finally, patient banned by the hunter as well. Hmm, another entomologist. So we'll see, we, we saw Wax Artist last time, and we haven't seen their Naiad yet, but we'll see if they decide to do with- oh, another breaking wheel here. So we're matching- oh, no, this is a Bonbon? Hmm. We are not sure yet, but we'll find out soon. Oh, no, it's neither oh, the... Maybe Naya? 
Neither the Bonbon nor the Breaking Wheel. Yeah, maybe the Naiad. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's the Bonbon. It seems it... like Bonbon's been locked in. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a little confusing there. Um, I'm a little disappointed. Naiad would have been fun. But Bonbon is also an interesting choice. Um, yeah. I feel like I'm definitely chasing the sea of fast again. And we're gonna see where they choose to spawn. Mm -hmm. First officer in middle, uh, entomologist at dancing geisha. And yeah, Sia probably going to head up into the second floor. Mm -hmm. And Bonbon bon is he can go after the entomologist as well, um, but entomologist isn't too far from corner house, so he may as well go after the seer instead. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like plus entomologist with seer's owl might be a little bit of a more difficult chase as opposed to seer with his owl and entomologist because it's a little bit harder for her to support against the bonbon plus she would have to waste her bees if she tried like at, during the kite at least it's a little bit easier perhaps to try to chase the seer first yeah definitely something we might be able to see there is um sia potentially transitioning to graveyard and entomologist bees being there to help, considering that um, she's not too far from graveyard. Mm -hmm. And Bonbon is on the move here. Yeah, we can see C is already on the second floor, and he has vaulted out of the window, heading straight to Graveyard. Mm -hmm. And this is a detention bonbon with trump card. Meanwhile, everybody has flywheel except for the first officer, who of course has the tie turner. And Entomologist might end up becoming the target here as we rotate towards her. Mm -hmm. Is he going to go after the first officer or is he trying to counter loop the Entomologist here? first officer is already using a pocket watch and it also seems that um, by disrupting the seer and entomologist and first officer that he has slowed down their early game degrading a little mm -hmm. continuing the chase on the entomologist the bonbon bon does have full bombs to work with as well and a blink at this point so did stack up to quite a bit of resources during the time that they were walking around the map. Yeah, Entomologist just continuing to use her bees to get a speed boost and break line of sight, and then leaving them in that narrow area where Bonbon bon has to hit them. Uh, yeah, buying her a lot of time, and now we can see three of the ciphers are at around 70%. Flywheeling to avoid that bomb. Uh, but this is a narrow area, so she'll take one bomb hit here. Oh, and oh, Sears Owl came oh, in, no. but it was too late. Oh, she already got the hit. And Bonbon, bon, go ahead and uses his blink here. Let's see if he can get the chip or catch up to the ent entomologist here. Oh, just misses that chip valley. And as she goes down, we'll see the first three ciphers pop. Mm -hmm. 
So definitely not bad for the survivors to get that three ciphers done by the time this entomologist goes onto the chair. Also, she's being chaired quite far away from any of the other ciphers. So Bonbon bon can't really control the decoding uh, from this distance. Mm -hmm. Bonbon bon here just doing Bonbon bon things as he camps. First officer, meanwhile, trying to pull off this rescue and does get that rescue off before half. And entomologist. Yeah, entomologist taking that hit, and she is all out of bees. So just dying in a corner away from all the ciphers, uh, allowing the survivors to finish the final 50% on each of them. Mm -hmm. Antiquarian will be coming in for the rescue, uh, preparing for when the ciphers are primed. Because first officer has a chip on him, and Antiquarian can stab the hunter and also use her stick to destroy bombs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Entomologist, even though she doesn't have any bees, uh, she will still have flywheel by the time she's rescued. So it is looking like a, a three escape. Yeah, and a three escape is at least what you I would want. Ideally, at least three escape to tie out this round with free. But they do have the cipher primed, and we're just seeing survivors being yeah. waiting at the gates. They they pop. Survivors start decoding right away. The gates, and it is a detention bonbon, so no trait quite yet. But we'll have trait in a few seconds shortly. And dungeon is actually right over there in the end so she has a flywheel <laughs> oh can she potentially flywheel out this no she oh, does no. get hit that was very close to a four-man escape though mm -hmm. very good effort from tui survivors yeah, for sure. They are able to tie up this round overall, and that makes them keep their lead from round one, too. So, definitely a good job on TY survivors. In a case where their hunter got three escaped, they were able to come back with their own three player escape. So, yeah, also with the challenge of this being the opponent's map selection, uh, they did a really good job of, yeah, just maintaining their point advantage. Mm -hmm. So it isn't really looking that good for free since TUI gets the final map selection in game 3. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if there's a chance to uh, gain that advantage in the final round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And we'll take a quick look at the match statistics here. Entomologist getting most of the kiting in, and this was also a fairly quick match actually, 4 minutes and 30 seconds or so. Yeah, we can see that um, Antiquarian and First Officer have very similar statistics with both of them rescuing once. Uh, containing around 48 seconds when uh, after they rescue the hunter, and also decoding around one and a half is each. Mm -hmm. All right, so 
we will go ahead and look at round three. And thank you everybody on the stream who's continued to stay with us or if you've recently joined. We're just gonna take a moment to find ourselves the third round, the third and final round. If, yeah, so TY, if they can win this round, then this is gonna be their victory. And if free wins, I think it's gonna be a matter of points. a moment here and all right stream is back on while we look at our casters here And this is actually going to be Leo's memory as the third round map. So very interesting choice. Yeah. Back um, to Leo's. Yeah. So we're going to see uh, a mercenary seer and antiquarian band, and also an axe boy and dream witch band. Um, just not wanting to deal with the axe boy who. Is the hunter's main and also not wanting to deal with dream witch's ability to yeah not only have a lot of map control but also to i guess spiral the game into the hunter's favor just from a single free hit and also having an amazing end game potential mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like Free is choosing some flying survivors here. They've got the Toy Merchant and the Patient here. Antiquarian. Yeah, Toy Merchant. <laughs> oh, a Psychologist and Forward Man. And a Toy Merchant pick on Leo's memory is... Leo's memory might actually be um, becoming more of a common map choice, mainly because of that catapult with toy merchant where you can get a survivor from middle up the stairs of factory um which is a really strong way for the survivors to escape from the hunter because not only do they need to walk all the way to go up the stairs but there's also a window in their way mm -hmm. yeah that's true she can be really strong on this map and the survivors bringing out the first officer as well we saw Mercenary got a early ban along with the forward, so they are going to choose first officer for stable rescuer here. And oh, a professor the pick. Professor. We haven't seen this yet in today's matches at least. Yeah, Lichi, what do you think um how do you think Professor compares to Sia in terms of like um how versatile they can I feel like Professor, in theory, he has a lot of utility, but we've yet to seen that in tournaments too much. Like, he can potentially utilize the stun to, for example, interrupt the hunter's attack animation or something like that to help him get in a pallet, but it depends on the hunter too. Like, if the hunter has a really quick attack animation, like Nyad, then sometimes he's not able to get that out in time. So, I don't know. I think he does he does have some utility in theory, but I think he's harder than say like the antiquarian to pull out in terms of his actual 
practicality. Yeah, definitely. I think I think a lot of people compare Professor and Sia because they can both absorb hits, and um, that's like, and they also like allow their teammates to absorb hits by Sia giving his owl and Professor dropping his scales. Um, but I think another good comparison to make is uh, Professor and Perfumer, because I think the main difference between Sia uh, and Professor and Perfumer is that even though they can all take hits from the Hunter, um, Sia's owl is protection for a certain duration, whereas Professor and Perfumer aren't. So it becomes a lot easier for Hunters to bait out Perfumer and Professor's abilities, as opposed to Sia, where even if you do bait it out successfully, he still does have eight seconds of protection. Yeah, precisely. Even if he does get it baited out, it is guaranteed protection and they can potentially do something with it, like get to a better kiting area or something like that. Whereas for Professor, it's definitely more of a, a risk on the timing there. So. Oh my gosh, guess who just joined the stream? Oh. Hi, Joggy. I'm doing good. It is getting a little bit late here. <laughs> We've had some technical difficulties during the stream if you haven't if you haven't um, been here earlier. So there's quite a bit of lag on the stream, which I feel like sorting out the technical difficulties has caused us to, you know, run a little bit longer. But we're getting through it. And hopefully I'll be able to fix this situation by the time I have to stream again, which is the 18th. Yeah, we're gonna see a Bloody Queen pick. Um, I'm not so sure about that because... Uh, I feel like the ideal targets to chase would be the Professor and Toy Merchant in this situation. But Toy Merchant is choosing to spawn in middle, meaning that uh, she's definitely going to set up that catapult uh, going into factory. Um, and Patient can avoid mirrors with his hooks. First Officer is also a decent chase target, but it can be very hard to um, yeah, get a hit while he's got his illusions, his pocket watch. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see who the Bloody Queen wants to chase first. Because everyone seems to not be in a very favorable position for the Bloody Queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Oh, and I see Vicky joined the stream too. Hi, Vicky. Shi Li Qi zai jie shuo. Hao jiu bu jian. Yeah, hao jiu bu jian. Hope you're doing well, Vicky. Yeah, so now we're heading into the match. And have you noticed that they've like upgraded the graphics for um, the maps? Oh, yeah. Like in the when they review before the match starts, I, I really like that Leo's memory graphic. Oh my gosh, Veronica was just saying that she did not like that one at all. <laughs> what it was, what do you mean? The snow is like so pretty, and uh, also the way the textures on the scythe machine are updated. <laughs> I think it was mainly it the scythe so machine. Pretty. Yeah, oh, how could she? How could she? <laughs> Well, back to the match. Uh, we're gonna see, wow, Toy Merchant juking out like three hits from the Bloody Queen. Um, but still a very early hit. A uh, Blink isn't up yet, so Toy Merchant is flying to gain some distance, unfortunately having to drop to get through that door. Um, but Bloody Queen could just down Toy Merchant with this next mirror, not even needing to use Blink. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And unfortunately, case. yeah, she hasn't. Um, I believe she just picked up that catapult to prevent Bloody Queen. Oh no! Oh, she never placed it down in the first place, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And she also came equipped with a tide turner rather than a flywheel, so didn't really have a chance to try to dodge the mirrors that way. Mm. And is going to get chaired in the basement, and we see first officer is already making his way over. Interesting that she does have a pocket watch there, so she can replenish first officer's items if he needs to. Yeah, we'll see how this rescue goes. I feel like generally against the Bloody Queen in the basement, there's not a whole lot of advantage necessarily. So in this case, it seems like it'll just be a pretty standard rescue. Um, Cyphers are looking a little bit short on the survivor side. We have almost two and a half Cyphers done. Yeah, and Toy Merchant will be going down uh, another time and it'll be her second chair, but Bloody Queen still has Blink. So the AI prediction is predicting this to be a full survivor elimination with a 30% chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless Toy Merchant can find a way to somehow avoid the Blink and also be able to kite out another mirror, um, it's going to be very difficult for free. Yeah, it does seem like it. And this is the patient coming in for the rescue. Does have one of the professor scales on him, but no tie turner to help extend the kite. Oh, and Bloody Queen's mirror cooldown got, um, reset from the full presence after hitting the patient mm -hmm. so she's instantly able to use a mirror to down the toy merchant mm -hmm. yeah and ciphers we have about i mean the last three ciphers are being worked on as we speak about half done on each but right now we have two survivors decoding well while the uh, patient here is getting chased, does have two hooks to work with though. So if he can use those hooks well reactively to the mirror, then he can potentially kite for quite a while. But like you said, the Bloody Queen does have the blink as well. So does have resources on her side too. Yeah. Using that blink to down the patient, avoiding the pallet mind game. Um, we do see those two ciphers being worked on at 70%. But if patient gets put on the chair, uh, we can see Professor leaving his cipher on 70 already coming over to rescue. Um, and this is the disadvantage with big maps because Bloody Queen has been seeing those ciphers shaking so she knows where each of the survivors are, and she's able to potentially cut the professor off from rescuing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it Getting an early hit and using a mirror to prevent the rescue. And now it seems like there is no hope for the survivors anymore. Um, there's simply not enough decoding, and... Yeah, and on big maps too, it takes them longer to run from cipher to cipher, so even if they did get this rescue, the first officer would have had to finish his cipher and run all the way to the professor's cipher too, which would have been a lot either way. Um, but... Yeah. Yeah, try to make this rescue on the patient here. Just using his pocket watch to gain uh, the tide turner effect. Yeah, I mean, really, if if they can buy time for a professor to self heal, then 
and the patient to get away, then I suppose it would make a change in the situation. Mm -hmm. But still, having first officer go down is still pretty rough. Um, if the patient can buy a little bit more time, maybe the other two can heal. But we'll see how how long he can stand up to the hunter here. Yeah, we see the other two already starting to heal in the corner. Um, patient will have to avoid this next mirror if the other survivors want to start decoding again. Um, but it's not looking very good for free. Mm -hmm. And they didn't manage to get the heal off to full health to either of the other survivors either. So, yeah. First, uh... Bloody Queen is just going to continue to try to get the patient. Actually did manage to waste one of the Bloody Queen's mirror there with with the way that he ran and kited. So Yeah, a very see. good movement from the patient and a bit of a misstep from the Bloody Queen uh, with that mirror placement and that those objects just blocking her way. Mm -hmm. Oh, getting in the locker, so she has to swap places with her mirror? Are we seeing a lot of locker usage today, Richie? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, not something we see very often, but sometimes the survivors do get creative with those lockers. Yeah, speaking of lockers, there was actually a hermit match that I watched where um, the cypher was primed, one person was on the chair, uh, one person was eliminated, uh, and both of the survivors that were uh, standing up had a blue charge on them. So if the hermit hit one of them, then they wouldn't be able to pop the cypher because they would both go down. And then what the su survivor priming the cypher did was they went into a locker because there's that glitch where you can enter a locker and it removes the polarity. Um, so they used a locker to prevent Hermit's map control, and they were able to pop the cyber and have uh, three survivors up at endgame. Wow. That's pretty cool to see, for sure. Um, yeah, but one survivor escaping on the side of Free here. Yeah, that was honestly very impressive because the AI uh, was predicting um, a four-man elimination. Um, but we saw the patient able to maneuver in a way, avoiding those mirrors, and just, just buying enough time for his teammates to pop those final two ciphers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it kind of comes down to the Toy Merchant's kite in the beginning being a little bit short, and the Bloody Queen just being able to take her down very quickly with the mirrors. Not really, it feels like she wasn't really utilized to her full potential on this map because the Bloody Queen ended up finding and hitting her so quickly right in the beginning. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's also not looking very good for free in the second half because to, to win, they need a four survivor um, elimination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty rough here. Um, got a quick look at the match statistics there, but yeah, generally not able to kite long enough for ciphers to be decoded fast enough, resulting in pretty early eliminations. And like you said, a little bit of a rough spot for free to be in at this point. Yeah, even if they can match the result of a three survivor elimination, um, TUI still has the point advantage from game one. Mm -hmm. So the only other option is a four survivor elimination, uh, which would give them the point advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a little bit or quite difficult, I suppose, I should say. Let's go ahead and see if we can get into the last match of the day. Not of the day, but 
potentially the last match between these two teams. But what do you think about the professor's gameplay in the match we just saw? Um, I feel like the Bloody Queen did a very good job of avoiding uh, Professor's scales when he was trying to rescue. And I think that highlights one of the... One of the problems with Professor is that... Um, all you have to do is bait out his scales, and it can very much just be a guessing game um, in terms of when the professor might activate his skill. Um, it also seems like there wasn't a lot of support available with both the toy merchant and patient not being able to pick up any scales either. Um, but yeah, I still would like to see more Professor gameplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think always cool to see the players explore different characters and their utility. Sometimes characters, even if they don't have an adjustment, suddenly they become very popular because they found a new way to utilize them. So always very yeah, cool definitely. to see that. And we're just going to wait for the stream to get ready. So we'll see. Hopefully we can get the band pigs on the screen soon. So uh, while we're waiting for the stream to load, Jay, I saw you recently got some Identity 5 merch. Uh, yes, I indeed did. Um, I actually have a Sia plushie with me right now. Um, I can show the stream if you uh, turn on the cameras. Oh, um, sure. We will. Yeah, uh, it's oh. very cute. Yeah, I'll switch it back to the to our screen here if you want to go ahead and put your camera on. I am yeah. going to see what is going on with my video. Yeah, so everyone say hello to Eli, Sia. Um, he is wishing all of the players good luck. Um, and he's praying that he won't get banned as much in the following rounds. <laughs> and I also have a a little bunny version of of Eli. Oh my gosh! 
wait, that's so cute. Yeah. Hopefully my camera doesn't blur it out. But... <laughs> ah, I love it. He is watching with us all, even though he's not. He's watching with his owl again. Watching with his owl. What does um what does he think the outcome of the match will be? Does he have a prediction, possibly? Uh um well he he can see the future, but um he's not allowed to share that with us right now. Mm, yep, no spoilers allowed. I'll come back briefly as well, since we are still waiting on the stream. Sorry, everyone. This is taking quite a long time for the stream to catch up. So we're just going to let it buffer a little bit. But yeah. So what do you think about the usage of Thief in Koa so far? We have been seeing some Thief. Um... Actually, in quite a, in a few regions, we've seen some thief gameplay already. I remember for sure MX using the thief from Southeast Asia region, and there's some Chinese teams that are picking up the thief as well. So, <laughs> I think it's very interesting to see him being used against like a clerk or a naiad. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, after his buff, where like, you can shine the light from any direction to block their skills. Um, he has become a lot stronger, mainly because after you block their skills, hunters with abilities that they hold, um, like Clerk's Recordings or Geisha's Butterflies or Naya's Harpoon or even just, like, Teleport, um, that, like, you can't moonwalk anymore to avoid looking at his flashlight. So it makes it much more difficult to close the distance between the hunter and the thief. And if hunters don't have, like, um, abil abilities that can hit survivors like Nyad's Water or Bon Bon's Bombs or Axe Boy's Flame, uh, it can make it very difficult to catch up to the thief. Um, so that's probably why we're seeing more thief usage, especially since Clark is very meta now. Um, and Thief seems to be able to work against Clark very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely true. We see some Thieves kite a very long time against Clerks, and definitely disabling her ability to use the recordings while she is being um, shined on with the flashlight is very useful for the Thief. So I'm glad that they are finding new utilities for him against the meta. Like, it's kind of an example of how some of these characters who have been around for a while are now being brought out again to counter the new hunters of the meta. But let's see, I think... Oh, is our stream ready yet here? Okay, I think we might be back to the stream in just a moment. So, we are seeing the casters talk in slow motion. <laughs> pick yet but hopefully we'll get there eventually I don't want to fast forward and mess things up again so <laughs> Tyler is asking which non-pro teams are the strongest that have qualified so far 
Actually, you might know more about that because you've seen more of the Japan qualifiers. Well, actually, um, have there been any non-pro teams from Japan that have stood out, or is it mainly the pro teams? So, in Japan, um, definitely a lot of the pro teams have, like, shined in the qualifiers, like Zeta, uh, RC, um, yeah. Um, but we have seen some uh, weaker teams uh, also make it through um and i was actually quite uh, quite disappointed not in a bad way just a, in a personal way because i saw um a lot of teams like they did so well against some of the teams that qualified but like they just couldn't make it um i think uh let me see. Um, but generally, most of the Japanese teams that have qualified are already um, pre-existing uh, pro teams. Mm -hmm. But there were some notable mentions in there. I just need to find out which one it was, because I can't exactly remember the name of the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm definitely curious to see this time what the Japan teams will show us since I feel like overall as a region they are quite strong. And as far as the Chinese teams, of course we don't know who qualifies yet other than GG and Wolves who are pro teams. But there is a pretty good chance actually, just looking at the bracket layout, some analysts have said there's a pretty good chance that TUI might actually qualify just because of the fact that there are several pro teams in China going against each other this time, and at least one of them is going to get knocked out, which means there's more potential for the non-pro teams to get in. And out of the non-pro teams, TUI just happens to be one of the more well-known teams because they played in past tournaments before and have former pro players on their team as well. So I think that's why from China perspective, if they are to look at non-pro teams, TUI is one to keep your eyes out for. Um, and we're going to see them right now, actually, coming in with a Seer and a Mechanic. First two picks. Meanwhile, on free side, their Hunter has their Breaking Wheel and Wax Artist banned here. And Hunter is banned, Prospector, Antiquarian, and Toy Merchant. So, Stunners and Supporters here that have been banned. Trying to decrease the chance of survivors escaping. Yeah, and since Free needs a four-person elimination, um, so we see a mechanic pick from TUI um, potentially uh, making the decoding very fast and pushing towards that end game just to get one survivor out. Mm-hmm. We might have to do a little skipping situation as the stream is a little bit stuck. <laughs> so we'll see where, what we can do here. All right, this is better. So we're skipping ahead just a tiny bit, but still on the band picks. And we see that they filled in here with the first officer and the entomologist. Actually, Professor has been banned this time. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, who the Hunter picks because we do have some very strong survivors that are making it difficult for, I guess, the Hunter to pick someone that can counter all or most of the composition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And with a Cypher Rusher like Mechanic, they do increase their chance of getting like at least one survivor out, even if, even if she doesn't necessarily end up being the survivor making it out of the manor. But we do see that Clerk yeah. 
has been chosen here. Clark, not, not necessarily easy against this team either. She definitely can try to chase and down the mechanic, but with everybody else here, I feel like it's not necessarily easy. Yeah, it it will be hard if she doesn't if she isn't able to get rid of that bot. Because even if you're able to control in a survivor team with four survivors, if you have someone on the chair and someone coming to rescue, then you have two people decoding and Clerk can prevent one of them from decoding. But if you have a mechanic on the team, um it's basically very hard for, even for Clerk to control that decode speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. The clerk definitely wants to go after the mechanic first, or at least find a way to get rid of her pot. Um, but it will be very hard considering that mechanic is in factory as well, and entomologist is nearby at middle, so her bees can come over to support it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think well, we can pretty much expect that to happen. Clerk to go right after the mechanic and kiting in two story with the help of entomologist bees. You have Sears Owl in there. And we're about to enter the match. Okay, I still find it completely unacceptable that Veronica does not like the new Leo's memory graphic because <laughs> I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it's just yeah, like, but what can I... uh, it's, yeah? it's such a detailed graphic that you can see like everything, <laughs> like all the same. Yeah, right? yeah. I just think the the aesthetic of the italicized text overlay is also really uh, pretty on top of that. But we're going to see the clerk uh, in the factory guarding the chase against the mechanic. Mm -hmm. And this is trump guard and detention that the blink has brought. Or sorry, the, the, the clerk has brought. <laughs> Not the blink. Um, <laughs> but assuming the clerk has brought blink as well, based on the cooldown there. Uh, mechanic already getting recorded, but choosing not to drop down that pallet here. But if she doesn't do anything, she may be subject to a basic hit quite soon. And Demolgious Beast, though, coming into play. Yeah, really good communication from uh, the survivors. Mechanic knowing to run forward into the um, factory entrance. Mm -hmm. And actually, the clerk is now heading towards the Sears cipher. Um, yeah, interesting choice. Um, I guess um, the clerk just thought mechanic in factory with entomologist bees and a CRL would be very painful to chase, which I can completely understand. Um, but yeah, it does mean that you're letting out that bot to do more decoding. Yeah, for sure. 
and the ciphers are being rushed as we speak here. Um, Clark is yeah, gonna... one cipher already complete with no hits on any survivors. Mm -hmm. And the bees are coming in once again to block the hunter from chasing the seer here. Yeah, the ciphers are going really fast, especially nobody's hurt, so the mechanic is just decoding at her super speed. Yeah, we can see the mechanic leaving the bot at the factory cipher and transitioning to the corner of the map. A very nice out from the seer there. Um, knowing that the clerk's hitbox can go through that pallet and that he's still within the range. And now we'll see him kiting in this corner uh, here, um, failing to get that pallet stun and missing the flywheel. But the decoding is still very fast, with around three and a half cybers away. Mm -hmm. Clark does have blink though, so does utilize the blink here and downs the seer. Uh, about three and a half ciphers being done, so pretty decent job for the clerk. Normally this might be okay as well, since she can still try to push the end game back as far as possible. But in this situation, the clerk is looking to try to get a 4k, so I think it's still pretty difficult, even if it is a clerk, even if she can't slow down ciphers. Yeah, also considering how much um, of the bot mechanic has left, uh, first officer with his pocket watches, there's not really much opportunity to uh, push this into a 4k unless a clerk somehow is able to prevent the decoding and also prevent a rebound kite. Mm -hmm. And first officer taking a hit and going to rescue normally. Getting a pallet stun. The seer gets a pallet stun onto the clerk here. So trying to buy out a little bit distance, see if a rebound kite is possible or not. But clerk does we have can the see... Oh, getting that hit uh, around the corner. Um... Spear at around 70% Al. We can still see Clerk doing a good job blocking off that uh, factory cipher, preventing the survivors from popping it. Mm -hmm. It looks like the bot is actually healing the first officer right now as well. Yeah, and they do have it an extra cipher started against the clerk as well. I guess it's the benefit of having the bot around as an extra body too. Um, this yeah, one's definitely. done. Bees coming I guess in. Another... Coming in. Everybody's here. Oh, yeah, there are so many people here all of a sudden. Uh, mechanic coming in to rescue. Unfortunately, unable to prevent uh, First officer's cipher from popping. Mm -hmm. Clark still does have an opportunity by preventing the exit gates from opening. A very nice terror shock on the mechanic, but the first officer was still close enough to make the rescue in time. And Sia can head into factory, um, allowing him to kite. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get a bot body block too here at the factory. Uh, so it looks like Clerk is actually gonna go back for the mechanic. Yeah, the bot is just healing up the first officer again, um, preparing him to go in for a rescue um, while entomologist is priming that cypher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that way they don't have to rotate and switch places too, so it should be able to save up some time for them. Yeah, it seems like Seer and Entomologist might... Uh, it seems like Seer is getting healed. Um, and what they can also do afterwards is um, use the Seer to block the Entomologist from getting recorded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and first officer gets that rescue off before half as well. 
And they I think the main it. issue... Ooh. Uh, yeah. The clerk has no recordings right now, so... She's unable to record or any of the exit gates. Mm -hmm. Does have the blink available for now, and I think she had trump card blink, but... Yeah, nobody actually, nobody is decoding that exit gate either. Um, they do have some progress on the other gate and are just starting on both gates at the moment. But this is, I don't know. Oh, don't a know. very nice power stun from the mechanic. Mm. Um, yeah, buying more time for her teammates to just keep decoding the gates. And with the amount of recordings that Clark has, it's simply just not possible to prevent the gates from opening at this point. Mm -hmm. First officer is looking to body block for the mechanic with his tide turner. Yeah, looks like ooh, looks like Clerk did get the down on the mechanic in the end. But Seer so you're, so you're utilizing his extra owl as well and they all just escape through the gate. To TI, you know, they're just gonna take the win and accept the three survivor escape here. Yeah, we saw some very good coordination from TUI survivors at the beginning, um, with Entomologist helping Mechanic and Factory. And then we also saw uh, Sia just being able to contain the Hunter for a very long time. So, very impressive from uh, TUI survivors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was a good match though. I, I enjoyed seeing the mechanic and seer do their, their kites here. Although, I suppose looking at this, the mechanic had the most kiting, followed by first officer and the seer, with entomologist not really running into the hunter the whole match, but her bees certainly did. Meanwhile, hunter here had four survivor downs this match. So yeah, based on this, I think well, we can see the score one more time here, but based on this, it looks like TUI is going to be the one that advances onward in the bracket, and Free is going to drop to the loser's bracket for another chance at qualifying. So congratulations to TUI! And I think we are due for a short break. Yep, and after the break, we'll be moving on to uh, GW versus GR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two pro teams from China's IVL, so should be a very interesting match to watch. Um, Jay and I will be back in a couple minutes. So stay tuned, and for now, we'll let everybody go on to a break as well.
Hello everyone, we are back. This is Lychee and Lion J, and hope everybody had a nice break, but we are about to get into the last match of the day, which is between GW and GR. So two IVL pro teams that will be battling it out in this qualifiers, which is very fun. And as much as I love to see these teams battle it out against each other, it is fairly early on in the qualifiers, and they are in a pretty competitive bracket against other pro teams. So regardless if they win or lose this match, they're going to be going against more IVL pro teams coming up next. But yeah, Jay, yeah, I'm you excited? Looking forward... <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to seeing um, both GR and GW um, because... Well, GR, um, as many may know, they won Koa 1, 2, and 3. So they have many fans. They've been playing the game for a long time. Uh, and yeah, uh, and GW, um, because a lot of their members um, used to be from X-Rock. Uh, so these are two very experienced teams uh, going against each other. So I'm yeah, really looking forward to what they have in store. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, GR has that really long-standing history of competing in Call of the Abyss. And, you know, they've had so many member changes that I think PPX is the only remaining member from Call of the Abyss 2. I don't know if they have anybody left from Call of the Abyss 1, actually. But even so, they do carry on the name, you know, the name and the fame. So definitely have a lot riding on them as well. But we are going to head into the team introductions quite shortly. Um, in just a moment, actually. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Maybe not quite so soon. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself here because too excited to see the teams. You know, Lichi, I have a bit of a secret that I haven't been telling you. Um, and it's, I I've secretly been uh, helping the survivors decode um, during these matches. Oh, really? I've been typing away here, yeah. My goodness. If you see my scythe machine, I've been uh, hacking the game using this to accelerate my decoding. Oh, my goodness. Jay has discovered a new a new hack, a new loophole to the game, it seems like. Remote remote support on the ciphers. Yep, exactly. It's like a mechanic, but better. <laughs> No, I love that. Oh my goodness. Okay, some technical difficulties as we get back to the stream here. Yeah, you're going to see me stare very intensely at the screen for a couple minutes as I try to pull up the correct the correct teams.
but fun times. Yeah, so I guess we talked a little bit about GR and looking forward to GR, but I think GW is a good team to look out for as well. Like you mentioned, they were formerly X Rock at one point and then um, ended up turning over to GR, or sorry, GW. And now they've had several member changes, but they do have a lot of really promising new talent this season, I think. Um, definitely a lot of talented survivors that joined their team. And I think we haven't necessarily been able to see them perform at their full potential during the fall IVL. Did they, they did end up ranking pretty low. I think nine out of 10, I want to say was their ranking in the regular season. So they didn't make it to the playoffs. Whereas GR did pretty well and made it to the playoffs. But I do think that we haven't yet seen the full potential of GW based on how talented their survivors are. So definitely still can be a team to look out for, for sure. And, you know, whenever you do have a new team with new members, it takes a while for the team members to figure out how to work together again and the best way to communicate. And I do think that some of GW's problems that we saw during the fall IVL season is due to that survivor communication or maybe miscommunication sometimes. So I think if they've been able to kind of iron that out, then there's a pretty good chance that we'll see an even better performance from them this time. So lots to look forward to from both teams here. Yeah, I am looking forward to seeing more of the um, the teams that we haven't really seen much because Koa is like such a big event for IDV. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunate that GW didn't get to play in the playoffs, um, but hopefully we can see more of them uh, in these qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Okay, we may be able to see the stream soon. It's just a little bit laggy. I suppose nothing else is new. I'll try to play it from my end a little bit first to see if to see if the lagginess is is acceptable, but we'll see here. It is it is taking quite a while to load. I might have to put us back on brief break <laughs> until I can figure this out. Um, let's see. Unless you want to talk to the chat, Jay. Um, I guess Moth just confirmed that GW did get named. Uh, so your memory did not fail you there. Good to know. Good to know. Um, yeah, but uh, chat has been discussing uh, a lot of the stuff about uh, Japanese non-pro teams. Mm. Uh, yeah, and s stuff about AG as well. That was also... I think AG made their first appearance... Um, lost Koa qualifiers. Uh, am I right in saying that? Yeah, that sounds right to me. I, I do remember they left quite an impression um, during last yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we're getting the uh, ad here. <laughs> Oh, 
All right. I'm going to also put us off camera in case that helps with the stream, with the computer handling the video a little bit better. Yeah, so how's, um, what's like the status of AG now? Are they competing as well this year? Um, I haven't seen them in the Japan qualifiers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure why, but um, I think they might have moved into, I, I haven't really been keeping track of AG's players. Um, I know that so many people uh did become fans of ag after last year um mm -hmm. but yeah i'm not really sure where they've gone this year yeah and i think we're going to try to play again the video from the internet uh someone said ag disbanded i'm pretty sure but the members are in pro teams well now, so that's good to know. PP Cha is in Fennel, Yacht is in Dawn. Cool. I'm glad that a lot of them were able to go pro then. Um, but we're going to try to watch the video from Billy Billy since my recorded video is not working or that the recording that um, I received. So maybe a little bit not as good quality as the recording that Nettie has provided, but at least it's loading so you'll have something on the screen. So I think that's better than nothing. So we're going to see the survivors' faces this time, or the players' faces, since they have their cams on and we'll get to see them in their uniforms, looking very professional as pro teams do. Actually, this is looking pretty decent on the stream, I feel like. Like on the yeah, live stream. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like the quality isn't that bad. It seems smooth enough compared to um, a lot of earlier in the day. Yeah, so hopefully this holds up, but if this does hold up like this, I'd actually be pretty happy. Um, it's been a struggle today, guys. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, GW with their intros, we see Psychologist, Prospector. I'm sure they have plenty of other characters in their character pool as well. Xing Chen with the forward. Yeah, and these stats that we're seeing for the pro players are from autumn IVL season. So it's not like their rank scores or anything like that. It's their scores from autumn IVL. So if we see like kiting, decoding times, that's what those are from. Now we see the GW's backup survivor as well. Mui, backup survivor with the lucky guy. Uh, we'll see if he has a chance to come on today. And now their hunters here. So this is their backup hunter as well. Um, showing the Hell Ember, but apparently he also plays Dream Witch. You know, I think it would be so cool if one day we saw like Lucky Guy on the 
summary list of the members and you're like, oh, that player probably is back up and doesn't have stats. But then when it goes to their screen, it shows stats and they actually play Lucky Guy the most frequently. Oh my gosh. That would be crazy, but I would love it. I, I think Lucky Guy, anytime he's pulled out in these tournament settings, always definitely very interesting to watch, definitely very fun to watch. So yeah, I'm all for it. Um, yeah, and we just saw GW's Hunter, Anyi, their main hunter, and now we're looking at Glory, GR. So, so we see AK's forward um, with around a 90 second containment time and 100% decoding. Yeah, so maybe the type who decodes a cipher first and then harasses or, you know, tries to help out after the rescue and things like that. We see GR's dorms actually in the background. Um, the, the wall looks very familiar to me. <laughs> so they're definitely yeah. in their dorms and we can see their whole rows of awards in the background actually too. We have T here so as here well. We have T. T is actually, he, she, T used to be on X-Rock as well. So it's almost kind of like he's going against his former team in a way. Um, we'll see if we get to see him play today. Heart, mercenary main, uh, definitely most known for his mercenary, I think. He's considered a fairly stable mercenary out of the teams, so can look forward to seeing him play rescuer as well and looks like he has some kind of special background <laughs> as well put up there yeah and now we have shadows priestess um with around 52 uh containment time and 165 percent decoding mm -hmm. Yeah, so Shadow actually has a really good priestess, but also has a good female dancer and an entomologist as well. And he also really likes to play Embalmer. Um, even on smaller maps, he still likes to bring out Embalmer and has a toy merchant too, now that I'm thinking about it. So plays quite a lot of specialty characters and a lot of supporters and kiters. So we may get to see that today since they are quite in the meta. And finally, to wrap it off, we have Cizai, who is playing the acrobat here. And now the hunters. The hunters, we have PPX, probably one of the most veteran competitive hunters that, that at least us in NAU may know of, um, as well as just worldwide in the English-speaking community. I think a lot of people know about PPX just because he's been in the tournament scene for so long and has helped his team win so many championships being with GR since at least since Koa 2 I think um, but recently actually we haven't seen him necessarily play main hunter as much last fall we saw their backup hunter here super rich play quite a few games as well sharing the spotlight with PPX so we may be able to see one or both of them today since they both played quite a bit in Autumn IVL, but I think Super Rich actually took the lead when it came to the playoffs. Yeah, it's also in really interesting to me how um, even though everyone uses Female Dancer now, Female Dancer was like GR's like trademark character. They they used her before like any of the other Chinese teams started using her in the meta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to be really excited if they bring her out today. Having a lot of experience, I'm sure they can really push female dancer to her potential there. Yeah, so it looks like GW has chosen Ever Sleeping Town uh, with GR banning Chinatown. Yeah, Ever Sleeping Town. People say it's I a very there's... balanced map. Yeah, there's still a lot of opportunity for um, GR with Ever Sleeping Town just because of that female dancer in the music boxes or even Priestess. Um, so GR still has a lot to work with uh, with GW's map selection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
Oh, female and dancer. And we're gonna see that female dancer then. <laughs> right off the bat here. No surprise here, knowing how strong she is. Um, GW we're also. Probably gonna see. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say we we were just talking about GR having a good female dancer, but GW their player Yin L here also has a really good female dancer as well. So yeah, it definitely makes sense to see her band too. <laughs> we're gonna see Priestess and Antiquarian getting picked. Just two really versatile and strong survivors with Priestess's ability to create portals through buildings on Ever Sleeping Town, Antiquarian's ability to stab the hunter in narrow alleyways, and a first officer pick. Mm -hmm. So they're actually foregoing the opportunity to choose a mercenary and just going with the stable first officer right away. I think it's nice that there's this variety in rescuers. Oh, but speaking of the thief, we were just talking about the thief earlier today, and who do we see? A thief. Thief? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see the thief in action. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see which hunter PPX chooses. Yeah, and this is round one too, so the thief coming out right off the bat. And this is Dis, Dis who is playing the thief here. And he is pretty much known for playing standard characters, like also plays a forward and prospector, I think. So Thief, I, I believe it, it's right up his alley for sure. And we also have Antiquarian being a stunner character here too. So yeah, quite interesting. Oh my gosh. It looks like PPX is choosing Claire. Claire. Um, Yep, and PPX has just locked in that choice. Mm, a and bit as we were talking about earlier, um, Thief can actually counter Clerk pretty well. Yeah. Um, mainly because it's hard for Clerk to close that distance between Thief and Clerk. Uh, and Thief can prevent Clerk's recording ability uh, to, I guess, record the survivor kiting or decoding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope we get to see that thief kite for sure. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad the stream quality is better right now. Like, I feel so much more motivated yeah. to <laughs> cast. It's so this. much better. I was it's dying. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is terrible. But now, but now it's gotten better. So hopefully it stays this way. Fingers crossed that we'll stay this way during the actual match. Yeah, but clerk right next to antiquarian and the thief. We'll see. Should this clerk? consider bringing excitement or will she be a blink clerk um i feel like excitement can work against antiquarian thief and priestess especially with the shorter cooldown as well um but i don't know blink is just a lot stronger for chasing in general mm -hmm. yeah definitely true Yep, so we're seeing GR spawning in and heading towards Thief, um, who is moving past uh, and rotating around the building. Mm -hmm. GR keeping the Thief out of his sight to get that speed boost from uh, the Persona web. Oh, and a very nice stun from the Thief, uh, getting a pallet stun on top of a flashlight stun. 
And now we have the tram coming in the way, blocking uh, the clerk's movement and allowing the thief just to get to that window. Mm -hmm. And we do see that this is a detention trump card clerk who does also have excitement on hand as well. So PBX did choose to bring excitement. We'll have to see how he utilizes that in the actual match. Yeah. We see first officer throwing down that pallet for the thief. And clerk is unable to get that hit. Uh, but with a charged attack, uh, she lands the first hit on the thief. And now we see a portal coming in, mm -hmm. and Priestess has already set up a long portal. Uh, and it goes right to Corner House. This yeah. is going to make things very difficult for the clerk who doesn't have teleport. And we can see Priestess healing Thief straight away and Antiquarian. Yeah, with both people healing, they'll definitely be able to get the clerk back, sorry, get the thief back up. He, in fact, he already is back up to half health, and they're trying to heal him up to full as well. So if that happens, it'll basically be a reset of the game, and the clerk is starting all yeah. over again, except this time there's like two ciphers already done. And Thief still has around 75% of his uh, flashlight left, so he still has a lot of resources to work with. Mm -hmm. We can see Thief just locking the abilities of the clerk again, preventing her from looking at the ciphers. Oh, and another pallet stun. Very unfortunate for the clerk. Mm -hmm. And there's a portal right there too, but the Thief is actually opting to, yeah, getting a stun and, and just rotating out of sight uh, right, right into the face of First Officer and the clerk, but uses his watch and... unable to yeah. get that hit. Yeah. Uh, looks like Clerk is probably going to change target again. Chasing that first officer is just going to waste way too much time. So, probably back to the thief, it looks like. It looks like uh, PPX still hasn't had a good opportunity to use that excitement. Uh, but now we see the excitement coming in and thief taking the hit. Mm -hmm. I think the the issue now is that uh, there are three survivors working on that final cipher, and now Clerk has no trait left, so the survivors know that there is no blink. Excitement's already been used, so Antiquarian is just free to harass the hunt. Yeah. Buying more distance for the thief. Yeah. And continuing to chase after the thief, but there's more priestess portals already set up as well. And he can make his way to the graveyard and, and set up that window flashlight too, so causing the clerk to get stunned, or, or not quite, just barely missing the stun this time. But still, dying a, a ways away from the ciphers as well, if he does go down here. He may not even, <laughs> we'll see. Is one hit away from full presence. Um, but yeah, Thief blocking Clark's ability to record, preventing her from being able to lift up that pallet. Mm -hmm. It looks like those final three ciphers are uh, very close to being finished. And this is the first chair we've had in the game. Yeah. But things are looking really good for GW. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the first officer does have a tie turner as well, so... Oh, it's going to be an abnormal on the clerk to side. Abnormal. And she um, must... I don't know if that was a good choice, because... Because the survivors still have, like, lots of chairs left, and you have accelerated decoding up. So now that you've switched to abnormal, there's no option for teleport endgame. Yeah. The clerk can record her abnormal, so she can get to use that abnormal a little bit more quickly than having to wait for trait cooldown. But even so, banking it all on this last cipher. Yeah, and we can see Antiquarian and First Officer uh, already rushing it, and it's already at 76%. Mm -hmm. I feel like a, a better situation for Abnormal 
is when you're certain that you've got that survival rate. Because now it's it's too difficult to control the ciphers. Yeah, they did use that abnormal here, but like the whole crew is here and they're going to be able to get the thief quite a while away by taking this portal. Now they have one person working on the cipher, th two other people are just body blocking and supporting with their lives on the line. It's so. just using another portal, um, mm. giving Thief more time to run. Yeah. And it looks like the cipher is going to be primed very soon. Yeah, they're keeping, keeping two survivors at the cipher just in case. Um, since it's a clerk. Oh, not popping the cipher quite yet, still waiting around. We'll see if somebody, if one of them wants to go to the gate or... Those two are going to definitely stay by the cipher in this case, but Priestess is actually searching a chest, potentially getting an item for a thief. I don't know what she got, yeah, but seems, she's... Yeah. It seems the thief... Oh, she got a perfume. Uh, which isn't too useful against a detention clerk, um, but it can still change your position, mm -hmm. so that's something. <laughs> yeah, true. But they're just going to continue to prep for the endgame phase as as the cipher is primed. Priestess is actually going to go to another chest, so not satisfied with the perfume, they're going to try to find something else. And what? What is oh, that? She got an elbow pad. Um, so Thief is definitely going to pick that up, taking the hit here, and they're going to pop the cypher, pick up the elbow pad, and now he can dash away. Mm -hmm. And Priest is making the global portal already. This is looking really difficult for the clerk who only has an abnormal to work with. Thief already utilizing the elbow pad and making a run for that global portal. Clerk recorded herself. Oh! Oh! Destroyed. Able to destroy that portal just in time. Yeah, it was some very good aim. It was a detention hit as well, so she can potentially use it again on this uh, thief. Because he's at half health too. Mm. Nice very nice the placement of the attack recording, preventing him from walking through that pallet. Mm -hmm. um, but this is still going to be a three survivor escape from GW. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really impressive job from GW and a very exciting game as well. I love seeing that teamwork there and I love seeing the, the thief take the kite. <laughs> so very fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that was a very impressive Thief game. Um, yeah, we saw a lot of how Thief could like, just prevent the clerk from being able to record him or his teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, just rendering her chase useless because uh, clerk does have decent chase when you can record survivors and prevent them from uh, throwing down pallets and lifting them back up. But when you have Thief preventing her from recording in the first place, uh, she becomes a bit like a hell of a... Yeah, that's that's a really good way to describe it, is that she becomes a hell ember. And on top of the Thief's own skills, they had really good support from the teammates as well with the Priestess coming in. Eventually, Antiquarian came over. They kind of took turns supporting yeah, the definitely. Thief. Yeah, definitely. So all around... GW seemed like they really kept their cool and was able to get their teamwork on. And even at the end, they were so patient with the end game. Like they didn't pop the cipher as soon as somebody got hit. They made sure to keep it at 96 and have two survivors there to pop the cipher so that the clerk couldn't pull like an instant detention on them. And they had the priestess go around searching chests to make sure that the thief had resources at the end game. So overall very impressive how they laid it all out. And match stats here with the thief kiting 351 seconds there wow and also the first officer and priestess contributing 100 seconds too with uh their support yeah my goodness 351 seconds i i can't even do math that quickly how many minutes is that that's like uh that's around minutes? six minutes oh my gosh six minutes <laughs> 
That yeah. is crazy. This match is only 8 minutes and 40 seconds. Yeah, we can see, like, Priestess's support just slows down the Hunter so much with that long portal at the, at the beginning. That really, like, reset the game back to the start, giving the survivors, like, two ciphers of decoding. Mm -hmm. Overall, that was, like, really good teamwork from, from, D from GW. Um, their coordination, their kiting routes were all really impressive. Um, but still, very good effort for PPX being able to prevent that uh, global portal at the end and still getting one survive out. Yeah, that endgame was definitely impressive, how he utilized that recording of his own hit. So... We are going to transition to the second half of this match because we can do that. So now we have GR's survivors up against GW's Hunter. And taking a look at the ban picks with sur uh, Survivor Priestess banned first. Yep, banning the Priestess instead of the female dancer. Do you think GR will opt to take the dancer? Mm, I think it's definitely... Oh, we do see the dancer right away. Yeah, definitely. And the Antiquarian. Yep. You know, it's it's also unfortunate that both Dancer and Antiquarian are going to get adjusted at the end of this season. Mm, yeah. I hope that they'll still be viable because I enjoy seeing them around for sure. Yeah. Banning the first officer and the mercenary, preventing uh, a lot of the rescue potential on the team. Yeah, and GR does really like that mercenary, so having them banned right off the bat, they are going to have to find something else to take the place of the mercenary. Removing the forward as well, wow. They're like, no um, rescue. So very much anti-camping. No rescuers allowed at all for GR. Oh, but we have the Wildling filling in the last role as the rescuer. So this is interesting. I mean, Wildling is a good replacement in the case that these are all banned. I mean, I guess rescuer-wise, you really only have Wildling and like the first officer, or you can take an acrobat or something like that. Um, but Wildling is I a little bit more... Yeah, stable. Patient also has some rescue potential um, with his hooks being somewhat similar to the elbow pads. Uh, so he can transition to get to the chair faster. And that's why we see a lot of patients with tie turbos as well. Um, but Wildling is also a good option. The main disadvantage is that both of them aren't as stable as a first officer or mercenary or forward with their ability to just not go down on the rescue. Yeah, that's true. It's like, he is not nearly as stable as the mercenary and first officer in terms of pulling off the rescue, like his survivability is definitely really strong, but I do feel like mercenary and first officer have a little bit more leeway in that sense, and then he's not as good of a harasser as forward either. So, He's just kind of, he can do those roles, but he's not necessarily the best at them. But we are seeing a bonbon from GW's Anyi now. Yeah, that also explains the uh, anti-rescue bands. Yeah, really wants to play up the camping here, it looks like. We might also see... Um, Andy bring Max Berserker, uh, reducing that attack recovery time uh, when someone's on the chair. Mm. Yeah, that's smart. We'll have to see what he decides to go with. But for now, we're seeing the spawn point selections with Farmate, or sorry, Farmate just came out. <laughs> nowhere <laughs> female dancer spawning in the middle here antiquarian at dancing geisha patient outside graveyard 
Wildling Fake Gate and Bon Bon there. Closest to female dancer. Um, oh my gosh. I say the wrong name so much when I'm casting. So you 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 guys will have to forgive me for that. But I think I I think I'm getting a little bit better at it, but I'm still not <laughs> completely because I still remember matches where I like spent the whole match calling an explorer the embalmer or something like that. Or like oh I kept goodness. calling the female dancer an entomologist in a different match. So hopefully if it doesn't come out this time, it is a female dancer, not an entomologist, not a barmaid. <laughs> It looks like Andy is going to target the female dancer first, just removing her ability to support um, by putting the kiting pressure on the female dancer directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in that case, it might be in his best interest to get rid of those boxes as fast as possible. Even though he does have the ability to bomb her from afar, it's like... She does move faster with the fast boxes and you're slow down with the slow boxes, so it's there's a little bit more room for you to mess up. And plus she can pirouette and just kind of like dodge the bombs if she has enough room to. So we'll see how this approach goes for Anyi. But he is heading towards the middle right away. Yeah, but it seems like female dancer is already moving away. We can see shadow behind uh, the two-story building. And yeah, already putting down that music box over the pallet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much the strategy nowadays. Put put down the music box and put the pallet over it so that it takes the hunter even longer if he wants to break that box. Um, and he hasn't yeah. broken them yet. This is an insolence detention bonbon, by the way. Oh, another box being utilized. So. Female Dancer putting all of her resources into this and does get one chip so far on the Female Dancer. It does seem like Female Dancer is going to just keep looping around this area where she's already the boxes. Um, but very good usage of timed bombs from Bonbon bon and a very nice remote control bomb. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just using those time bombs to block off a Female Dancer's Oh, he didn't have a bomb ready in time, and Female Dancer managed to use her pirouette to avoid the previous one. So she lives another day. Um, this bomb, this chain bomb, misses out as well, and can we see the Female Dancer continue to loop this area? We just see how how long she's been looping. Oh, out of range again, and the Wildling is now here, but he misses. <laughs> they, they're going it's for a jump. It's a bit comical to see oh. the Wildling miss. Yeah, I was. I thought. Oh, female dancer goes down to the chip there. Uh, I thought they were gonna go for the thing where like they jump down from the two story and the wildling just tries to ravage the hunter right after he drops down, but they didn't uh, go for that. But wildling is trying to give female dancer some room to struggle, but it looks like she's probably gonna go on the chair since it's so close by. Yeah, unfortunately, giving the hunter more presence because he was able to hit the ball. Uh, just one time. Mm -hmm. Also, very good usage of bombs to prevent that wildling from uh, freeing the female dancer. Yeah. And Antiquarian coming nearby. Oh, nice flywheel there to avoid the bomb range. And actually use her skill to get rid of the bomb as well, I believe. Um, yeah. Yeah. No tie turner though, so female dancer does go down. But that was interesting. I feel like we don't always see the Antiquarian make use of the skill where she gets rid of the Hunter's item. So, cool to see that come into play here. But we will see Female Dancer back onto the chair very slowly as the Hunter walks through the slow box. And camping this Cypher while he's here at it too. Oh, but Wildling gets the rescue from behind just as his camping that cypher. Dima mm. Dancer does get another chip though, and now she is going to go down. We'll have to see if Wildling can harass and keep her alive for the final cypher to get popped. Oh, misses. Oh, just missing. Uh, I think Wildling has missed 
almost all, maybe but one of the charges that he used. So this this ban of all the rescuers is pretty effective for Anyi, I suppose. Yeah. Considering his survivors go to three escape, Ani is mainly looking for a tie. Uh, and as a bon bon, the ability to get a tie or even a win when the rescuers have been banned is um, it's a very stable choice in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Going back to check on the cipher. Yep, so Antiquarian's probably going to start a new cipher in the corner over there. Just because this cipher at middle is uh, so easy for the Bonbon bon to keep coming back to. Mm -hmm. Oh, gets that chip on the patient, bringing him to half health. Yeah, this patient does have three see... hooks. Yeah, patient's already starting that cipher at graveyard. Uh, bon Bon notices um, the cipher that Antiquarian's working, starts going to protect that. Yeah, and that graveyard well, cipher... It, the graveyard cipher is so far away for Bon Bon that he basically can't control that one. Yeah. They're doing a really good job of uh, like dividing their decoding progress to just prevent the hunter from being able to camp any of the ciphers. Mm -hmm. Go well, antiquarian caught in a slightly rough area, allowing the bonbon bon to get a chip. Mm. One more chip with the remote control bomb here, and oh, what's the plan here? Cipher is not quite primed yet, so Anya is going to get one more chance at camping here before they pop the cipher. This is a wildling that has a chip damage though, so they are going to have to be a little bit careful, but he can just ride over on his boar too, to at least get really close to the chair. Yeah. They manages to pull it off. Oh! 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 Ani is able to down AK before the pop with uh, with chips, and once the cipher pops, he is able to hit uh, AK and instantly down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the survivors tried to mind game it a little bit by waiting just a minute or a second to pop the cipher, but Ani, luckily, the range of his attack following right after was long enough to get that antiquarian on the ground again. Um, but. Yeah. The gate's being decoded. It's looking like the survivors should be able to secure a tie in this case. Bonbon bon has no teleport, has no trump card. And for Ani, this is basically what he wants, is to get this tie here. So in that case, they're going to be a little bit in the lead with a point. Yeah, I think that was a um, very good performance from both sides. Um, considering that all of GR's rescuers were banned as well, um, which makes it much harder to rescue against the Bon Bon. Um, so GR had a very uh, stable, yeah, stable coordination and hiding from their survivors just to get that tie against uh, the Bon Bon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love seeing that female dancer kite as well. It was, it was definitely a very strong kite, even though in the end, GR didn't necessarily get the win they were looking for in this match. It still showed a really impressive female dancer kite. Um, the Bonbon bon just got looped for so long with the female dancer in that same area. Yeah, so now we can see the match statistics with Patient having 306% decoding progress. Uh, both Wildling and Female Dancer having around 90 seconds of containment time. Uh, and yeah, we can see uh, AK having 200% decoding and around 80 seconds of containment. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So with that being the first one, we are going to move on to round two quite shortly. I'm so glad it's not lagging as much anymore. Oh my gosh. If only if only this worked earlier when we tried to <laughs> try to use the Bailey Bailey stream. Alright. We're now seeing the band picks for round two of GW versus GR. A little bit of pressure on GR to win this round so that they don't end up being too old. Um, GW, of course, looking to win. So we're on Chinatown, maps that the Chinese teams do seem to love quite a bit, at least the pro teams. And, and the amateur teams too, they, they also like Chinatown quite a bit. But Chinatown, with the wax artist being banned, and this is uh, Priestess and Seer being banned as well. GR has also changed their hunter, so this is going to be super rich instead of PPX. Yeah, and super rich is known uh, for playing wax artists, so very understandable that you banned that Chinatown. Also considering that this is uh, GR's map selection. So they also have an advantage there as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, and some Prospector. I really like um, Prospector in tournaments. Yeah. He's one of my favorites to watch as well. And paired with the Antiquarian too, we have the double stunner duo. And with the Wax Artist band, they can operate a little bit more freely than they would otherwise. Huh, the bands are showing two different characters. The one on the billboard was Barmaid, but the one in the icons is Professor. Mm -hmm. Well, that's strange. We'll have I to assume find it was Professor that got banned. Um, yes. Yeah, but banning that mercenary to remove the rescue potential and leaving first officer to GW instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with that, with the Seer ban, I mean, Super Rich also plays a good Bonbon and Sculptor, but I don't know if he would necessarily ban the Seer if he was thinking about going those two. Well, so, banning the Toy Merchant. And another Thief pick from GW. My gosh. Uh, they seem to really like using that beat. But yeah. also, that does place pressure on Super Rich because uh, we saw how um, Thief versus Clerk ended up earlier. Right. GR. Mm. Yeah, and they're in a situation where they want to try to get a win, so I don't know if Super Rich would necessarily want to do something like pull out a Bloody Queen at this point. This map is also a little bit difficult sometimes for Bloody Queen to navigate. He does also have a Geisha and a Nyad, but Nyad is somewhat counter here as well with Antiquarian Thief. I mean, First Officer being able to rescue stably. And Geisha is also not that easy. It feels nothing is that easy necessarily. Oh, Nyad ends yeah. up being the choice though. Oh, it looks yeah, it looks like it might be Nyad. Um, and yeah, Super Rich has just locked in that choice. Um, yeah, Thief does counter Nyad sometimes when uh, you're able to lock Nyad into the swimming form. Uh, and even though Nyad can still dash. There's only so many times that she can dash at you. Um, yeah, so... It, I, I hope we do get to see uh, Naya chasing the thief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
It's crazy because there's like three stunners this time. Three stunners yeah. and a first officer. So they're putting the no, rescue in us the up the in middle as usual. And oh, it seems Nayad is going in the hotel corner with Thief and the hotel. Mm -hmm. So we saw PPX bring the excitement against the Thief. Do you think there's any chance that Nyad will follow suit as well, or less likely? I think it's it's still just best for Nyad to go blink or patroller. Um, because I think if you can patrol the thief, that can also prevent him from shining his flashlight on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Oh, so I don't think there is... Uh, continue? Oh, I was just gonna make a silly comment about the skins. So... Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the Thieves Chinese New Year skin. I love it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and now we have Super Rich uh, throwing out the harpoon and heading towards the prospector. Mm -hmm. Prospector making his way across the middle. Um, and it looks like Nyad already blocking off that cipher at middle uh, with her puddles. Yeah, and it looks like Knight this... has brought insolence and detention and berserker. Uh huh. And this is excitement as well that's up instead of blink. Yeah. Bringing excitement and desperate fight uh, really doesn't want stunts. Mm -hmm. She's going to try to get some humidity on this prospector. Mm. Mm, that's gonna hit on the antiquarian here. Yeah, an antiquarian was uh, surrounded by the moisture, so she's already on 76%. Mm -hmm. But the prospector this time comes into support, so taking turns helping each other, and now the thief! Thief locking her from throwing her harpoon. Um, and now she is walking up the stairs. Three ciphers are almost done, just around 20% left on each. Mm -hmm. And does utilize the excitement in order to down the antiquarian here. So, going to put the yeah. antiquarian on the chair with three ciphers. And first officer is running over, likely to make the rescue. Well, we'll see if he does or not. First officer... Yep, just goes right for the rescue and is able to get that without getting a double down. So pretty good so far from first officer on that rescue. She did get some hu more humidity on the uh, antiquarian here. Oh, but the prospector is here. 
Ah, uh, and now the humidity is dropping. Oh, but very nice dash, time. preventing the anti variant from vaulting the pallet just in time. Fourth cipher, pretty good progress. Fifth cipher is also being worked on, and first officer is back once again. Does manage to get that first hit, but first officer makes the rescue in time before going down. Yeah, Antiparina is just gonna work around these pallets near the gate. Um, unfortunately, excitement in a little too late and allowing the Antiparian to vault just in time. And now the Cypher has primed. Yeah, they're gonna go ahead and pop that Cypher. And now GW has four survivors alive at endgame. So PPX really yeah. has to try to get a down here, not give them a four escape situation. Uh, does manage to get the... the Antiquarian here with the humidity, but this Naya does not have a trait left, and I think this was insolence Naya, right? So, yeah, wouldn't have had, detention. Yeah, didn't have a trump card to work with anyway, but looks like all the survivors are at one gate. This is going to be a three escape for the survivors of GW. Yeah, so it looks like the survivors of GR. They're gonna need a 3 escape or more in order to continue on to the next mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely doable but also still difficult on when you're under pressure like this. Mm, definitely. Yeah, but we did get to see a little bit of everybody cutting the night at one point, I think. Yeah, like at the start, there was a prospector, and then after he kited to antiquarian science, antiquarian um, stabbed the hunter a little. Uh, the hunter hit the antiquarian and changed targets. Um, but then we also saw the prospector stunning the hunter and thief coming in to support as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can see from the post-match statistics, um, the Prospector and Antiquarian having the highest kiting times at around 110 seconds each. Um, and then the first officer having around, uh, having 119% decoding, uh, the Thief having 231%, and the Prospector having 112%. Yeah. Doing a very good job of divvying up all the work on the survivor side. And we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit to the next match, next half. Yeah, it is unfortunate for GR that um, GW was able to get that win because this was their map selection. So it's important that they do um, get the advantage back or at least be able to tie out this round. Mm -hmm. And look at that, GR chooses the mercenary right away before Anyi can do more all rescue or bands, <laughs> <laughs> making yeah. sure they at least secure their beloved Merc. Well, we see a forward ban and a first officer ban and a batter ban, patient ban. Oh my gosh. Oh, no rescue is allowed. Yeah, 
下一年的时候就是，因为现在他不可能再想去追搬这个摁搬这个位了，因为他已经抢到一个，他应该更优先于这个阵容，他要怕什么 ？Boy Merchant and the Patient Man, uh, preventing, um, Patient from being able to kite and also removing some support, uh, with the ban of Toy Merchant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without Toy Merchant and Priestess. Oh, they're choosing female dancers. So I was just going to say, without Toy Merchant and Priestess, you're losing two options to have a very transitional supporter or centralized supporter, I almost want to say. Like someone who can help their teammates transition or help them from a very central point. But with the female dancer, they kind of make up for, for the lack of that. So yeah. they're still in a pretty good spot in that case. And mechanic. Also banning the mechanic to shut down some of the decoding. Mm -hmm. And they top it off with a prospector on GR side. Seems like um, this team from GR has a lot of supporting potential uh, with the antiquarian, the prospector, and the female dancer. And then they just have a mercenary uh, as a stable rescuer on top of that. Bonbon -bon being selected by Ani. Banning the mechanic so that he doesn't get cypher rushed as a bonbon. This time, instead of banning all the rescuers. Uh, though we did see a very good tie performance from Anya's bonbon earlier, so if he can replicate that tie again, then this would be GW's win. Yeah, I'm, bonbon is um, a very stable option to get a tie. Um, another option for a tie is also Bloody Queen. Um, but with Bonbon, bon, uh, as long as you can get a down, and it's pretty much a tie because you can prevent the rescue, or at least the survivors won't attempt to rescue, and then you can have three survivors up at endgame, uh, which is a good situation in which you can get a tie with a detention Bonbon. Bon. Mm -hmm. So we see uh, the Bonbon spawning in the hotel corner, Mercenary at middle, Female Dancer at Umbrella Gate, uh, and Antiquarian uh, on the other side of the map. Yeah. And we did see the Female Dancer from GR actually did kite Anya's Bonbon for quite a long time in the previous match. So mm. we can see if, if a repeat performance happens or or what they might do differently this time. There's also the power inside the hotel and just the, the one just outside the hotel um, that the female dancer can use to set up boxes. Yeah, so we see Ani immediately dropping down, heading towards the female dancer, who is already moving away to the other side of the map, uh, placing down a music box uh, underneath the pallet. Mm -hmm. It seems like... Ani really doesn't like breaking these boxes either. Yeah, I was going to say, this feels like deja vu almost. Again, this is an insolence detention bonbon here. And he's still not breaking these boxes. 
Um, yeah, he's placing those bombs uh, uh, for a longer time, trying to prevent the female dancer from being able to loot. Mm -hmm. uh, dropping down the last box. And Anya is still not breaking those boxes, mm -hmm. um, continuing to chase on. Well, there's no window here, so at least he can take a shortcut. And he does have blink, but the female dancer still- oh, just use the flywheel here. Can still- yeah, Anticipating that chain bump from Bob Bob. Using a blink to get close. And putting the female dancer in a corner, uh, getting that chip and hit on her, instantly downing her. But also, GR has completed three ciphers. Um, so even though Shadow went down very quickly just then, uh, Shadow has still been kiting around that building for a very long time, allowing her teammates to pop those ciphers. Mm -hmm. Oh, getting that chip on Mercenary, mm -hmm. making it a lot harder for them to rescue. Yeah, that might come back to haunt them later here. It looks like AK, oh, AK does manage to pop the cipher here and might be sticking around for support as well. Yeah, popping the middle cipher um, is a very good setup for late game where you no longer have to worry about the middle cipher and it also automatically spreads out the rest of your ciphers, uh, making it harder for the hunters to control them. Mm -hmm. Prospector looks like he's trying to. Oh, he did get chipped there. Was trying to harass again, but unfortunately wasn't able to. Can he get this magnet off? It might be too far this time. So, Ani chairs the female dancer away from the prospector and his magnets. Although he is now able to um, guard the mercenary cipher, and it looks like Antiquarian is coming in for the rescue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice rescue from the antiquarian as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, female dancer's spin got blocked by the object, um, but she's still able to navigate uh, using her boxes. Ooh, antiquarian jumping all the way over here so that she can harass more. But... Yeah, but just missing, getting short uh, of the range of that stick. Mm -hmm. And just like that, the female dancer is eliminated already. Yeah, and Gia needs three survivors out at least to continue to the next round. Um, so this is a very difficult situation for them, considering that the bonbon has detention. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the antiquarian goes down as well. And the cipher is being guarded by the bonbon as well, so they haven't been able to get more progress on it. Oh, they actually got the mercenary to have health too. And he's heading to the building with the basement. Is this going to be a basement chair? It looks like it is. Uh, the other two are at yeah, half health and no tide. Very hard for GR to actually get the rescue off um, because Bonbon not only has bombs but can also try and drop hit the survivor for a, a no attack recovery. It can. It's also going to make it really hard for them to get oh. out of the basement as well. Yeah, and they had to pop. They have to pop the cipher for borrowed time in order to pull off the rescue at all. And now getting out of the basement for the antiquarian is going to be near impossible. Mercenary has already gone down here, and Antiquarian is oh, getting a stun, but not for long. She is kind of trapped here. Blink coming yeah, into play in that as situation, well. even if you stab the hunter, he can still bomb you. Uh, so it, it's very difficult to leave the basement in that situation. Pick mm -hmm. up the Mercenary to prevent the self-heal, um, and then picking up the Antiquarian after, just securing the win for GW. 
Yeah. So, I'm getting a three survivor elimination. Prospector, I don't know if he's going to rescue just to make a try for it since since they need survivor. Yeah, they don't really have a choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... That was um, uh, a nice attempt. <laughs> he seems very excited as well. Yeah, very... Uh, very good work from GW's Hunter, uh, even without destroying the boxes, um, he still has accurate bombs and chips such that he's able to put the survivors in such a such a bad endgame position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely very confident in his ability to bomb down the survivor, and I still remember the one time he trapped the female dancer kind of against the wall and the pallet corner-ish type of area. Yeah. That was done very well. The female dancer couldn't make her way back into the slow box that she came from or pirouette away or anything like that because of the way that he yeah. trapped her with the bombs So, and the, and the terrain. So Yeah, that blink was calculated very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything was very well done. The female dancer again had a very good kite against the bonbon, bon, but for a win type of match, like a, a win condition where you have to get a win, a three survivor escape or four, um, it wasn't. It was still not quite enough in the end due to the rest of the turn of events. So yeah, but it's great to see the female dancer's utility still, and I mean, yeah. Not breaking those boxes made me nervous, but like we talked about, he was very confident in his bombs and was able to achieve his objective at the end. So, good for him. Um, here we have the match statistics here. Hart actually has the most kiting time here with 111 seconds, followed by everybody else pretty much equally. So, at least the team is all in it together. Um, and the spawn bomb here with 22 hits on survivors and 8 survivor downs to get this four survivor elimination very exciting for gw i think previously before the match the chinese casters also made predictions and most of them i think thought gr was going to win against gw this time so to see kind of gw come in as the underdogs and play so well and flip the tables on gr is really exciting and I'm curious to see how they're going to do in their next matchup since they're going to the winner's bracket and GR unfortunately is going to go to the loser's bracket and is at risk of elimination um, once they play in the loser's bracket so best of luck to both, both teams going forward but congratulations to GR for now for moving on to, to the winner's bracket match yeah uh it's definitely um, important to keep an eye on these teams, um, seeing how they're improving over time. Uh, yeah, it's really inspiring. Um, yeah, I think both teams played really well today. We got to see um, a lot of, I guess, different uh, different play styles from both sides with uh, Anyi's refusal to break the box. Uh, with the rescuer bands and also uh, with the thief plays against Club. Yeah. A lot of interesting moments. Yeah, I love that. And we did see that the thief ends up being the best deduction there. So, rightfully so, I think. GW bringing him out twice and managing to obtain such a good score. So. They're going to have Yeah, I'm really looking forward to more Thief this car. Maybe even in the um, in the main stage as well. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Uh, quick looks at the brackets here. So, like we saw, HY moved on and ACT moved on. So they'll play the winners from matches two and four, and then whoever wins will progress even forward, and eventually one of them will get the slot. And then here is the loser's bracket that we see Sata and CT have fallen to. So they still have a chance to qualify. 
Um, but if they lose this match in the loser's bracket, then they don't have a chance to qualify anymore, then they're eliminated. Yeah, and then we see the B brackets. Like you can see the upper left part, there's a bunch of IVL pro teams in there, and unfortunately one of them is guaranteed to be eliminated. So we see that GW has moved on and is not going to be the first of the bunch to be eliminated. Meanwhile, GR is going to be at risk of elimination in the loser's bracket, but if they do win, they do have the chance to qualify through the loser's bracket as well. So they're going to have to really try to get that win, along with Free, of course, who we saw as well today. And then that's the schedule for day two, who I think Nello Mello is streaming this one. Um, I'm not sure he might already be in stream right now because it is the next day over there in Southeast Asia. So you guys can look forward to that if you're interested in watching. Yeah, I hear that um, ZSOL vs. Reborn uh, is already very interesting. Uh, and also, I'm certain that MRC vs. Uh, Dow5 will also be a really entertaining match to watch. Yeah, so definitely check out the rest of the days. Um, like I said, Nello is streaming day two, the VOD, but then for days three and four, we're actually going to see Chocho and Sadical stream those live on their channels as well. Chocho on Facebook and Sadical on um, on Twitch. And you might just see me there as well <laughs> on day four. So fun times. It'll be fun. Um, I will let Jay and I back onto the screen so that we can say goodbye to everyone. But yeah, this is pretty much it for day one. Thanks everybody, especially if anybody here has stuck through the stream since the very beginning. You guys are the MVPs. And for everybody who joined, whether it was earlier or later, uh, really appreciate having you here. This is my first time streaming. So a lot of technical difficulties, but hopefully we'll make it better for the next one. And it was really fun. Um, it was nice to see everybody's comments in the chat. So thanks everybody for, for joining. Jay, I hope you had a good time as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, it was very fun despite um, all the technical difficulties. Um, but yeah, uh, we got through it and I had a lot of fun watching those matches, uh, commentating with you. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, awesome. So we'll go ahead and bid everybody goodbye. Until next time, I will be streaming on March 18th. That one's going to be at 1 a.m. UTC minus 5. So you can figure out what time zone that is in your time. But that's going to be live for day six of Chinese mainland qualifiers. So if you're interested in seeing this again, if that time works for you, hope to catch you all back on the stream. But yeah, bye for now.